don't have the guts anymore Hit me like a truck and I fell to the floor You don't get anymore I couldn't feel it and run if you settled the score I think I wanna punch you I really, really want to You talking at me like I know what you mean I made a mistake Could you give me something to respond to? You don't have the guts anymore
Autonauta y amenaza, necesita volar. Las estrellas que están lejos y le gusta gozar. Que le gusta brillar, me ayuda a olvidar. Que este mundo tiene miedo, de no saben vacilar. Me dijeron que tú sabes, que tú sabes qué hacer. Que tú tienes el cerebro y tú sabes mantener. Que tú no tienes miedo de tener todo poder. Me da que necesito para llegar a otro nivel. Dice por la calle que te tiene un cohete. Vamos al espacio que la fiesta si comete. La tierra aburrida, tengo nada que hacer.
think I remember the time I was feeling the same. Now I've got new life and I'm free from the chains. So let's fly, let's move fly away. Move to the sky, look at that place where your dreams fit and the devil never felt so free by the end of the day. That's all I pray. No karma, my future, go harder. I feel righteous, it's like armor. Cause I'm done with the devil and fraud. I see my design, kind of never since I could die. Stand in life, the world will die. Right in death, the city of the day. Take it higher, you get the freedom, I know it. No karma, my future, go harder. I feel righteous, it's like armor. Cause I'm done with the devil and fraud.
the Alpha Bracket started off with 16 of the world's best teams. And now we're down to our final two. Hello and welcome to day 13 of Lock-In. We're coming to you live from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and a packed arena for today's best of five semifinal between Loud and DRX. I am so happy to finally be on the ground here in Brazil alongside Doug, Achilleos, and Mimi to break down all of the action for our three remaining days, kicking it off with an absolutely stellar best of five. I've had 42 hours of travel, one and a half hours of sleep. I feel like I'm locked and loaded 100% ready Let's to go. go. Is everyone else in a similar place? Oh, Hell yeah, brother. Brother, baby. <laughs> I just have very quickly, how yeah. is it that you go through this gauntlet of travel, you sleep, I mean, negative sleep, yeah. and your hair still looks immaculate? I, I don't understand. I got a whole team. <laughs> there's a whole, there's an army of people behind uh, behind us that makes this a reality. Uh, like I said, I'm just so ecstatic to be on the ground. The tournament has delivered every step of the way. I've been happy to be just a spectator to it at this point. But now to get into the actual venue, to start to to hear the music behind me, to start to feel the rumbles and the vibrations of the arena is only going to make it that much cooler. Uh, Mimi, we also working together for the first yeah. time ever. That's pretty dope. It is pretty cool to, to finally have you here. I did see when you flew in the entire team of people. It was like five people. People all on the same flight. Don't yeah. know how that one happened, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess each their own. Yeah, well, it was a long road for me to get here. It was also a long road for the teams to get to this point with teams from the Americas, the Pacific, EMEA, and China all trying to survive the single elimination bracket. Now, unlike our previous matches, though, which were all best of three, today's semifinal is a best of five. The winner moves on to the grand final on Sunday. A win here means their region gets one step closer to earning an extra slot at Masters Tokyo in June. We can not forget those stakes. Yeah, and it's really important, especially for these teams, because they are both the last representative of their league. The other side, it's EMEA versus EMEA, but for Americas and Pacific, only one can have an opportunity to earn that slot. It's a really good point. Yep. Someone goes down today, Achilleos. They do. It's gonna. It's gonna be loud. Oh, uh, why? We we're just, starting this we're, already. Sorry. Sir, we I'm are 30, I'm we're 30 minutes away from that point in the show. Please follow the teleprompter. We're not even at predictions yet. Okay, fine. I'll hold my prediction for later. Yeah. It'll be a big <laughs> shock for everybody no when is. I predict DRX. I mean, watch. He's going to pull the bait and switch on us at the end <laughs> of the day. I hope he does. Okay. <laughs> You never know. <laughs> All right, now both of these teams, they had a bit of a break, though, because we did break this yeah. tournament out in two yeah. brackets, right? So the alpha bracket, let's remember how they got here. DRX and, of course, uh, Loud. Yeah, it was uh, a brutal run for, I'd say, both of these teams. Uh, Loud having to go through one of the longest matches that we've had at BCT in general, tied now for the longest overtime. DRX as well, having to go through every single possible map that, to, to make it to this point, but they were able to do it. Yeah, for DRX, it was all BO3s all the way through. They hit every yeah. single map. And for the side of Loud, maybe a couple games that were a bit more one-sided, but their final match to qualify here, that game that they played against NRG was absolutely absurd. They really showed that this team, despite the new additions, does still have the strengths to come back in those insane matches and find themselves now in the semifinal. I mean, that match that you were just alluding to was probably the best one we've had all tournament. Yeah. Maybe top probably two. Probably one of them, yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing, too, about DRX is we kind of think about both of these teams is you think about how these rosters have gotten here and for DRX the story has always been like you, you kind of don't make it right at the very end but this 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 it almost feels like that's behind us which is really encouraging for this roster we see them they look so much more complete they look so much more put together it should make for a fun series now yeah. something that jumped out to me just kind of immediately in tracking both of these teams through their bracket so far is the fact that loud has only had to show three maps all three of their best of threes were the same set of three. Whereas on the other side for DRX, they've actually had to jump to five different maps throughout their best of three runs so far. So there's a lot less data right now on Loud and what they might actually want to bring out as we move into best of fives. Let's not forget, we're opening up that map pool today. Yeah, and historically DRX has been very strong. They haven't really had that week of a map pool, everything has been relatively strong for them. But the point that you're making is that they've had to show a lot more during this tournament, and that can be concerning for them because Loud has a lot that they can study. Now, we'll talk more about the maps when we get the vetoes later on in the broadcast. But before we dive fully into today's matchup, let's play a friendly game of true and false. It's a pretty right. simple game. We're going to get the temperature check of the desk here. All right, grab your uh, whiteboards. I believe you've Wait, all been. Is it, this is true and false from like when we were in school. Yes. Like as kids. Yeah, it's a simple concept. Okay. I'm okay. going right. to read a statement. 
uh, we've got a graphic for this actually, so why don't we just go ahead and put this graphic up in case anyone was really wondering how it all works. I read the statement. The statement is, Mako is the best controller in the world. And now each of you has to determine whether or not that's a true or false statement. We'll have the reveal, and then we'll have an oh-so-heated debate. Seth, please don't look at my answers. I wonder what Seth is going to choose. I'm not, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not cheating. I'm not looking at anybody else's stuff. I'm just writing down my answer with no bias whatsoever. Why do you have a blue marker? Is that theme for any reason? It just, they wow. just happened to give me a blue marker. Okay? Oh, yeah. That feels okay. suspicious to me. Yeah, none of this is lining up in any a particular way. OK, let's go ahead and let's work our way uh, from right to left here on the sure. desk, Mimi. The reveal. OK, I will say true. true. I think right now he is looking like the best com controller player in the world. There are other controller players that are popping off at this event. Uh, Tui's is one, Xiao is one. But I think for Mako, it's the fact that he's only ever plays the controller role. He is well and truly a controller player all the way through. He has insane clutches, and he's done it consistently now at Champions at this event. I think that's enough to earn him that, uh, that title as best in the world. All right, so declaratively, Mako, best controller in the world. Now, I only want you to turn your whiteboard around if you agree. Cool, so I don't need Douglas. to hear from Achilles. I need to hear from the man. <laughs> the only guy serious. <laughs> <laughs> You've been trolled so hard. That is, that is copious amounts of cap. Really? All right. Really? Who's Truly better? outrageous. You mentioned, you mentioned two controllers that I would take over Mako. You would take two each over him. Yeah, honestly. What? And then, uh, look, whoa, hold on. Let me, let me, allow me to, Fine, please. Go ahead, cook. I'd also, I'd also be willing to put someone like Angel up in that conversation. It's I've been God. so impressed with how versatile he is, Angel. how aggressively, yes, he's been taking over rounds by himself. Angel right? is feast yes, for famine. Ma and Mako has been doing that his oh, whole whoa, whoa. career. Hey, pause, pause. D Dash said you couldn't talk, so. That, well. I, I mean. He did. He, uh, he, did. he is right. I, I did but, say but that. Honestly, I like, help it. But honestly, like, for someone to to be lauded as the best in the world, I'm not saying Mako's not top three. I'm not saying he's not top five. But to have him as number one in the world against the rest of the field, I, that you're you're hard pressed to sell me as he is Here's number one. Thing. I think that right now he stands in that position because I think he comes off champions looking like probably the best controller in the world. Comes into this tournament, maintains that. For Xiao, who's one you mentioned, he's only just switched over to that role. He's looked great, but doesn't have the same amount of proof behind the agent. And same with Tui's. This is first tournament. He's only played three matches, Doug. So, so, go ahead. Also, remember, I wanna, yeah. remember, Angel. You want to throw Angel into the mix? Oh, remember how many Angel. times oh, he died God. over at Champions? You know who was killing him all the time? Mako and DRX. <laughs> I, I will say this: if, if you Final were to point. if you were to give me a, a list of controllers and say who do you want to build a team around, I it would not be Mako. So All right. This, hey, look, this is why I, I came to Brazil. This is what I hope to get when I, I arrived here. Let's move on to statement number two. All right, statement number two is the replacement of Sassi and Pencata for Kawazine and Tuizi was the best long-term plan for Loud. True or false? This is a tough one. It is. I, well, that's, you know, we didn't, we're, not, we're not throwing you softballs here. That's not why we came. Okay. Hmm. I think we should. Wow, Seth is really thinking about this one. Mimi, Mimi was quick, though, on hers. Already locked in. I think I'm going to work left to right this time, though. The question was, the new edition's better. Or is loud best, better best than you long term plan. So oh, it, yeah. it, it is okay. not necessary. Yeah, you don't yeah, necessarily yeah. have to claim that they are currently better. It's that the idea is I believe this this swap yep. means they will reach higher heights or, you know, uh, a higher peak. Yeah. My, my marker. Previous is roster. Working well. Okay, we're going to start from the left over here. Uh, Doug's going to get the first reveal on this one. True. I would say true. Okay. I think this loud iteration that we're seeing is arguably as good, if not better, than the loud that we saw previously. And this is their first tournament together. I think the two new young bucks show so much promise. I think that if you think about this in a long term situation, this structure and this program that they put themselves into is so, so beneficial to the pieces that they put together. I think Sassi and Pakala were very good. Please sure. don't get me wrong, but I just think there's so much more upside here. All right, if you agree, flip it around. You both disagree. I disagree. All right, line. let's get the reveal and let's discuss. I want to know why you guys don't believe that ahead, statement Zach. is okay, true. Okay, it's, 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 it's false, but kind of like more of a maybe, because I think if they win this, then I can say, you know what, I see it. It's already the potential is there, and then it's just going to be upward growth from there. But. If they suffer here, if they stumble, if they can't get past DRX, then I think that it's going to take a little bit more time before we can say that they are true replacements. So I need to see that further development as time goes on. Predicated on today's in here. Yeah, I, I put an asterisk here because I agree with you, Seth, but I think that they 
aren't going to be better in Saucy and than Saucy and Pancata, but I think that they are the best option that Loud had. I think it's very hard to keep Super Teams together after you've won an event. Everyone wants your players. Everyone is going to be hankering mm. to take them. Mm. That's what happened to Loud, but the replacements they found were both fantastic. And I think with time, there's potential for them to be better, but thus far, I haven't seen enough for me to think that I can just go out and say they will be better long term. Uh, I appreciate the brilliant analysis, but I'm starting to realize that they don't understand how true and false works. Both of them ended yeah, up yeah, with, with a maybe. Yeah. He wrote false cap on the with an asterisk. One. You're right, actually. Cap, but cap is with the, is the modern day version. We've got one more statement. You're 33. Right. We've got one more statement to, <laughs> to declare here. And this one is Brazil will be in the grand finals of lock-in. All right? So it's a pretty simple one. It's basically a prediction. Whether or not that. Loud will defeat DRX and make it into the finals of lock-in. Now, Achilles, I know you don't have any skin in the game. You're an objective party, so I feel like yeah, it only sure. makes sense for me to go to you first on this one. Um, what are you thinking when it comes to uh, Loud's chances well, here? And I've got my board at the ready. The marker's not working super well, so you might not be able to read it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is going to be a big old false from me dash. I wrote just straight up no. Uh, DRX is going to win this one. DRX is going to win this one. Yeah. Okay. So again, we're, we, we don't understand the rules of true and false. They have the long jet. It's a false. It's we're a big old false. Thank you. We're going to have a, a separate but meeting after the no. show today. Yeah. That's not even an That's option. I I go. Is it my turn? It is, is it your my turn. turn. I'm going to let you jump in. My response to that is this is indeed true, which still has true in it. So that I have is. abided by the rules, <laughs> although I've slightly broken them because I'm a rebel. I love it. Yeah, there's love just it. there. I, I mean, I think map pool will make a big difference, but there's just no way. I, I, th this Loud roster, again, looks so good for as young as they are, for as, as as fresh of an iteration as the roster is. It really just feels like they're head and shoulders above the rest, with the exception of one team on the other side of the bracket. I, I really don't feel like Loud can hold a candle, or excuse me, DRX can, can hold a candle. Yeah, I Mimi, like the who's, the first way. who's right? Who's wrong? Um, I'm going to side. I think Doug is overstating how favorable towards Loud the matchup will be, but I do agree with him. Definitely didn't write yes. Definitely knew that it's true hey. or false, so I did write true. Points for that. I was totally that. ready for this one. Bonus um, points. <laughs> but in my opinion, uh, I think that well, DRX has looked good thus far this tournament. They've been pushed into a third map in every match they've played, and they've shown yeah. weakness in every series that they've played. They've had great ideas, but they've also looked counterable. And Loud has looked incredible at adapting in the mid game and winning in these series that go the distance. So I would favor Loud in this matchup, but I think it'll be close. It's very simple then. At the end of this broadcast, one person on this desk will either be laughing or crying. But some of us will be laughing. I mean, I'll be happy regardless, I think. So it's really about you guys managing your emotions on the yeah. desk today. Now, I want to know from you at home, is Doug making the right call? Mimi believes so. Achilles does not. Tell us and be sure to use those hashtags VCT Lockin and VCT so we can feature your broadcast or your tweets later on in the broadcast. And while you're on Twitter, go ahead and scan the QR code on the screen. Tell us who you think the favorite is in today's poll question. Now, you don't have to put any facial hair on the line, which I actually don't even think we discussed just now, did we? Facial hair? Yeah. No. Yeah. On the line. Yeah. Like loud. gamble. Yeah. Like if loud loses, you have to I think we jump. Oh, I, I think we jumped yes. the gun on spilling a little bit no, of that. No, I'm very OK with You're that. all right with I'm that? so confident that DRX will lose to loud in front of this crowd across probably four maps, if I were to have to guess, that I, I am willing to bet I would shave my mustache. You know what? If DRX loses. Doug, I'll shave my mustache too if this happens. Same. Boom. Okay. Those stakes. Okay. Are, that, and the you? fact that yeah, you're I'll willing to do that is well. crazy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, no, okay. How about this? How about this? Let's let's make this fair because I don't want you to shave your mustache. If DRX lose. I think he should have to grow a mustache. And, and you give me all of your DRX merch. That's Dude, a lot. That's going to, yeah, you don't have enough room in your house for all And of that. you have to wear a loud jersey for the rest of the tournament. I'll give you a jersey. I'll make that There deal. you go. A jersey. There you go. That's fair. Will you grow a mustache? Yeah, sure. Yes! I won't, I won't shave for that's the rest of the tournament. I want to see that so <laughs> all <right>. badly. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, let's start breaking down the match itself to kind of figure out, you know, how we arrived at these conclusions of who we think is ultimately going to win. We'll, of course, start with our reigning champs in loud. Doug, take it away. Yeah, I, you know, I mentioned it uh, a couple of times earlier, but I'm just so impressed and so excited by this roster. It, it, the fact that they have looked as well as they have this early uh, in their time together, the fact that they made as deep a run as they have, you got to remember, too, the gauntlet of this tournament 
it, it's really hard to get through this unscathed. It's really hard to stress how impressive that is. Yeah, it is really quite impressive. And the thing is that Loud, they are looking for the back-to-back -back here. This would be the second tournament win in a row for this squad if they can make it to the Grand Finals and close out. But it's with a brand new roster. And I think what makes this team so impressive is that despite making all these changes, despite shifting so much, they still have managed to hit the, the, the same placement thus far and the same quality mm. that Old Loud had, which with so much more time behind them. And Achilles, I think that's going to be one of the major questions for Loud coming into today. And if they do qualify for that Grand Final going sure. into Saturday as well, is that how does this new roster deal with the weight of expectation of being the reigning championship organization in front of a hometown crowd. Well, one of the things, you know, just having spoken to their coach, they're not really looking at this as being the reigning champions. Mm. They're looking at, at this as being a new iteration of the team that wants to obtain their first championship. So they're mm. completely ignoring the past. They're saying this is a new story that we're going to be plying forward through. And I think that that's a really good mentality to have because it does help alleviate a lot of that weight off of these players. As much as I love to be biased and make jokes about how DRX is going to crush this, this is a very scary team. They are all excellent players and they absolutely can take the series. Now, so Doug, we, did, we began the discussion by talking about the roster swap and whether or not we thought it was the right long-term plan. But in this very moment, do you truly believe this is a better version of Loud? In this very moment, yeah. compared to peak compared Loud? Compared to peak yeah. Loud champs probably, 2022. Probably not. Okay. Not at this very moment. But I think, again, it, it, when we think about it in the long term, yeah, I think there's a lot of promise here. And even with that said, I think this roster has a very good chance at, at, at taking down DRX, which is probably no surprise to the people at, watching at home at this point. I think if you matched up this team versus the old squad, you would you would favor the old Loud, but yeah. you would see there's a chance for an upset. And that's yeah, because it's exactly. a new style. Old Loud was very structured, very slow at times, was very much built on the coordination that Saucy um, and, and Sadak built into this roster. But this new squad is a lot more built on what the young talent can yep. pull off. They still have great ideas, but I think they've been a lot better at winning out when games get crazy when things get scrappy they've stayed calm under pressure and they have so much individual talent that they've managed to pull off wins that most probably didn't expect them to be able to do exactly like this nrg series that we're looking at right now this was such an intense uh, series and really was a test for this squad i feel like you kind of get your you make your way through an 18 16 map and it, go, it speaks to your idea of like, I think pressure might be off at that point, right? Sure. Uh, you kind of feel like, well, we've already been tested uh, uh, fairly well, but let's continue this conversation about the two new additions because they do seem like a good fit, albeit as Mimi mentioned, it does completely warp, I think, kind of the way that this team as a whole works. Yeah, I mean, we had a lot of questions about how these guys were going to perform because not only was it like, okay, they're joining this loud squad, there's a lot of pressure there, there's that story, there's that reigning championship narrative behind it, but there's also the live crowd. How are they going to deal with that when they have so many people that are sitting there cheering for you, desperately wanting you to win? And honestly, it was a breeze for yeah. them in every single series that they came out through. I mean, obviously, this one versus NRG was an absolute slog. It was a back and forth, but the fact that they were able to clutch it out off the backs of, of, of Tui's and Kawazin's play, for the most part, was incredible because we weren't seeing the known quantities such as Sonic being the ones who are really putting up big figures for them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I, the biggest point of this team was that it started with the older players really struggling in their first few matches. And it was Kawazin and Tui's that kept them in it. Now everyone seems to have come online. The coordination seems to have improved throughout the tournament. And it feels like these guys are really well embedded into the team at this point. Yeah, and I, I do think this feels like, I, I love this formula for Valorant teams. You get these cracked out young guys who can go insane and then you've got the older veteran leadership. You're able to develop them as as you're going and you saw it, when you get through a, a, a slugfest like that NRG series, you learn a lot about yourself. Yeah. And if you as the Young Bucks are the ones who are pushing forward and keeping the team afloat, it's a very promising sign. Let's hop to the other side of the matchup. It's DRX, Achilles. Of course, I'm going to hand it to you to lead us off on this one. Sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, DRX, what more can you say? Really rough road to get here, having to play all of their maps the whole way through. Yeah. But this is still the same five-player core. We have the addition of Foxy9, who's been sitting on the bench waiting for his moment to shine. That's probably not going to happen until we get into the Pacific League, but uh, they still are a very dangerous team. And for them, there's some history to this one, right? All the way back at Champions, it was Loud who sent this DRX squad down to the lower bracket to eventually get eliminated from that tournament while Loud went on to win. And for DRX, I'm sure they have that chip on their shoulder of not only wanting to keep the same five players, they're the only squad in the top four who has done that, and win this tournament, but also to defeat the squad that beat them at Champions in Loud. And Doug, what a time for them to run back into Loud as oh, yeah. they match their best showing in an international event here of a semifinal. 
final. A win here today puts them already higher than they've ever been, but right. they're going to have to do it against the team that knocked them down last time. Yeah, the, I mean, the irony is, is gorgeous, right? You can't write a better story. I will say this, though. It has been so much fun to watch this DRX roster evolve internationally, partially because of that, but also because it seems like they've gotten past their yips from the past, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're they they're choking, you know, they're whatever. They they can't win the big game. RB struggles. Who who's the spark? Who leads when things get bad? RB looks so much more comfortable in this role, and they've done it, uh, Mimi, as you were saying, they've done it by keeping the roster the way that it is. They have not made any drastic changes. They truly believe in the pieces that they have together. And I I like this idea of DRX being chokers just feels so long back yeah. at this point. Well, and, and Mimi, I have to wonder whether or not the fact of keeping the roster together is what has contributed to DRX being able to come out with sure. plenty of interesting and creative strategies here at this event. I think it is. We've, we've always known DRX as being a squad who is innovators, all the way back to their Vision Strikers days. We've yeah. expected that innovation to lead them to a victory. But I think the thing is, here at this tournament, well, they've shown some really good stuff. I still have some worries because they came out in this match versus C9. They played this really cool harbor composition, which I didn't expect to work as well as it did. And they executed it absolutely perfectly, but then they turn around, play against Talon just the next day, and it's the exact opposite. They lean into a lot of the same things, they run a lot of the same executes, and there they got shut down. It feels like DRX has been quite counterable in the past. Yeah, I mean, Talon did a really good job just getting that, you know, getting the study through, making sure they knew exactly how this was going to play. You can see Stax, he does manage to get that spike planted, but they know that the Cove is there. They spam through, they get that elimination that already sets DRX on that back foot, and I believe they end up going 0 and 3 at the start of that icebox map. Yeah. So it's really good reads from Talon, but DRX do need to continue to innovate. And with so much time off since the Alpha Bracket, I'm hoping that they'll come into this matchup with something new, Doug. Yeah, but I, I think you can look at it from the other side of the coin as well, right? There's been so much time. Yeah, you can iterate a couple of things, but if they've shown that they're going to try to lean into what they know and it's already been countered, what's not to say that it can't be countered again, right? Like, sure. if they stick to their old habits, I think they could be in trouble. You make a really good point, though. Off of this break, you, we've, we've, we've got to see more, especially against Loud. You can't walk in with the same stuff and expect not to get hit in the face. Yeah, now, of course, when we talk about teams coming out with creative ideas, I still look for an individual on the team to be performing with a certain level of consistency, to be that rock while maybe everybody else is throwing curveballs around. And when I think about consistency, I normally jump to controllers. And we had a conversation about a certain player earlier while number we might be in disagreement. Number one in the world. Number one in the <laughs> world. A player to watch on this team is, of course, Mako and what he can get done today. He's been having an incredible incredible tournament so far, Kilios. And the thing is, and this is why I say he is the best controller in the world, is because he always has an incredible tournament. This guy always is the solid foundation for the team. You talk to any of the players here on DRX, they say, who would you rather leave in a clutch? They always say, it's Mako. Well, the statistics might not back that right now at this event. <laughs> it's actually been RB who's been having the most success. True. Mako is always there, and he's always putting up solid figures in the mid-round. And I think it's really important for him to be that good in this matchup, because you're playing against a team in Loud who thrives in those late rounds, thrives when things get scrappy and they can clutch things right. up. So players like Mako and RB are going to have to be fantastic today if they want to win. If, if I may, yes. put you on the spot here. By all means. If, if you were to take any player in a clutch 1v1 situation on DRX's roster, would you take Mako? Right now, at this event, I would have to go for RB because a lot of people, a lot of people sure. think that Xiao might be the one who's leading in clutches. It's actually RB. He's got him bested by 0.5% clutch win rate yeah. with uh, eight or nine more attempts. He's currently 10 and 17. Wait, that's nuts, though. Are you telling me that they have the two players who are 1-2 in clutches on the same team at the tournament? No, Mako's actually not been as clutch this tournament okay, because okay. he hasn't had to be, he hasn't about had to to say, be as clutch. I was like, that would be but absolutely But RB has nuts. just been destroying. All right. Previously, he has been that guy who but is yes. the best clutcher for this yeah. team. So He's we might see good. that come out today. Yeah, well, and they might have to bring it out today if they want to take down Loud. Now, before we kick off today's semifinal, we got a special announcement about the status of Valorant Premier. Now, if you've ever had dreams of competing on the big stage or maybe you want to take your five stack to the next level, you definitely want to check this out. Hey everyone, I'm Andy, Game Director for Valorant, and I'd love to give you all an update on Premier. Just as a refresh, Premier will be Valorant's team-based competitive system that connects the game and the sport as one greater whole. This new challenge will invite you to build a team and compete throughout the act in a series of weekly matches on designated maps. If you win enough of your Premier matches, you'll earn your way into a playoff tournament at the end where you'll battle to be crowned one of the top teams in your skill division. Premier will be an exciting way for any five stack of friends to compete together, but for those of you who aspire to go pro, 
Here's Leo, our head of Valorant Esports, to tell you more about what that could look like in the future. Thanks, Andy. All right, so let's say you found your dream team. You won game after game and proved yourselves to be one of the best. You're feeling super confident and you're hungry for bigger challenges. In the future, Premier will be the path to the VCT Challenge Elites. No more open qualifier events. Your path to pro starts in game. And if you do great, you get a shot at challengers. Once you're there, well, you're playing with the pros and nothing can stop you. From the challenger leagues, you can promote into the international leagues and one day even get to champions. So it's five friends in a dream playing from their bedrooms all the way up to the biggest stage in Valorant. It will of course take us some time to make this a reality, but we are incredibly excited to build this very unique path to pro and create opportunities for players all around the world. Thanks, Leo. What we shared today was just the basics. The next step is getting an early version of Premiere in front of you so that we can build the future of competitive Valorant together. On that note, I'm happy to announce that the Premiere Global Beta is planned to begin in Act 3 of Episode 6 just a couple months from now. We'll be back with more details as we get closer, but for now, definitely start putting your team comps and playbooks together. We'll see you soon. If I may very quickly, I'm so excited for Premiere for a number of reasons, but the primary one is because I'm so excited for the content that will come out of Josh molding ah. through his matches he's, because he's going to ego chow the same jet 25 rounds in a row, and he's yeah. just going to get diffed every Whoa. single time. Whoa. Whoa. I mean, what, you can't fight back? I, what? I just, uh, I feel so badly for Bala on that team. He's just oh, going to be hard carrying a so, bunch of potatoes. here's my question. What happens when the broadcast team elevates into competitors? Who runs the show at that You've point. You've tried that. Right? Oh. Well, these guys certainly right. won't. Well, I'm like a silver KJ one trick. Maybe so. minus Josh plus you. Yeah, there it is. That right. might be an upgrade. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, Josh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're not I'll, sorry, Josh. I'll be the calming force uh, in the <laughs> team. Uh, I just lose again. All right, now, earlier we put a poll up on Twitter and asked you to tell us which team is going to move on to the grand finals. The results are in. And let's get that reveal. That's what I like wow. to see, baby. Let's Achilles go. gets the backing from the fans in the DRX prediction. I will admit I am utterly flabbergasted. Are you? At the outcome of this poll. Where Woo. where are my Brazilian people? <laughs> where What's happened to Twitter? Are, you, are we too excited because we're in the crowd and we're not looking that's at Twitter? It. They're all that's here. They're, they're all in the audience. Yeah, that's all the right. real issue. We need to get them on Twitter ASAP. We but really do. Somebody I get them actually, accounts. I, I feel like this is kind of the expected result. I feel like this is a 60-40 game in favor of DRX. I, I kind of want to punt and pred loud, but I think that DRX is probably the, the fair favorite here, right? They've stuck to their same roster. They've hmm. had a lot more experience. They've shown us good ideas, whereas Loud is still putting the pieces together. They're still in that developmental phase, and I'm not sure if it's enough to win today. Wow. Wow. Well, I already feel like I know where all of you are going because most of our discussion has been focused around just that. But let's go ahead and get you on record officially for your predictions. You can either pull those whiteboards back out if you want. I'm really going to leave it I up really to you. I really like drawing. I know. I kind of My figured. mom was an art teacher. And I, disappointed if I, I wanted didn't. to make sure that Mimi had permission. I'm not going to bother because my marker is not working. <laughs> that's awesome. Would you like a marker? And, and again, you like to borrow a marker? We already, I'll give you a blue one. We already okay. know. All right, Mimi. It's fine. DRX versus Loud, you said it was a 60-40, but that 40% can still happen. I'm so, down in Preds right now. So I want to I wanna go for the 40. Woo! I'm damn bow in this one. Damn bow. Okay. Okay, yeah, All don't right. take Mimi to Vegas. <laughs> she's, she's playing the 40%. Uh, Achilles? I, d I don't need a whiteboard because I have a jersey. DRX is going to take it. Boom, there Man, it is, and there's uh, facial hair on the line. And if they yeah. don't, I'll be handing this over to Doug. Man, yeah. that jersey is going to look so good on me later. <laughs> uh, I 1,000% uh, am going loud here. Yeah. I think, yeah, the, the thing is they've just looked so strong, right? They, they look very good through the bracket that they've come through. Uh, they seem like top two in the tournament, to be very honest. I think it would it would be, quite frankly, shocking if they don't make it to the finals. I mean, Doug, you might want to swap your pred. I don't know if you want that jersey, because I have seen Seth wearing it every single day at the hotel. Not sure if it's been washed. It he probably like, yeah, sleeps in it, yeah. wakes up in it. Shows up to the arena showers every day. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Actually shower in the jersey. Oh. I don't even I don't think know that's that, how you clean it. I don't yeah. know if that makes it That's better efficient. or worse. Yeah, I'm like a never nude with you a You just DRX really love the, love the planet. 
exactly. Yeah. The, you'll look great in the jersey. The mustache will look great on the floor if you end <laughs> up losing. I'm going to be happy either way, I think, when it comes to this series. I'm just hoping that after flying all this way, we go the distance for me. I think that's really what it comes down yeah. to as we yeah. move to the best of fives. I really want to see these two teams push each other all the way. Yeah, and I, and I do think that's exceptionally likely for this series and the one tomorrow. Really, yes. and the one Saturday, be honest. All the, all really, the matches from here on out. Yeah. They, they ought to be very, very competitive series. It feels like we have the, the four best teams that, yeah. that are left over, and it should make for a lot of fun. Yeah. Do you, you agree with that? Four best teams? Do you feel like we could kind of definitively say that in a single Elim bracket, we somehow actually wound our way to, like, truly? I thought we were going to have at least one team that upset their way all the way in and right. made, like, a miracle run. Hasn't happened. I think all these four teams really deserve their spots and are going to play such close matches today. Yeah. I agree. I mean, I can hear the crowd getting riled up. I'm ready to go. It's going to be exciting. Have they're getting riled up, and they're getting riled up for good reason. Let's get this day started and kick off the Alpha Bracket semifinals. It's the Americas taking on the Pacific. Loud versus Dion. RX. Best of five, it's all on the line. We're here in Sao Paulo, Brazil for lock-in day 13, and it starts right now. Acho que é um sonho. Todo brasileiro que joga FPS é um sonho levantar um troféu muito importante desse assim em casa. Hoje é um balde algum lavaco tem um, né? Tem um menino que cai de sua Only two teams in the media left. Only one of us can go to the final. Navi. That's going to be a bit of a revenge match. I think the guys are one of the best rosters in terms of individual skill. But we're a pretty scary team. One v three for Shabao. One two three. I'm still aiming for MVP this tournament, so I need to step it up. You've got to put respect when respect is due. However, when we're on a server, only disrespect. A gente cresceu muito nesse tempo de torneio. Então, sabemos que a DRG é um time muito, muito forte e vai ser um confronto bem difícil. Então, esse ano, o Lagim deve ser o Loud. Eu não sei se é um time de home ground, mas eu não sei se é um time de home ground. Eu não sei se é um time de home ground. Eu não sei se é um time de Eu acho que nosso ponto forte é que a gente tem uma molecada muito jovem, com sangue no olho, com muita vontade de ganhar. Eu não sei se eu não sei se eu não sei se eu não sei se Aqui está o Brasil. Faz isso ele. O Brasil está vivo em solo brasileiro, brasileiro, brasileiro. Guys, let's have some fun.
two absolute giants of the Valorant scene about to go head to head in a best of five. For DRX, it's about overcoming the hurdle that knocked them down last time at an international event. And for Loud, it's about performing with the weight of expectation in front of a home crowd. I gotta say, quick shout out to Aspas. I wasn't sure if he still had it. I gave him that DRX bear after they won champions back in Istanbul. And now that they finally meet, he brings it out on the stage. So shout out to him for holding on to it. I just hope that he doesn't rip its head off at the end of this. I mean, they've collected a new stuffed animal every match they have won since champions. This team is still undefeated since then. And they're looking for another one here. I was just saying, I'm a little worried that it's going to turn into a post-match <laughs> celebration. And speaking of, let's dive straight into map select. We're waiting on those vetoes first before we get into the five maps that we'll see played. If I may very quickly, this is the only time I'll do this. If I do it again, you guys can slap me on the wrist, whatever. I, I hate to be the guy who makes the joke about loud, playing in front of a loud crowd. Yeah. But they're so freaking loud. They are very, I had very to, loud. I had to ask them to turn my headphones up. It's deafening in here. Yeah, the game has not even started yet. But for both these teams, first best of five in the tournament, they both head back to their permas and the first pick for Loud is Pearl. This is a map that they have been picking consistently throughout the tournament and has looked great on. Their only loss, overtime to NRG. Yeah, so no surprise that Pearl comes in for them while they will have to recover from that narrow loss to NRG just a bit ago. Now for the side of DRX again, Achilles, we kind of talked about how they've already had to show five maps. Yeah. So I'm, I'm mostly curious about what they feel are their best options against Loud. I mean, they do go for the ice box that has been a bit of a staple for them here at this tournament, but they did get pushed by Talon, so that goes back to that question, have they innovated some new strategies going over to that map, or is it going to be more of the same? A big thing for me, though, that I'm excited to see is that split. Yeah. DRX have been taking it away, but historically, if you go back in time, this was their most dominant map in history back during the first season of ECT. That it has been, but it's also one that Loud is fantastic on with this double duel as comp. Teams have tried to pick it into them. NRG got stomped despite feeling prepared. We end with Fracture and Ascent, and this map pool is really interesting to me, because Loud in the first four maps get to play all three of the maps that they've already played, that they've already shown. Yeah. I was about to say, Doug, we, we've got the guarantee, right, of Pearl Icebox split. If we're lucky, we make it to Fracture and Descent. Do you feel like now seeing the maps fall in and as we dive into the Prime Gaming Agent Select, that we'll actually get to that fourth and fifth map? Uh, I, I think fourth, maybe. I think this map does, does not favor DRX, to be honest, and I think it's because of what you mentioned, Mimi. Oh, uh, DRX might be making a change here. RB is picked into the sky, Stax is picked into the harbor. Okay. They are Ooh. trying to cook something up here. Previously, they were just playing off these executes with Buzz, with tons of initiator utility, with the Sova. Now they've made a change. It's clear that that time since the alpha bracket has brought them prepared. And this is going to give us a mirror match on either side, so it's all going to come down to who has the better strategies and who is going to be able to pilot this composition to success. Yeah, I, I mean, and what are we talking about? One of the big things for DRX in holding their roster together was that it gave them time to cook, time to come up with those strategies, see if it's enough to take the first series or for the first match in our best of five. With that, it's time for us to hand it over to our casters. Here's Brent and Sideshow. Yes, the battle of wills, the battle of titans between DRX and Loud here. And it is that Americas versus Pacific rivalry that stretches even further right here, right now. And Josh, Vindication Revenge, there's so many labels you can attach to this, yeah. but is that rematch that we witnessed from champs of last year? And at Champions, you heard some of the same stories from the desk. DRX are probably the favorites. Loud are the underdogs coming into it. Who came out on top? Loud in a commanding 2-0 that embarrassed DRX and set us all thinking that another classic DRX choke was incoming. Well, they vanquished those demons, top three at champs, top four guaranteed here at lock-in two. But the journey from title contender to trophy lifter can be an arduous one. And they're here to fight for revenge and redemption. And loud an opportunity for them to get one step closer to potentially claiming that back-to-back -back trophy, something that nobody has ever done in VCT history. And this fast approach, you're seeing it. Buzz up top! The dash play and updraft, and he shut down. Sadak was aware of it. No flash from RB there to try and help him taking that duel up top. It's a fairly common position that Sadak's played before in the past. Remember him dueling Nevera from that spot. See how the battle goes on the flank, though. Incredibly fast flank. And Zest is going to have his work cut out for him right now, being swamped and swarmed. There's four players now waiting to match him. Flash. That's a connection. Wall's going to be doing a decent amount of chip damage there, decaying down, making it ever so slightly easier still. Holding it down, and Zest is dealt with. All down to Arby and Mako. 
The reposition is there, but it's not planted for them, and they still have to deal with Sadak from the high ground. Walls on walls, obfuscating this one. The tap onto the spike, running forwards, reloading the clip, time's down in the run low. Two years into the fuse, and Loud clean it up. A massive pistol round that sends a place into uproar here. Loud have been so good on pistols. All of these top four teams have, though. We truly do have the creme de la creme playing in the semis for lock-in. But Loud have been so impressive, picking up their coach that focused super heavily on pistol rounds where they dominated a champs. And you can see that actually, even though DRX have adjusted their composition to play a mirror match in this game, still those B post plants causing a problem for DRX. It ruined them in the game against Cloud9 and led to a massive failure on Pearl. It's one thing being able to just pick the comp, it's another thing entirely to match up against the team that started playing it here on Pearl. And Loud Strike early with another first death onto Buzz. Not one that he could have particularly avoided, though. Not quite, still being beamed down. And this is a Loud squad that, uh, throughout their run at lock-in in that alpha bracket, they've been quite fiery, passionate plays, sometimes a bit of overheating, I won't lie. Possibly the crowd playing a part in that. Gets the excitement going, gets the blood pumping, but with this week to prepare for this on either side, we'll see if Loud can temper some of that fiery passion. He's RBE. Up. Surely he doesn't get a chance at this one. Now, Cowan Seen's ready for it and building up towards the Seekers, too. Could be a big ultimate, especially when Loud are going to be playing retake B most of the time. Sadak playing in those. Uh, back positions, anchoring the site. Uh, Sadak has been a weakness on their defensive side. It felt like when Loud played against NRG. I mean, do you remember that game, Brian? It feels like forever ago at this point. But what a game it was. And on Pearl, NRG seemed like they had a heavy focus on putting pressure B-Long and trying to punish Sadak. We'll see what game plans DRX have cooked up in the last 10 days. There's going to be a lot of importance placed on this one. Loud, obviously, with the bonus round. So the weaponry is a bit weaker. Flash play through the wall, trying to take the fight with Zest. Holding it down, will not be able to claim the second, though. Great instant response, and it's going to hand the rifle over to the hands of one of the loud players. And an immediate pivot here, called from Stax, taking the rest of his team through to beat long. And here's where pressure starts to be applied to Sadak. What's his choice? With Kawanzin falling, those Seekers that I mentioned in the prior round are nowhere near. Off the table entirely. Sadak's looking worried about mid, actually. He could have been compromised in the moment. Still, Kova's going to go down. Should offer that safe plan for Stax. And you can see there was a Nana Swarm that was laid down earlier. Just trying to predict where the plant location might be to push them back. But waiting to see if DRX can hold on now. These post plants were ruinous for DRX. It's a 4v4 with better weaponry. But look how far back some of their players are always positioned. Stax and Mako cannot help these guys on site. So far back. And now that that wall goes up, it's going to make it ever so slightly more difficult. Puzz claims the one in instant trade. Players are weak, though. Arby still active, still around. And he's going to be that final layer to this fight right now. And what timing can he take? No one clearing horse through. Anybody going to be watching this smoke snake bite, though, buys them a bit of time. Two years taken out. As the time chips down, the deafening gloom enters the arena, the crowd. No more noise going to be made. That's a big one. And I think Loud have got some learning moments from that round for sure. They've looked at the bots clearly of DRX, and they know that a lot of people are going to be playing off-site. DRX is post plants on B. They have a couple of players pillar, a couple of players all the way back towards the alt orb. They like to play off the site. And Loud assumed too much there, based on looking at the VODs, and didn't actually clear the site. Sadak ran forwards, instant prey to Buzz, and RB was never cleared, never noticed, nope. in fact. They were just happy to wall it off, I think. So as Loud go into their B post plants, their B retakes, they're going to have to put a bit more attention, and not just assume everyone's playing for those spam angles. The Cascade pushing back that one angle. There was a flash as well prior. Buys them that kind of space that they were looking for there, and an alarm bot, so... Really just making sure they layer down that utility, making it quite difficult. Stax gets his ult online here, and this is a good one for pushing B. Honestly, it's pretty good for both sides. But it seems to me like they're going to be running into Aspas here. And Aspas could be the difference maker, operator in his hands. 
Give him that sight line, give him a chance, and he'll make the most of it. With this new setup and new composition, the Viper Orb can get bloomed at any time from Marco. And it's going to stop Aspas from having an idea. Cascade to follow as well. He Lots takes an early peek, an aggressive one. Yep, activates the dash. The Reckoning, though, that is definitely going to be forcing him. Can't really sit and wait, and well, they'll just wade right into him. An easy one handed to Aspas, an opening. It's going to be good for Loud. We'll see how they play this retake, though, now. Once more, post plan positions, the back of halls. Going to be held by DRX, a bit of raw spam there from the Phantoms. Reload, top up the clips once more. Still a couple of bullets left waiting for them. Snake bite though, that's the supplemented being squeezed and the timing just not good. Sadak, there was nothing else to follow that up. Cove dropped down, bursted down, a swing from Les as he hears the reload but can't claim the kill. What is that from Stax? He's mid reload there getting pushed and still comes out on top. These DRX players that are in passive positions, Marco for example in this round, they're not even being required. Loud can't get through the first layer of post plan, which is just to flush out the people from backside. Yeah. Fantastic utility being used there from Marco as well. The snake bites on the floor, helping fend off the loud players, break up the spacing there. But I'm still, it still looks dangerous to me. When you look at how RB's positioned in backside there with stacks, they're isolated, they're on an island. In theory, Loud should be able to fight these guys four or five versus two and take two separate fights where they're favored in both on the retake and yet they cannot coordinate it properly these drx players are holding on so strongly and it could be that the gravity of the situation the arena in uproar of course now, speaking to fraud about it he said you know listen we've got some young guys on this team Sometimes that kind of passion, it bleeds into moments like that where they just have a little bit of a misstep. They don't play like they have been in practice. People don't mention it very often, but the crowd absolutely can be a double-edged sword. Bait you into being greedy and going for one more, perhaps, or... Of course, the, the sound itself isolating and uh, confusing footstep noises, etc. It's not always just straight up a home field advantage. So now the Trailblazer are getting used to try and force okay. these players out. Puts a little bit, a modicum of pressure upon RB. Yeah, just one for one, flash over the top. Oh, oh the my movement. goodness, the movement. And there's no punish in sight. Maybe with a rifle in a couple of the hands of them, but RB's still locking down the angle, still good for it. And Loud have got a real problem on their hands here. I mean, even with pistols in hand, you would expect RB to fall. And he dances, he dodges, and makes a fool of the loud players. Ducks and weaves. Timeout now called then, as Frod, the man you were mentioning in the coaching seat, Bren, gets his chance to talk to the players on loud. And I'm definitely seeing some nerves early on from the loud guys. I would agree. I think they're not going through their protocols of retake very well. And I think also the gap between the player that's furthest forward and the second or third player to follow up is way too large. Bit of miscommunication in the ranks, perhaps. Sadak's been caught out early on the retakes, too. And all of this with Buzz having four first deaths. So, you know, they're certainly getting the openings, but they aren't... Uh, sorry, three first deaths. Let me correct myself there. But they're certainly getting the openings. And they're putting DRX into uncomfortable spots, and then they're not able to capitalize. Yeah. Whereas DRX, on the opposite side of this, look like they've been in this spot before. And wow, what a difference that is compared to the DRX of old, where we would see them at this point in the tournament, and you just knew in your bones the crumble was coming. No more. Now, this is a different DRX squad. They've been tested in the fires of many of these global events now, and this, uh, most recently in these months as well, having a bit of that breakthrough, making sure that they don't finish in that fifth or sixth place that was cursing them time and time again. This time, they're aiming for grander sights in this match opportunity, a chance to really carve their name out in VCT history and potentially claim that trophy. Obviously, still one more match before that, and you might be getting ahead of ourselves as this is the beginning of the series. A flash play, doesn't get too much info, actually. Doesn't spot a thing, and ducking down, that's Mako. But backing away, this Viper Orb does a lot to try and fake that they could be crossing, but with Aspas, this pushed up. Even taking a peek, doesn't have the dash active. This is such a risky play, could be anyone meeting him. It's good info. The flash from Cohen Zine. And Seekers pop from such 
a safe position from RB. Yeah, really quite far back there. Looking for some sort of indication that they could be pushed deep, and Aspas, well, he has to respect that. He does back away from the angle, and this is the time to strike now for DRX. Here comes the utility, rocketing up close. Dash has to be used to disengage from Aspas still. The second layer of util is there. Snake bite, flash, and pushing forwards. Ball is going to be gained. And now there's their counterplay. Seekers and their own reckoning. Pound for pound, the ultimates are used, and they have just been collapsed upon. Lessons of going down to his own snake bite. Lockdown going to be used close. Someone has to break this. No one's on the spike. It's getting a bit panicky. Loud. Where are the protocols? Where is the plague being made? Two detained leaves it down to a 2v2 here. And suddenly, DRX might have saved themselves. It's looking dangerous. Time running low. Hard to tell when the crowd is cheering and chanting. It's a maelstrom of emotion right now up top, up close and personal. But eventually, it is claimed. Even scoreline for Loud, three to three. And it is already getting hectic. But there's a couple of important things to point out there. First of all, huge amount of ultimates being used in that round. And starting with stacks, he's already up to his second reckoning of the map so far after round six. That's absurd. And it's not just because he's been getting kills and dying a lot. He's also farming ult orbs, and that seems to be a key part of their strategy, similar to the way that he plays Breach on Haven. Do Loud realize? Can Loud adjust? The second layer to that, too, is that Loud actually found those picks beforehand, and they're going aggressive again. Yeah, there was a flash around the corner, but it was a slightly delayed with it. Fantastic opening for Aspas, going to be waiting back. Doesn't even have to activate his dash. Of course, that's going to be fading away in good time. And he's certainly getting the better end of Buzz here. While it looks like team nerves from Loud, Buzz is the one that's out of sync with the rest of his team on DRX. Going down as the first pick, actually, in the prior round in the post plant was the thing that opened things up for Loud. But now four players stacked towards the B side, leaving Sadak alone. The 4-1 defense frequently leaves the team captain and IGL isolated on, a lot, on an island for this Brazilian squad. This is really quite perplexing, isn't it? A lot of space being given to DRX in mid. That knowledge has to be known. And here comes the fight being taken. Two years and Stacks face to face. It's Stacks that wins it. What a kill. Trailblazer in the back now. The pressure and player is known onto Sadak. Skipping a hop there just to escape into Flowers. And he has moved away still. Nana Swamp. Pushed them back. Makoto catching and containing Les, who was looking for a cheeky play of his own. Fantastic slow round here from DRX. Cowan seemed to respond, though, and that puts things down into a 3v3. And they're being met for it. Stax had no idea that Aspas was on the flank. Yep. But Aspas is alone. Only the knives to work with. There's going to be that cascade in his face. Where's the rest of the team? Sadak moves his way across. Great flash timing off that one from the alarm bot. And Nana Swarm is buying the time. A tap of it forces the fight, forces a peak. RB goes down, but it is still running low, and now finally they're getting on top of it! Half on the defuse, all down the stacks! Smoked off right around the corner, and the bullets just do not land! Consolation prize towards the end for stacks there as he picks up both of the loud players. But loud has what matters. A fourth round on the board. And really nicely played from Aspas, too, on the flank, just applying pressure, the threat that he could be there, stop the DRX players from being able to focus their full attention forwards. The economy has been kept honest, though. Aspas can afford an operator, but it's only a spectre for less. And less does the vast majority of the trading for Loud on this map. I have to think that might be a difference maker. As you see the round getting played out. Look at Stax again here. He's one away from his third reckoning. Just funneling those ult orbs into him. The plants, yeah. making sure that they can build and prioritize that ultimate. And I think also Stax could start using these in the post plant to stop the retake happening. Because Loud are giving them a lot of space around the map there in, in seven and even in prior rounds too. They were getting onto site fairly easily. Time to strike is nigh. Lesser has to try and stop this now. Updraft straight across. Buzz. They know he's into the side. He's cut this one up for them, but isolated. Nanoswarms at their feet. Another snake bite placed down 
But Stax with full disrespect, barrels his way through onto the site. Postplant Viper's Pit, going to be difficult to deal with. Kamenzine does not have his Trailblazer. No informational abilities whatsoever. They've just got to walk inside. It has to be a miracle, and a miracle might just be it. Mako on the corner. Kill claim, but 30 health remaining, and now the ults are flying through. Stax lets loose of the Reckoning, and positioning is known. No one can stand still. No one can remain seated, but a mistake. And an awesome play by Loud there, too. Tui's new player for Loud drops the cove, and they know that that forces Stax to spam it. And they're essentially kind of trading the cove there. As Stax is forced to unload bullets into it, Aspa swings. And now it's DRX on the back foot. Just a couple of moments that have gone wrong for them. I think the game plan is actually perfect from DRX, to be honest. They're farming ult orbs correctly, they're getting into good post plant situations. I mean, in that, in that round, they have a 4v3, I think, with a pit down and a reckoning to play with. Everything should be favored towards them. And yet, loud skill and confidence to just get up inside the Viper ult. And the way that DRX are dropping off site, it seems to be all favoring loud there. You can't give them that much space. So this narrow lead, narrow margin that's being led here by loud in map number one of our best of five semi-finals. Winner getting to move on, move up through that tournament to that final pedestal, an opportunity, of course, to lift an even grander and greater trophy. At champions when these two teams faced, Brent, DRX threw a 9-3 lead on the first map and then crumbled map two. That's why it's about redemption here as well as revenge. And I'm currently looking at Buzz, who played pretty poorly when they ended up choking at champs. He's currently two and seven with five first deaths. Five first deaths out of eight rounds played. That's quite spectacular. You normally expect Buzz to be on the, on the giving end of that, not the receiving end. Yeah. Definitely a player that needs to adjust his tempo based on the opponent. It's all going to be used now, pushing through. Getting a bit of space there into Art. Making sure that nobody was ever so slightly close, but the defensive setup of Loud, they've got Aspas holding that one deep angle on the A main choke with the operator, so that's going to be giving them constant peace of mind. This round is everything for DRX. One away from getting ecoed and sinking to a terrible first half after what they'd accomplished early on. So loud, I mean, they pump a little bit of the util there into R, but they don't break that alarm bot. They don't do the job yeah. really fully there. And it it's just allowed less the peace of mind once more to rotate over here to help them out. Yeah, Reinforcements. Peace, peace of mind is absolutely the correct term to use. Loud can commit so many players to be a preemptive Viper's pit as well off a tiny amount of utility, but the time is ticking and DRX have got to go in. Yeah, they know that this is being committed now. Dash through off to the side. It could just be that spam. Cove down, exchange of fire, back and forth, back and forth, but the spike on the floor. With 24 seconds left, this. It's looking like a bit of a disaster. Less is going to be the target that needs to go down, but the Seekers from Kawazin earned. It's going to be expended, well used now. 13 seconds left, Zest catching Aspas. Time running so damn low. And the gravity of the situation really just laying itself down. I don't believe this time the spike was picked up. And there is not. Still. Yeah, that's it. Sadak desperately trying to stay alive there, tucked into the corner. But that's all the time pressure. And Bren, I think one of the most crucial points in the round you picked up as it was happening, not breaking the alarm bot in mid. How do you get the spike down in this situation when Les has the presence of mind to just drop the pit early? And it covers the entire site. That's a dagger to the heart of the Korean squad, searching for their first spot in a grand final. It's not an eco round, actually. They still managed to pull a buy out with knives and scraps and odd ends. Yeah, really just clutching. Bottom of the barrel in terms of the purchase that they're able to make here, but we are rapidly approaching the end of this first half. It's a lockdown to use. 
push them back away from the side. Loud. It's going to be alerting them now that they know that this is going to be aiming towards that B hit once more. Seekers cleaving their way through the site. No one going to be waiting for this one. But it's going to be that 5v5, and a lockdown is now going to be used on the opposing side. This is going to give so much space. Trailblazer instantly destroyed. RB, sole player left into the corner. Slight little cubby to play inside of, but he's alone. Needs to try and survive, needs to get more done, but just one kill will be it. The rest of the team playing those post plants. Operator Angle Cove laid down at his feet and it gives two years the ability to start sticking this now. Where's the spam? Where's the answer? It's util, but half on the board already. And the pressure is on, the pressure is mounting the spam. Anything could happen. It's down to just less. He wins it out, time ticking away. Will he have enough? It's down to milliseconds. Surely, surely he will do it. Perfectly played retake from Loud there. It's the same punish on DRX. When they leave too many players playing that long range spam, Loud are gobbling them up. The aggression, the confidence to push forward, and this wall does so much. The high tide, allowing Les to get tucked into a close position, and the Cove as well managing to get them half on the spike. Look at that frustration. And almost disbelief. Buzz two and nine, having an absolute nightmare here on Pearl. Difficult to ask of him. The attack side jet play is usually struggling to get that kind of impact. You need to be set up well for it. And if there's even the slightest amount that's out of sync, it can cause what we're seeing right now. Trailblazer does connect though. That's less stunned up, has to back away actually, but still not clearing the alarm bot. The alarm bot is not going down. Zest was previously playing Sova on this map, and it was his job to deal with the utility. It feels like with this compositional adjustment, it's now nobody's responsibility. There is no one stepping up and wondering about where the Killjoy utility might be played. This is round 11, and DRX still don't have the read. Buzz has to face check it in order to get rid of the thing. So it is removed with 50 seconds remaining. Weaker firepower on the side of DRX, but maybe they can make the most of this one. Flash around the corner, high ground angle, turret. It watches it. Starting to see them take that space still. Les will anchor it. Lovely kill to find one after another. And just not enough time to really make any sort of plays here. Up to Stax and Zest, seeing what they can do. Being swarmed and approached from every position. That was in from R, the spam down angle is common enough. Tap of the spike, but a double face, that'll clean it. Finalized. In the 10 days that DRX have had since they played their last match, they've clearly come up with a game plan here. You can see what they're going for in these rounds. But the execution is just not there. The firepower, overwhelming from Loud. Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And DRX look lost out there. And now it is on that final round here of the first half. DRX hoping that they can scrape together a round. A battle to be taking place here. Looks like all five members of DRX waiting right into this one. Knives in the hand of Aspas, Dash going to be engaged, raw spam, Flash trying to push through the right click, no one's cleaning it up, Aspas. And they all fall down. 9-3. Devastating, dominating. So many words you could use to describe this half, but it is loud in that driving seat. Such an explosive beginning that we've seen. And it was a 9-3 half the last time these two teams faced. DRX up and then threw it away. Do you believe in curses? Loud just looked too strong to let this one drop, but I'm sure the same could have been said if you were watching that game at Champs too. Well, just an electric first half, but let's send it down to the desk to break it all down so far. 
Thank you so much, Bren. It didn't take long for Loud to find their rhythm as they push the first half scoreline to nine and three. But Doug, I actually want to start on the DRX side because we saw them make the composition pivot to match Loud. Yeah, and I think that it's been so much fun to, I nerd out about Harbor so hard, right? But it's been so much fun to watch how they're using their utility, but what's been most impressive to me is their heavy investment into the Reckoning, right? Everyone is trying to funnel those orbs through the orbs, through the plants, through everything they possibly can to maximize the efficiency on the Reckonings. They fully believe in chaos, creating windows for them to execute on. And honestly, both teams have done that. Yeah, I mean, this has kind of just been the classic approach from DRX as far as just feeding stacks ults as much as humanly possible. We see the same thing when he's playing the Breach, trying to get those Rolling Thunders up. This is this is very much the same for the Reckoning. And for those early rounds, it was working out really well for them to be able to Breach into this B site and get that plant down. And actually, in this replay, we see them pushing Aspas away. And I want that's where I want to go next, Achilles. The Jet matchup that we have in this one. Aspas is in a rhythm right now. No, he absolutely is, and Buzz is completely out of it right now. He's trying to dance with two left feet. You can see 64 ACS. This is one of the weakest performances at a half we have ever seen from yeah. Buzz. He currently finds himself 2-11 and 2. That is brutal, whereas Aspas is completely and utterly vibing. And All it right. feels similar, right? It's another one of these things where we see the game plan from DRX, and then it starts to fall apart. Yeah. Right, so of course, we're going to ask for the individuals to step up, Mimi, in the second half. But let's talk about what, as a team, we can maybe expect out of DRX as they move to the defensive side. We saw the defensive side from Loud. It was absolutely fantastic throughout. They're very good at retakes, using the Harbor and Viper utility to get it done. We'll have to see if DRX can do the same. They'll need to if they want to come back. They have found themselves in a difficult position here on map one, but it's all, not all done and dusted just yet as we head back to Brandon's sideshow for the second half. What an uphill climb it will be for DRX to manage a comeback in this fashion, in this form as well. In the arena right now, we mentioned it, the swirling emotions, the crowd as well playing a decent part, I can imagine. It doesn't matter how veteran you are. It doesn't matter how many global events you've been to. Nothing can quite prepare you for this. And the newer players on Loud are still putting on excellent performances too. You saw the results there. For both of these teams on Pearl, DRX had one map on Pearl where they looked immaculate and one where they got stomped by Cloud9. Loud being a little more stable, only lost in OT. Could DRX possibly bring this out to OT though? It would require the pistol, I think. And much more besides. Yeah. Many rounds after the fact, let's see though. Goal of this round gonna be that A split, pushing forward, Zest, get his attention. Just taken away for but a moment. A bit of frenzy spam exchange. Stacks that will stay alive still. Eventually falling. Aspas just claiming so many kills. So much damage done. Hot flash play. Bit of false information. Maka still claims one. Now the answer though. An instant swing. And my goodness. Three in a round for him. And Mako, we've seen this guy pull off magic before. But this might be a little bit too much. Four in the round for Aspas, putting on a masterclass out there. 18 and seven. It's unreal. I mean, long range with the frenzy, mid range, close range, doesn't matter. Four health, whatever. This guy gets it done. And he's a big game player. That's what's incredible. That time on Loud has taken him from being a rookie to a veteran so quickly. Yeah. It's been Aspas who's the one who has to really step up. It's been said in a couple of the interviews as well, you know. When Loud went on that dominant run when they won the championship title last year. Like you said, Josh, he was a bit green to it. Obviously, many belts, many titles under his battle, or at least the competition. But he's had to really step up for his team. Yeah, and listening to Sadak as well, after they completed the alpha bracket, he said that he gave big credit to Aspas, and he said Aspas is talking a lot during the games. He's giving him a lot of ideas for what to do in terms of the calling. So he's not just there fragging. He's offering a lot more to this loud squad and stepping up now that he is one of the veteran presences. Next evolution of this young player. Just showcasing that he's got it all. Hot flash play, but yeah, loud, ready and waiting. A couple of them playing anti, making sure that they weren't falling prey to any of that. And DRX not even offered that luxury of trying to die to the spike to deny those ults. 
Lauer are going to be vacuuming it all up. This is absolutely dominant from Lauer. With DRX now not picking up the pistol in round 13, uh, this could be over in a flash. And what a statement it would be to open up one of the semi-finals in this kind of manner. Remember that this is the last chance for the Pacific region as well. DRX, their only representatives left in the tournament. And that's what this tournament is all about. The winner of lock-in, they get a spot for their team at Masters Tokyo. Sorry, a spot for their region at Masters Tokyo. They're fighting for the Pacific. For the region as a whole. Lovely util laid down early here by DRX, but again, just maneuvering away around it, and it's a pincer into the connector. And the defense once more crumbles bit by bit. The supporting elements are just being taken out. DRX, DRX they cannot withstand it. Asper still alive, five bullets. And backup is there. Down to Buzz and Zest. Smokes off one of the angles, but the crossfire is too potent, too powerful. And Matt Point on the horizon here for Loud. Aspa sat at 22 kills to Buzz's two. If you wanted a jet diff, if you had that on your bingo card, oh my God, you've gone and got it. This guy's on a different level right now, and that has got to be tough for Buzz to comprehend. Heading into Icebox, I've got to imagine we're going to see more of this, probably on split two. <laughs> it's got to start going the other way for DRX to have a chance in this. Aspas with a double updraft, yeah. but nobody giving him a look. The final boss made manifest. Let's see what he does with this. Dash enabled, knives ever so slightly missing. There was a flash delayed. And there are trades online, still three on three. And all the pressure, the gravity of it all on the shoulders of TRX. Lovely utility to clean this one out. It's down to less. Is that 1v3. So much to do, yet already he's made it one step easier. Kill found, jump peak. Knows nobody's on it. Waiting for the push, but a double swing was going to be there. And it says a lot to how dominant Loud have been in this map that we're all collectively holding our breath, believing that Les could do it. He's been their best performing player so far at lock-in. And not somebody that we talk about too much, but he is so consistent for this squad. He takes a ton of fights. He wins a lot of them. He's the biggest trader that Loud has. He's just always out there doing what his team needs. And that is the first of nine map points that DRX need to dodge in order to take us to OT. It so just much. seems impossible. When you think about what's stacked against them here, it really does feel insurmountable. But we know that DRX are not the team anymore to crumble, to fold under the pressure. We've seen it now a couple of times over two different tournaments when the pressure's on and they still have what it takes to come back. Maybe not in the map, but in the series overall, that's more where I'm thinking. A bit more long-term. Definitely. I think another thing that we're just seeing demonstrated here is that the Americas region is clearly the best on Pearl. We haven't seen an Americas team lose on Pearl, except for when NRG beat Loud, and that's two Americas teams fighting against each other. Something about this Americas region, they've just got the read here. Doesn't matter what comp is being played, they get this map. Seekers parting ways on either side now. Trying to lay claim to this side, a dash forwards, it's down to Buzz! Reset, and backs away. Dash still in his hands now, he's got another one online, but Aspas has claimed some space. It is just down to him, but he will be shut down. Beast in the making. And so, one of the rounds once more claimed, I suppose, the long road to try and even it up, but no room for error. Not at all. The RX are going to start to build themselves up a bit of a buffer in terms of the economy. Obviously not something that they can, you know, use when they lose a round because they're one and done right now. But as the rounds get closer, if they're down to, you know, a scrappy 1v1, they'll still be able to buy up for the next. These are all important things. Big ults to rely on too. If you're going to go through this long, arduous journey of getting us back to OT, 
You've got to be so disciplined with how you use those resources. It could all go wrong in just a moment. Marco, dogs in his face, stunned up. It's Sadak who's taken point. He's got the stinger. No worries whatsoever, and a squeeze into the connector. This could be it. Arby is next, one after another, all down the buzz, and with just the operator. Good luck, son. Would have to be the play of your career. Dash active, but the players are rapidly approaching his position. And they all tumble. 13-5, loud claim, map number one. What an emphatic way to begin this series. Loud, decisive, a statement being made here. They've absolutely dismantled DRX. Oh, you're gonna try and copy our composition? That's cute. That is cute. Let's head to Icebox. I mean, that is just absurd from Loud. Yeah, just the beginning of this series, but Loud have put out a statement. Crowd at their backs, the roar of all of it. And they're gonna be heading to the only map in the first four where Loud have not demonstrated that they can take a win just yet. So that's, that is actually gonna put the pressure on just slightly. But in terms of what they've demonstrated here, the coordination, the ability to dismantle their own composition, uh, they just demonstrated excellence everywhere. And I, I can't help but look at the jet battle going towards Icebox. It's just drawn all of my attention. Yeah, unassailable seems to be that approach by Loud particular on this map, and we'll see what kind of answers happen. Obviously, plenty of the series left to come. We'll be finding out just after this.
And welcome back to the Valorant Lock-In Tournament, where Loud has kicked off this series in dominant fashion, closing it out 13 to 5. And, and Doug, I got to be honest, I think you look no further than the 4K out of Aspas in the pistol round for the final nail in the coffin for DRX. It was so quick, it was so clean, that it's deserving of our Verizon high-speed moment. Let's take a look at it now. And, and yeah, let's be honest, that may have been the final nail in the coffin, but it really felt like the coffin was six feet under at that point. Woo! And they were just dropping the nail already. They just, they just looked so good. It was a 9-3 half. It was not a 3-9 blessing. They were not able to convert it into something meaningful. And, and I think, honestly, part of me, I'll, I'll admit, part of me is a little disappointed with how DRX look, right? Yeah. Because I expected more out of them. I expected more out of Buzz, and it just, they just weren't there. And right. here's the thing. They, right there with you. <laughs> they came in with something new, right? Like, they came out with a brand new composition. They copied Loud's comp. The prep was clear, but the game plan fell apart. And again, a big part of that was Ospas. He was great in the second half, but he was incredible in that first half. Yeah, this guy just absolutely showed up in map number one. I mean, dropping the 366 ACS, a 3.1 KDA. I it was like absolutely nasty. It may have been like 25 and 9 or it, something. After it was, that. whatever it was, it was utterly disgusting what he was able to do. And yeah, Buzz just could not hold a can of him there in that first map and I have to wonder is he going to be able to find some comfort find his footing as we get ready to go over to Icebox because yes that's going to be a lot more familiar territory as fine as, as far as a map goes that you're going to be playing on but it's still a very foreign crowd and foreign stage to be sitting on mm. and yeah, I mean, look, end of the day, uh, we do have to remember that this was, of course, Loud's map choice, and so they're going to feel good about getting that win, but for DRX, it's all full focus on the Icebox and how you're going to pivot from there. We take a look at how the match itself broke down overall. Again, just dominance across the board for Loud here, Mimi. Yeah, it really was. Uh, DRX, the early rounds where we saw some things were good. At the halftime, you talked about the reckonings and some of the site executes. It was clear they put in the preparation, but after that first contact, after Loud figured out that, hey, we just need to give this space and play into these retakes, DRX never really had a solution, whether it was triple flanking from behind or putting down utility, waiting for DRX to go long, and then clearing back sight and dividing things up in these retakes. Loud was always winning them, and that's because this comp is built to win in these retake situations. The Harbor utility is just so good for it. Now, and this is where I'll be honest, Achilles. I know hindsight is 2020, but it was my major concern when I see DRX lock in the exact same composition that Loud has already had plenty of practice on in this map. They know how their own composition plays, and we kind of saw that on display yes. as they dismantled them from the defensive side. I mean, this goes back to what Mako said in one of the post-match interviews. It was, you know what, we like when teams play our comps because we know how to counter strat yeah. it, but this is them falling into that very same trap. I think that Loud probably expected them to make some adjustments. I think maybe if they had just run that double controller comp that we were seeing from them previously, maybe this could be, be looking like a different result, but it's, it's hard to say. Yeah, but it wasn't that one of the asks that we had out of DRX. Do something different. Mm. Provide sure. something new. Sure. And and they did. So if they're able to provide something new and it still kind of falls flat on his face, where, where's the solution? Is it in buzz? Is it in is it in stacks? Like, where, where is the spark? I think the solution is in stacks in the IGLing because I think DRX thus far has shown this tournament that when their initial idea struggles, they are not the strongest team at making an adaptation, making a plan on the fly, sure. and coming up with that. They're very yeah. good at the pre-prep, sure. at coming out with the ideas early, but when that initial contact hits, we've seen in this game, we saw in their game versus Cloud9 where they got countered, where when they are countered, this team struggles to get back into games. And that kind of worries me for the rest of the series. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I love the swing, right? But it was a miss. And I think sure, we can acknowledge sure, sure, that sure. on map yeah, one. And so sure. again, it's about how you recover and reassemble here for Icebox. And that's where I kind of want to turn our attention now, Achilles. Talk about this Icebox. 
and what is available as an option for DRX to maybe turn the momentum of this series. I mean, I think we're probably going to be saying a, a little bit more of the same stuff as far as the composition is concerned. It's more going to be about do they change up their plant positions, do they change up the way that they're utilizing util to get themselves onto sites when they're on that attacking side. That's what I'm curious to see. They're going to be starting on defending side, so we'll get to see what the side of Loud wants to bring to the table. My biggest question now is, okay, we've seen the DRX adapt Loud's composition there on Pearl. Did Loud adopt the DRX composition on Icebox? I mean, it's an option. The thing is that DRX, speaking into this, it's confidence in their own game plan, because they have no idea what Loud is going to do. In history, the old team was great on this map, but we don't know how this new version of Loud will look. Well, it won't be long until we find out what each of the teams are going to come to the table with as we jump into the Prime Gaming Agent Select. I do. You, I, I, I look. Here's the. I, I want. I don't want to see matched compositions for the rest of the, the series at this point. Let's <laughs> we'll see some different. Well, I want to see. So, I just want to see because I want like oh, a, I, the idea of like a counterweight. They're you going know, for it. like. I mean, this is this is just touche of game one. You get your comp picked against you. You pick their comp against them. I, the only difference is going to be Kawazin is coming out on that sky. Yeah, Zess is going to be sticking to the Sova, so okay, they do have those flashes. Okay, got one major difference, and that's what I want to see. Buzz has to execute. Yes. You, you're put. This is the map where, honestly, if you don't win this, there's a good chance you get 3-0'd. Buzz is your star on the jet. He, you have to set him up, and I love that they're not changing comps and they're putting the trust in his hands, but Buzz has to deliver. Also, with that sky, it means you don't have that Sova drone to clear out offers, so Buzz has opportunity to go insane. Yep, we're all set for our second map in this best of five, and we're putting all the onus on Buzz to dig DRX back into the series as we hand it back over to Brennan's Sideshow for the cast. Let's get to it, both teams raring to go, and so am I with this one, because you know, like the desk was alluding to, so much is now going to be on the shoulders yeah. of Buzz as an individual, stepping it up, didn't have a great performance in that head-to-head -head versus Aspas, really just got oh. dismantled. It was 8-0 and zero on map one in the head-to-head, -head, Aspas killing Buzz, but the desk is absolutely right. Without the Sova being there, without the drone being able to uh, clear Buzz from angles, Buzz might be able to get more aggressive on the defense side. Is he hitting his shots? Is he confident enough to even go for it? And I think there's another layer to this too. Cowanzi not having access to the Hunter's Fury should open up RB's ultimates a little too. So there are positives here to pull from. And like the desk was mentioning, it was DRX that had been playing this comp a lot. Whereas it's the first time we've seen Loud's Icebox. An unknown quantity. And apart now as we get deeper into this best of five. Moving forwards though, Loud not going to be dissuaded just yet. Wall's going to be used, but they're going to be claiming space and planting up top. Anything to try and disrupt this one doesn't look likely. It's a different harbor wall compared to what we're going to see from DRX on their attack Triple side. Less. Oh, he gets away with it there. Yep, Facing into two players, but not punished. Very good information. Even just manages to strike a little bit of a blow there. And damage done. Exchange of the. The bullets, the weapon, or even the snake bite up close, Sadak. Oh my goodness. Comes down to that 1v1, but he will eventually fall. Now, how does the play get made? Skipping a hop, Zest almost granted an opportunity to claim a kill. It's a deep push into screens, though, and Lau doubled up. Taking scalps, taking names. And they take the pistol. Too easy with it. Another great wall there, actually, that stops people from being able to get deep. I like that. You can see that Tuiz has put time into his harbor. We already knew that based on what we've seen from him on Pearl. But here, looking comfortable too. But DRX dead on the wrong end of another pistol round. Great play from these guys on site too. I think there's a real temptation once the flank is given up to just give up site and go and fight super heavy behind you. But Loud decided to push forwards. Really nice reaction from Sadak with the call. A five-stack gamble play. Stacks, he did claim the orb. That was his goal. Pays for it with his life, though. He was going for those orbs all the time on Pearl. They constantly had reckonings online. And this is one of the first times where Loud's aggression has actually challenged and punished him. The spike is alone on Sadak here. Okay, the Loud guys are starting to come back. Oh, my. But that's it dropped. There was a moment of danger, but I don't think DRX is going to be able to capitalize. Still swinging wide. These classics are actually making quite short work of things. Still, Mako ended up taking a decent chunk of health away when he was trying to contest and fight that one. Now a close angle. Flash the right click over the top. How does he duck and weave and dodge this one? The answer is he doesn't. But it has got particularly dangerous, and RB now. 
He's the leading clutcher of the tournament, but Les is watching for it. Time oh, turns away. Turns away. And now will there be a the double face? Not quite still. Significant damage going to be done. It's a bloody loud as they head into that bonus round. We'll see what they choose to do with the economy. It's an uncomfortable decision that they have to make here. But there might be some low-level investment that still works. And as we've said, yeah, first time we've seen Loud on Icebox at lock-in. Loud have only been forced to show three maps up to this point. And they've been very clean, only dropping that single overtime pearl against NRG. Yeah, it's actually still a, a pretty decent bonus round for Loud. They're going to be able to invest fairly heavily into this. And they're trying to apply pressure over towards B. So using the Cascade, and I think this makes a lot of sense. With that Cascade online, I don't think you need the Sova drone as much. Kawanzin can rely on the Sky, which he's been playing at this tournament alongside Breach. We haven't seen any Sova from him. It does relieve that necessity of having the drone, like we were discussing, you know, to push players, oppers off that angle when they are just walled off like that. Now, there was an early approach here. You can see Aspas. Giving up a bit of that space. There was a deep flash now, but look, the reason why? B main control slowly, steadily gained. Interesting turret, isn't it? Gets posted while the high tide is up. And after this wall drops, it kind of controls the area, or at least gives you good information if people are going to swing through the wall as to where they're coming from. Oh, and they're moving up deep into position. Flash push forwards, reckoning as well. Positioning known, and guess what? Laying claim to this one, less from the sidelines. Just creating moment after moment for his team. Four players left up for Loud, and they do not feel like they're dissuaded, despite the fact that they had the weaker weapons. Still, there is that answer. Zest, good kill to find. Left down to that 3v3 now. And this looks dangerous and very well planned out by Loud. Can the post plant hold on? It's not planted in a great spot. Dash forwards, though, cuts up the angle, and that's Sadak out in the open. Two years, Sheriff shot, does find itself. Kawazin, he's got the rifle, but it's not quite planned for him. The angle, half on the fuse, says, says Sticky, but it does not matter. Absolute insanity. And Loud looking immaculate again. The bonus round strategy is so nice. The way that they take B control and then lurk less up. And that's the value from the sky is the flash through the wall, getting deep and allowing for that post plan. Cowan Zine looking deadly in the clutch. And Buzz has his chance, right? That's the moment where you want Buzz to step up, win a round for his team, hold the momentum of Loud. And he falls again in a duel that you would normally expect him to win. Up draft up top. That's to try and punish this. Aware that they're trying to grab these orbs. And Buzz gets it. That's the Blade Storm. Can he be the difference maker? It's all going to be broken. Sadak is aware of this. Knows that there's a few players close. And space being gained. Buzz only to one before an instant answer back. But this crossfire, despite the weaker guns, despite the pistols, it is DRX who are making the most of this one now. What is the call? Aspas, kill claim, dashes back. The space still going to be vacuumed up. And it's gorgeous. The way that Aspas' dash backwards plays to ease into the angle. This does not look like a new team. These do not look like newer players. I know Sadak said that we're a new roster, you know, we have to prove ourselves again. But when you watch the teamwork of the newer players, Kawanzi and Tuiz, they have been integrated so well into this squad. The fundamentals look, to me, just as good as they did with the old Loud squad. And maybe that means Tuiz doesn't quite get as active in the round as somebody like Pancada or Mako, but it doesn't really make, make too much difference. So here we see it again, the cascade to take B long control. Buzz, oh. his confidence certainly hasn't waned after Pearl. And still, Seeker. Spots the Tiger, Sadak moves forwards, where's the kill? Dash up top, kill still found right as he's evacuating. And he needed to be the difference maker, just cannot land that second shot. He'll have another chance though. Unrelenting is what it feels like when you're on the opposing side of this one. Loud, not willing to give anything up, and the spike was planted in the middle of all of that. Less now with the pit. It's a great pit. that one down, yeah. This is gonna really 
Start to put that time pressure on TRX. What can they do with this? Off angle is magical. Not a player aware of it. 2v3, Buzz. What can you find? Zest in the pit. Gets the first obstacle down, but the angle's watched for. And it's just too much to do, isn't it? Tap of the spike, doubled up, decaying all the way down. One kill from the tracers, but time far too low to make the most of it. And Josh, this map, we were talking about it, the desk was talking about it. It needed to be the time for DRX to strike back to show that they had what it takes to really compete. And so far, it's not looking good for them. I think it's a must win. It's the first map in the series that DRX had a chance to pick. So it's up at the top of their pool as well. They've demonstrated how strong they are on Icebox against some of the other teams they've played. And also, once you get deeper, once you get to split and fracture, Aloud have already showcased that they look incredibly scary there. If Loud can't get punished on a map they haven't even had to show so far, where can DRX even win? Where is the limit? That's the big question. And I think at the moment, Buzz is actually doing a fairly good job of applying some pressure, but the whole of DRX's defense is getting steamrolled by the pace that Loud are playing at. Here again, less up through tube. Looking to get aggressive. Now last oh, time, angle. Oh, last time RB was the one that died early and opened the gap as the turret went down. This time Les bullies his way through and pulls RB back towards him for another cheap kill. And he won't be dealt with. Hot flash play, Mako just so unaware. I love this from Loud. And to think that they haven't even had to show Icebox so far in this tournament. And it looks this drilled. They're getting all of the benefits of the KO in terms of the flash through their wall. But they also have the reconnaissance of the dog too. Rifle upgrade. But so much to do for Buzz. And Aspas, ah, oh, short work, isn't it? 6-0 lead for Loud on the second map after dismantling DRX 13-5 on Pearl. And it feels like they could still show us more unique strategies. Yeah. We've seen heavy B pressure. And I think the addition of the Harbor into these comps, playing Harbor Viper, makes it really difficult for Buzz to get aggressive. He's always got a cascade in his face. And it's not like any other wall where you can push through. You're getting slowed as you go through that. You're not favored. Trying to go for a classic jet play of poking yourself through a Viper wall, let's say, or an Omen smoke, getting one and dashing out. It just doesn't work as well against Harbor. Can't do it. It's designed to punish you in that aspect. And so what I'd really like to see from DRX, strategically, is for Buzz to continue getting aggressive at B main with at least another person with him, or possibly fighting, you know, pushing pipes early in the round. But I, I still think it's gonna be very hard for him to get value against that, because that harbor wall is gonna always be there. Right up in his face, mitigating any sort of impact. And this is loud, such a commanding lead. And you can feel it, feel it really building as well, just, all the energy. Proud at their sides. You know, at times we were a little bit critical of Loud, you know, maybe overheating, trying to play to the crowd a little bit too much, but they spent the week, they've cooled down, tempered themselves. It's a cold fire that's burning right now, and that's what's being showcased. Loud determined to get one step closer. So here's that, that finals. In, here's that interaction we were talking about. Buzz with his operator comes forward, and with the Cascade, he's not quite sure where oh everybody my. is, but that is a perfect way to open the round. A first kill for Buzz. I suppose do just... He's unrelenting, man. There's no time wasted. Skip and a hop jumps up to the box, and he just rips away the opening that Buzz earned for his team. And Sadak, of course, there's no... Reckoning going to be used. Ultimate popped off. That's a bit of a spam kill that was found somewhere. Still, Sadhak moves forwards, and they know where Zest positioning is. The indicators are around still. Arby's been doing the most, but Util in his hands, caught unaware. And 7-0 is such a commanding lead.
This looks impossible for DRX. In the low bracket final at Champs, they were able to claw themselves back into a fifth map after going down 0 and 2. The team has demonstrated that they're not out of series this early, that they don't crumble instantly when they face adversity. And yet, today, I feel like what I'm witnessing is just Loud utterly outclassing them. Loud have a different strategy for every time there's a gun round, and DRX are left reeling. They can't even use the lessons of the prior losses. To try and claw their way back into it. Orbs available, prioritized onto two years. Try and build up that reckoning. Now a dog clears the one side of it. Interesting cascade, but it is that weaker buy for DRX. <laughs> and Aspas just trying to get as aggressive as humanly possible. And look at how deep they're pushing. I mean, the wall just gives them all the space into the back of Snowman. New strat again. Yep. A new flavor to it. And DRX with poor weaponry this time. It's constantly DRX who have to react to it. And I love the flexibility that adding the harbor to this comp gives them. High tide round the side. Sheriff in the hands of Mako. Makes the most of that one. Seekers, though, popped off. Pointing out a positioning precisely known. And it's less with three, wants the fourth. Will he get it? The answer is yes. Louder mixing in some safe rounds where they play a standard post plant on Icebox with a lot of these more aggressive looks. This time the wall allows them to take snowman control. Previously they've been flashing through it and getting aggressive on people waiting to play the retake. There's always something different being thrown at DRX. And I mean just look at the look at the players, look at the coach. They're out of ideas. Speechless. Best case scenario is going to be four rounds for DRX but with the current momentum, the pace of which this game is being played, it just looks so unlikely. And look at that. All those orbs that were being prioritized the two years once more. Grants them all the space in the world to get a free plant. And Les has been this consistent thorn in their sides. That's nice. Well done. Drone coming down mid from Zest. Looks back up tube and sets up for that kill. But they've taken snowman control again. Stop it up crossfire. Mako's good to claim one, but it's an immediate trade. Lockdown for a lockdown now. This is where things get scrappy. Moving across, it's Aspas! Still gonna deal with him. Fuzz does step up to the challenge. Lockdown gonna be catching, and Sadak, well, out in the open. Fuzz gonna be able to stick this one with out of care in the world, and there will be no silly business, no knives to be found, but eventually it is DRX able to claim that first round on the board. Can DRX string this together into any form of momentum? This time, the ult's being very important. But I also think that DRX had a nice idea there at driving a wedge in on the retake and separating one half of the post blinders from the other. The crowd there genuinely looking disappointed <laughs> that this wasn't a 12-0 half. Yep, things you uh, won't be used to, honestly, but listen, when in Brazil, a push down the tube here from Stax, following his cascade and a recon dart. Looking maybe to add a different flavor to this as Buzz finds another first kill. Things starting to go the way here of the Korean team. But are the adaptations going to be enough? They've been left reeling is what it feels like. Still, flick at a wrist up top. That's the angle to try and watch for. Aspas really being pushed onto the common angle now. Top of the box, Mako. Vandal in his hand, doesn't want to spray. Snake bite at the floor though. Should keep him safe for but a moment. Now, though, it's going to get difficult as the smoke start to fade away and dissipate. Kawazin, Flash was waiting. No play off of it, but that's just spam. Aspas catching it. Zest is low. Stax does trade. But this is very quickly getting out of hands right now for DRX. One of the sole opportunities for them. But Stax, the wiggle with the movement, he makes himself an elusive target. So well played by Stax, the trade, the anchoring. Wow. And shuts things down with a 4K. A major round for Team Captain and IGL when DRX need it most. Four rounds in this half is the bare minimum to get things back on track.
for our podium team. Bronze plays gold from champs. And right now you're seeing that gap between third and first. But of course, loud with those two changes, you expect a different result here. And instead it has been just as dominant. Stax looks to try and turn the ship. And Loud take a timeout to hold that momentum before it can go anywhere. Angered the beast. There's that timeout being taken by Loud. Guys, what's going on? We dropped two rounds. Not yeah. going to get that 12-0 at the half that we were hunting for. And Buzz has been able to find some value with the operator. He's actually working around the cascade very nicely. Even when he was on his own at B, found a first blood, able to drop back. And it seems like DRX wants a hard anchor A, which I think is a nice adjustment too. If you end up playing back on A and playing retake or post plant utility, what you end up finding is the harbor walls just lock you out. So I like the adjustments, but to me, Bren, the problem is DRX are just adjusting way too late. Do you remember on Pearl where it was round 11 by the time they broke the alarm bot for the first time and really put pressure on Sadak's defensive holds? It feels the same here again. It's round 10, round 11 by the time DRX are figuring out what they need to do. Making those adjustments. And that string of rounds by Loud. I mean, listen, they have kept the money up. It's practically pouring out of their pockets. Being able to get by after by despite losing the back two rounds. There was an opportunity there. Buzz, I believe he spotted a body. Moves away. This is an angle that he has been playing, but Sadak, okay. A bit brave from him. Not expecting that angle to be watched for. Dog round the side. That's time to the cascade, so it can't be broken as easily. Clears away the one box. Tap of the plant. Close. Stray shot. And it looks like Stax might want to challenge over at Snowman, too. This fight is about to be taking place at the back of Snowman. Feels like it's going to be important. Stax out in the open. RB does collapse from the side, but Kawazin felt like he was fully moving. Still claims the kill, and it's got the pit online. Danger time, retaking with the operator, but how do you do it? Zest. Clears one of the obstacles out. You could try pushing a Hunter's Fury in here and seeing if Buzz can follow it, but he's only one player. Doesn't have the dash, shot Se dart. Seems better to just group up. Tap onto the spike, forces the snake fight. Two years moving forward, and it's a flick of the wrist. Locks on, down to Buzz, no time left. Okay, going to be building back up here. Half under the fuse, percentage play gets off of it. Resmokes all the way. you got to be joking. So calm in a moment. And Buzz, he silences the crowd. And I think he's done a great job at silencing the doubters too. Horrendous performance for him individually on Pearl, but he has bounced back. His operator and that clutch being about the only thing that DRX have got working for them on Icebox. 12 and 9, stepping up to Aspas and providing one last lifeline for DRX to hold on to here. If they get the fourth and get the pistol, maybe they can make a map of this. The economy's still not challenged for Loud, of course, after eight one rounds in a row. But the adjustment has come, and so much of it has been based off buzz. Holding this corner, is anybody gonna be there to try and break this trailblazer that's being used over and over again? Shot out of the sky. But the supporting, there. the supporting high tide allows Buzz to get back up on the angle because he knows that they are going to struggle to get through there without that piece of utility. And like I said, the adjustments, they really are coming. It just takes loud... Sorry, it just takes DRX. My apologies, just a bit too long. We'll see a pivot now from loud. They've got a good ultimate to try and cleave their way into this site. The Seekers online, Kawazin wants to lead it over Flash is what it seems like. Now the Reckoning. Right into the back, Sadak not scared of taking this space. Even the fight as well wants to be the point of contact. Nana Swarm lay down on his feet, and DRX, no attempt from them to try and refight this one. They had plenty of ults to do so. But there's the Reckoning, used up close. Aspas, forced to move. Hunter's Fury as well, spots them out. One tag on the Sadak, will there be anything else? Kill found still, loud, still alive, Aspas. Trying to take the fight to them. What a great Mako, reset from Mako. Maker, and yes, a reset. Five is pit down, but brought down out of it. Reflect by yes, and Les just finalizes it. 9-3, familiar sights for Loud and DRX, dating back all the way to champs. Exactly the same result from Pearl. The same level of dominance.
And the first time we've seen Loud on Icebox. What can't this team do? Just seem impossible, doesn't it? And unstoppable, if you're thinking about Loud. Absolutely fluid as the gameplay, great adaptations, but I'm curious, the first half done, let's send it down to the desk to find out more. Thank you so much, Bran. It's another 9-3 first half, and it comes in our first look at Loud on Icebox. And Mimi, this team has just owned the B site for the entire first half of the game. Yeah, and I had questions about how they were going to be able to play it with this composition without the Sova, but I think the executes they've had thus far with this Skydog, the way that they're playing that space has been really good. You see in this round initially they're providing some pressure towards A, but eventually pivot back towards the B site in the late round. They're able to use the Dog to take space back yellow, and then they use the Reckoning to push really deep. When DRX played this comp on attack, they very much had an emphasis on the A site, taking that with the Orb, whereas for Loud with the Sky in the Mix. Their emphasis is a lot more on taking space on B, putting up their smokes, and then flashing through them and continuing to fight in their post plants, which adds a lot of complexity to the comp. Now, we put a big spotlight, of course, on the Jet matchup in match number one, but this is the guy I want to take a look at here, Les, I for mean, Loud. He deserves, he deserves a spotlight right now. Les has been yeah. performing out of his mind on the Viper. Mako's doing his damage to try to keep up with this guy, but Les is coming out here feeling a little under the weather, but deciding to persevere through that play here on the stage in front of the fans, and my god, is he delivering right now. Some of the clutches that he's been able to pull off, some of those plays, especially in those last couple rounds, have been absolutely immaculate, and you could not tell that it, you know he wasn't feeling 100% right now. And now, Doug, there's no two ways around it. It's looking dire for DRX here. It's their map choice to go down 9-3. They were lucky to get three rounds, in fact, when they were looking at an 8-0. So what do you want to see on the second half? Yeah, I, honestly, I think it could have easily been an 8-4. You think about that second to last round, the op going down, the Bulldog is invested in the next one because you can't financially handle it, and we're talking about an entirely different half. And that's, that's really concerning that that's how it played out because I don't know how much fight you have left in you. This was the map you had to win. Buzz should have unlocked that first half and he wasn't able to. I'm very concerned. It is still the map that they have to win, I do believe. We're diving right back into Icebox to see if DRX can get the victory back over to Brennan's Sideshow. This pistol round has everything on it for DRX. The desk highlighting just how important Icebox is to win for them. Look at that, even that 75% attacking round win rate at Icebox, maybe the stats do back them up, but did the stats take into effect and account the fact that they're going up against Loud? I mean, yeah, it's a different beast entirely. It really is. This pistol, so, so important. Aspas is disrespecting it. That's Look insane. at this, contacting through. Oh my goodness, ships in the night, and Aspas claims the kill. He heard the updraft, he knew the positioning was there. There was so no much confidence. It's outrageous confidence from Aspas, disrespecting every part of what DRX are doing. And now things are forced to go quiet as DRX reassess. Which areas of the map do they really control here? Practically nothing. RB is making a prod into A with his turret. It's unlikely anyone's pushed up because they've already seen Aspas. He's the most aggressive player on Loud. Have to clear it though, look at that. Drone being used from a very far back position. <laughs> we'll get that tag on Aspas, so space gained. Aspas looks like he wants to have another go at it. This and would behind be... Behind this wall is a dart that doesn't even clear him. This would be absurd. But the, mean, real, the real play is happening in tube and under orange right now. Yep, split play. So important, less. Spots it out in that Viper head-to-head. -head. That's Arbido from below. Flash play. He's back in. That's in main. Oh, my word. And containment. It's the name of the game. Aspas. Absolute gremlin just lurking around B main. And Mako, too much to do. Loud with all four pistols secured. And you, you talk about containment, sure. Yeah, DRX are just getting stuffed in a box right now, but how do you contain this guy? How do you stop Aspas when he's getting a flash through a wall for him to repeat for the third time in yeah. the round? And this is the problem when, when a player gets that level of confidence, when they feel like everything is working, suddenly they're gonna disrespect your utility. Suddenly you're gonna have to deal with them. And if you can't win those fights, if you can't preempt them and shut them down, Aspas is going to have 20 kills in 13 rounds. 
20 to 8. For Aspas, I mean, a commanding scoreline, a commanding KD. And I, I feel bad for Buzz because he's been playing all right this map, but he just can't hold on. He can't keep up. No one can. Different high tide now. Separates a lot of the side, gives a bit of space to the defenders here, but I think the goal is to try and get that plant down. Util, though, stops that. Sacks! Wow. Oh, he tries to go up the rope, but Sadak was spamming it. That's so good. Hopes and dreams resting on these shoulders. Trying to hit these shots with the pistols, but loud, far too good. Never a missed opportunity. Never any signs of weakness so far in this series. Dirac's not going for the force, just happy, allowing Loud to get up to that 11th round. And this, I mean, look at the score. 13-5 map one, 11-3 lead for Loud map two. They're not choking this. They look insane. And I want to, I want to cast people's minds back to the lower bracket final at Champions, where DRX met against, you know, the NRG core, then known as Optic. They lost 13-8, 13-5 on the first two maps, and they still pulled it to map five. So it may still be too early to count DRX out of this. They might still make a match of it, but so far, this has just been a flattening. It's a tear gap between these two teams. It's just a dismantling. Loud have turned up here. The sole representative of the Americas left in the lock-in tournament in this top four between our teams. And oh my goodness. I mean, the representatives of the Pacific region just left absolutely scrambling. And so a timeout for DRX, the last one being used in this map. And the DRX players were coming into this talking about revenge. We spoke to the owner of DRX as well. He was saying, oh, we're looking forward to it. That revenge match, redemption for us. And instead, it looks like the continuation of a rivalry where DRX are getting trodden on. And it's only going to fire them up into the future, I am sure. But for now, my god, how those players must be feeling. The fire they had coming into the game getting quashed. Yeah. Loud in firm control. Drone to push them back, clears off that angle. But it is that high low setup. It looks like at least Loud ready to take a fight if necessary. They have their weaker guns, weaker weapons. Still, Dart's going to be cleaned up, and they do respect that util. Must win round for DRX, it's a little bit shaky. Spray down's there, shots being fired, and Zest is really just being caught out in the open, down to 48 health now. Spike will go down, though, in that 4v4, but the way Loud have been playing, anything could happen. They don't have rifles, but we'll see. Moving forwards now, waiting for the next wave of that utility. These passive post plants really hurt DRX on Pearl. Maka needs to spot this. A wide swing, Aspas, how do you win that? Way all the way through, good movement from Sadak still. He will get his head ripped straight off. Now Aspas, 18 health and a dream. Not much more offered to him. And so DRX, another round claimed, puts them at four. But it's a long road to try and pave their way to any sort of semblance of victory. But the more they start getting onto the board here, the more they may turn me into a believer. You saw the stat earlier that they were winning three quarters of their attacking rounds on this map. And the way that they load ult orbs onto their players will allow them good opportunities. This one is so crucial, though. Do you hear the crowd? Yeah, that's booze for, what was that, a for watch, the watch party? party in Korea. They can't even hear you. These fans are making it personal. But DRX, this has to be around for them. They need to punish Loud and send them into an eco. DRX are going to have big ults online if Stax gets the orb or the plant. They can use that Reckoning to make it so much more difficult for Loud to retake. So oh. leading the charge, less common angle to spam. It pushes Stax down onto so the ground. Much damage. That's through the cove as well. And so a suboptimal plant location for DRX to play this post plant. Buzz, Clawbass pushes them back. Will he survive? Yes. That's Great timing. Be a reckoning. Good timing on that one. It's a refight taken. Dart not being found. And they clean it up. Rifle spam, crossfire setup. 
Maka's still alive, still kicking in the 545 health. Dodging, weaving, ducking. Comes down to this. And it comes down to two years. But even he can't quite manage those expectations. So DRX break the economy. Gorgeous post plan by DRX. That's what you need to see from this squad. Getting the fire back underneath them and pushing Lao down to an eco. The crucial play there being that Stax has been generating these ultimates really quickly. He's got the spike on his shoulders and the reckoning comes through exactly as Loud want to go for the retake. And that means these players are uncomfortable. They can't stay in the same spot for very long. They can't trade for each other as easily or hold angles properly. It rips apart the retake and DRX are using utility at the same time like that recon you saw coming through. Diligent play. Sort of a util combo there. They know that it's going to be loud going for those ult orbs, just like DRX were when they were on their defensive side. But how do they get through this one? They've made it well known. The push coming through. Buzz. Seeming a friendly shock dart is what it feels like. Up top. Oh my goodness. Narrowly spots that one. Still a retake to be taken. Push it all the way in and stacks. He just doesn't even know what's happening. Into the cove. Got to be a recovery now for DRX, but this is looking so damn bad. Handed over the rifle, Sadak taps the spike. Right now, baiting out of position, moving forward, the flash is good, Zest does claim it. Receiving his eyesight back into it, no more tap onto it, but Sadak again trying to bait the swing, but RB shuts that one down. Unless he's got the energy up, wall going up, sticks no in way. half, there's no way you can't get away with this. Dart pushes him back, but he's already done enough, surely. In between the legs, positioning known. Less hunting for the kill, but gives up on the round. Or does he? No, he doesn't quite have this one. It's a, it's a nice idea, cute play. But DRX, they play it fairly safely. But at the same time, there was danger in that round. And Loud only had pistols. An investment of the Reckoning, though, from 2Es certainly main, makes things doable. A recon die oh. is lovely, even if it doesn't hit less, though. It's still good to be able to get Zest into a position where he can push the spike on the next tap. Still, though, I think we saw some really good things out of the retake there. Cowan Zine going for an aggressive flash play to create space for the rest of Loud to stick. Yeah. DRX are going to have their work cut out for them when Loud have rifles. Which is right about now. Nice pass, close angle, wider swing actually, damage is good, drop down to 30 health, big punish, got to respect that now, pushing all the way through, DRX have a timing, they have an opening, they don't want to let this one slip, that's going to be util used to clear that path and get that plant down in the close corner, and look how Stack saves the high tide for the post plant, that means that Loud have so much more space to go for an instant retake, Hunter's Fury, just using his clothes, still how does Buzz fall there, Lockdown's going to be removed. Still, there's the danger. The danger is here, right in the pit. RB does not get cleaned up. Oh, this is ridiculous. What a reposition from RB. And what is going on here? What is occurring? How does the kill get found? Sprays down, position known, and just backs away at the perfect timing. Turning them into mincemeats. Reswing. Don't let this get dangerous. Time ticking, which still afforded. Loud could play this one if they wanted to. At this point, as Aspas hunting for those kills, he knows. Economy is getting stretched, but still, it should be him saving the rifle. He's going to go down with the spike. Yeah, strange there, actually, because Aspas isn't going to be able to save that into the next round. No operator online. Still, perhaps he wanted to use his Blade Storm. It's not going to be immensely damaging that decision. I think the real one is RB's reposition just looks immaculate there. But I think looking from an overall strategic point of view, as Loud decides to take a timeout here, you're seeing DRX with a really different approach to a similar comp. Instead of using their high tide to make a lot of space for themselves on site, taking snowman control or getting through it to take the site, they save the high tide, plant inside the cove and give themselves very little space to work with. Louder on that retake within a couple of seconds. If you can wind your head back, wind your memories back to the first half. Loud were pushing DRX so far away before the post plan ever happened. And so when DRX retake, they have to look left, right, clear snowman, clear tube, clear top side. DRX are actually playing a much more claustrophobic game and it's gonna give loud opportunities. So far though, it is working.
But DRX have had to burn a lot of ultimates to get to this point. They've used a reckoning. They've used Hunter's Fury in the Viper's Pit. What they really need is stacks to get another reckoning online by the time we hit round 20. And they also need to make sure that Aspas doesn't kill everyone with the Blade Storm, because the way that this guy's been playing that is well within the realm of possibility. In a normal match against most teams, when you see loud, your opponents drop down to the weaker buys, you're thinking, okay, a bit of breathing room, but loud of being able to make these half buys a bit more dangerous. Now we see an approach. It's an attempt to push away, and he sort of plays away from a main drone. What does it really see? Flash to try and as well hide information. Gets the tag, though, and Aspas push up off of it. Tries to take the space back. Mako swinging wide. Top of pipes, a bit of spam, that'll do it. Kill found, and so the big pain point is going to be removed with Aspas falling. Buzz pure reactions. Flick at the wrist up into a common angle to just spam. And that's great work. Stax is still two away. I'd like to see him hunt for this final kill, to be honest. His is the most important ult to get online for the next round. But even so, it's possible that with an ult orb and a plant, they'll have that still to play with. Oh, the spam. Almost. Moving across. Great reactions from Buzz to contain that. As a prime game in Flawless, that round could have got dangerous, but they neutralized Aspas, the big threat, very nicely. Two players facing at the same time. And Aspas missed a couple of shots. The difficult ones, for sure. Really difficult ones. But sometimes a player of his caliber might still be able to grab him. If DRX win the next round, I'm believing in the comeback. Their attack siders look strong. The way that they're manipulating the ults is fantastic, too. I think there might be a way that they can get into this round with a lockdown and then play Reckoning post-plan. But there is going to be a massive clash here on B. Oh, Aspas, you've got to be joking. The balls to push up, make a play like that. He's tagged up, though. Updraft, there was a punish attempt by Buzz. And he used a ton of his own util just to maneuver his way around that one and potentially collect that kill. Still moves forwards, now dashes up. Watch for, doubled up. RB moves around, blind, but to the angle, and he is fully blinded up. Swing it around, coverage is there. And it is just that hammer strike one after another. Kawan Zin's Sky looks so phenomenal, man. Utilizing both of those flashes, knowing that the first isn't good enough, relieving the pressure. I mean, he just looks immaculate in these positions. Such a phenomenal pickup. I think DRX rushed that, though. Once they had control of B, and they pushed Buzz back, sorry, and they pushed Aspas back, RB had the perfect time to go for a lockdown. You stick a lockdown there, and you wait, you apply so much pressure to Loud. And instead, they just ran into the moor. And it has set Loud up. Map point for them. And the margin for error that is allowed for a team like DRX, no longer available. Lockdown going to be used up close, though. This is punishable if they have Util 4, but I said it's just going to be a pit. I don't know how Les is going to stay in sight here. He's going to have to evacuate his pit. Is he just going to allow himself to get detained? Uh, yeah, apparently. Wants wow. to keep it up. Obviously, the Viper nerfs, meaning he has to maintain that. Dash has to be used. Disengaged by Buzz. And no punish on Les. No punish at all. It's backup remaining. Spam. It's dangerous from Stax. If Stax falls here, they lose their big ult for the post plant. The Cove just barely keeps him alive, and here's the flank from Aspas. And what an answer. Shots landing. Warbank damage, and they are weak, missing the second one. Everyone falling low, but Buzz, he answers for it, but Loud, moments away now. It's a 3v2, and it's just over like that. This retake style looks incredible from Loud. The aggression coming out from Aspas and Kawanzin. Pushing forwards, making space for one of their team to get on the defuse. The Brazilian retake looks so good. And the crowd are pumped. Loud are one map away from being able to get themselves in a position where they could be our first ever team to lift two trophies.
and back to back at that. That's what they're fighting for. And honestly, the attempt from DRX to try and bring it back, it was good. Adjustments were made ever so too late, though. And DRX find themselves in a position where, once again, exactly the same as that lower bracket final against Optica champs, they lose a map 13-8, 13-5, and head into the third. That time it went to five. Can we see the same? It looks almost impossible, but they've done it before. The crowd battling against DRX, it's that extra element that maybe they didn't think about, but we'll find out soon enough on the other side of this just how this series will conclude. Gives you wings. I remember being at school and I ain't had no lunch, but I made something out of nothing. Me and my brother saved every little dime we had to keep the lights in the water running, but that's okay. Cause sometimes in life, you gotta make something out of nothing. Something out of nothing. Something out of nothing. in life, you gotta make something out of nothing.
Welcome back to Sao Paulo, where it was a valiant effort on the back half of the map for DRX, but it just wasn't enough to unseat Loud. We end in a 13-8 scoreline, and look, we've already talked about him all series long, but we've got to do it again because he continues to sit at the top of the leaderboards. It's Aspas on that jet, absolutely fragging out. Uh, I think Mimi put it very succinctly while we were off camera. Aspas might be good at Valorant. I oh, think so. Potentially. I would say. Very possible. But it's, it's so we got that qualifier of the mic yeah, still. Right. Yeah, right. okay. Yeah. Right. He's working on it. He's working on it. But I think what part of what made him look so incredible in this map, beyond how good he always is to begin with, was him and Kawat a duo. This guy pick yeah. did such a fantastic job of setting Aspas up for these deep plays, for these pushes with really good flashes. It's just been incredible. And this is one of the things we were kind of talking about. I mean, yeah, just gets some aggressive positioning. The man is playing just so boldly. But the, he has those flashes to back him up, whereas the side of, of Buzz does not. We've still seen some solid entry from Buzz, but we've all seen those moments where he's trying to take control of Yellow over on that B side and the attacking side, and then he just gets picked off because there's no escorting utility. A thousand percent, and that's what I wanted to see out of DRX in this yep. situation. Again, this felt like a must-win map. You put Buzz in a position to deliver for your team, and the guy had no backup. He, yeah. he was kind of trying to do it all on his own, not nearly the same synergy that uh, Aspas had to work with. And Seth, you brought up a quote earlier that normally this team really likes it. DRX likes it when people pick their compositions into them. And it looked like it was almost that. But I, I think like this right guy now. added a layer of complexity that made it really hard for them to actually compete with it one-on-one. -on -one. And, and look, we saw DRX picking up some steam on the back half, but you get to this round 21 out of loud, and they found an incredible way to retake here on the A site. I mean, it's already, again, so many people taking a ton of damage on the way in, and then they're just able to hold this the whole way throughout. I mean, the Reckoning be damned. You're not going to be too bothered by that. Sadek just holds it down, and they're so distracted by Osmos in the back line that no one is able to go ahead and interrupt this. So it's a bit of an anticlimactic way for this map to conclude, but it's still just so brilliant the way that Loud are approaching these retakes. Yeah. It's really incredible, and I think it's actually a very direct comparison to what we saw in Pearl, where this Loud team is really good in these post points of getting the, that orb down, getting utility to pressure, sticking the spike, while the rest of the team is pushing really, really deep and contesting the players who want to be, use, be using utility to shut that down. I think, it, I think it was you who said it very quickly. Uh, they seem to want to play in this chaos. They want to play in this very scrappy, very aggressive, throw the reckoning in there, have chaos across the site, and they're thriving in that. I was about to say, they're playing with so much confidence within yeah, that, yeah. which just makes them even more scary as an opponent. So here we are, 2-0 is the scoreline. It's going to have to be a reverse sweep for DRX if they want to bring this one back, quite obviously. But here's the thing, Achilles. There's never been a reverse sweep in Valorant International history. No, there has not been. Uh, but the closest that we have ever had, as Josh was kind of mentioning it right at the bottom side of that map, was DRX versus Optic. They've managed to push them to the very brink, taking them all the way to that final game, and then it concluded with a 13-10 scoreline on the last map. So this team is the closest to be able to pull it off, but given the way that Loud are playing right now, I don't know if that same reverse sweep magic to be able to even get close to pulling one off is going to be able to come through, because additionally, we're getting ready to see Split, a map that they have not played on the international stage since Zeta bested them and we'll all get, the way back a very long time ago. We'll get into the breakdown of Split in just a moment, but Doug, sometimes when it comes to a reverse sweep or just getting yourself back on the horse, it's about resetting your mental. And sometimes going back to mechanics is the best way to do that, kind of zone out with everything that's going on, all of this chaos that's happening in the arena. Let's see, take a look at Zest as he dives into the aim lab shoot around to see how he resets himself between difficult maps. Yeah, the, the fundies have to be immaculate. And you know, um, Dash, you mentioned mental, right? And leading into the end of Icebox, I was really concerned about mental because it, it looked like they were boomed, right? You saw their player cams, they looked dejected, they looked demoralized. Uh, and then they started to put something together. So I do think to Achilles' point, they have been the closest to do it. And it is going to take an insane amount of mental to hard reset. There was doubt in my opinion, that they could do it, but they, they've given me a sliver uh, of hope with how they closed out that ice box. And I, yeah, I did see a little bit more hope in that second half. Map one, DRX never found a solution. They yeah. were never able to adapt. But on the second map, I saw things that were a little bit different from the last time they played Icebox. They were changing up the plant location more. They weren't allowing their spike planter to get spammed as often. The post ones were still great, but it was not enough. And now we head towards Split. And this is a map that is so hard to play loud on because you talk about that chaos, Doug. This is where they create it. They play the double duelist comp, and it is so difficult to compete with their pace. Yeah, and I'm just curious as to what is going to happen here for the side of DRX. What are they going to be bringing out? Do they decide to just go for Buzz solo duelist on the race, something that he doesn't have nearly as much experience on? 
or do we see him just stay with the Jet? And is that still going to be enough? He has been finding his footing, his performance there on Icebox, a complete inversion, and even then more so on top of it from what we saw on the first map. He had a good amount of impact, but will we see that if he goes for Raze again? Because you can see the difference there as Icebox is just lounging. We'll get our answer in just a moment as we dive into the Prime Gaming Agent Select again. DRX's first look on Split in this tournament. Doug, we've kind of seen them take two different approaches across the two maps that we've had so far. First, matching the composition of Loud, and then looking to find one little difference in map two. Neither has netted a win, but what do you want to see out of them here to give them their best shot at it? Uh, I, I like what I see. I see a double initiator comp. You have Buzz on the raise. Again, it wasn't it wasn't Buzz on the jet that necessarily was the problem. It was the fact that Buzz didn't have any counter, to, like he didn't have any backup. The cat didn't have any help. Those two ini initiators should be able to help. Last time Loud played this map, they start attack versus NRG, and the double duelist comp absolutely bowled them over. It's going to require great coordination from DRX to shut this one down. Well, there you have it. Can this one go the distance? Uh, they got to get it done here in game number three if they want to push it all the way to five. Let's find out as we send it back to your casters. Here's Brendan, Sideshow. The potential close here to the storied history of both of these teams as well, Josh. And, you know, yeah. DRX is a team that have that history behind them and never quite reaching the same heights as a team like Loud, never making the grand finals yeah. before. Yeah, I think when you are uh, thinking about DRX, they are one of the most long-standing rosters, if not the longest-standing roster in VCT. That comes with three years of expectations on their shoulders to hoist a trophy and take one home for Korea. But they've never even made a grand final. The, the series that Seth was talking about, that attempt at a reverse sweep was the closest. Compare that to Loud, who've made two Brazilian super rosters work and have made three grand finals in the last 12 months. That's bonkers. Success just feels baked into this Loud squad. And this map here is split. See if there's going to be that extension of play for DRX or Loud. Going to be sailing relatively uncontested all the way to that Grand Finals. And of course, I shouldn't call that third Grand Finals appearance too early, but it feels like it's on the cards right now. But the way that Loud are playing certainly does. A bit of damage there. That's some loose play. It's not going to be pushed back, but this double duelist comp is so fast and loose and aggressive. Dropping down. Though there's containment. Flash not ready for RPE. Jumping, dodging, weaving. An attempt at a trade with Buzz. Well, he's going to meet his match at heaven. It comes down to this, TRX. Stacks was hiding. these positions and down to two years. Flash round the corner, completely blinded up, and so a pistol round claimed for DRX. And that's massive. First one on the board for them all series long, and it's exactly how you need to start. Loud's team composition is going to be constantly applying pressure to you. And I think RB is going to be under. It's going to be the main focal point for that pressure, in my opinion. You saw Stax just kind of baiting him here in order to get into a really crunchy position where he can wait for the retakers to come through. Holding on against the Jet Rays takes a lot of effort. Taking the pistol is so important. So DRX are going to start on that right foot. So we can put that potential of a comeback into the air and mention of it. Expectations obviously on the shoulders of both of these teams. Dog's gonna get some good info. So Stax spotting three I believe with that one. Yeah that's huge. It's one of the things that Loud does is take control behind this Viper setup and then force you to peek into them. Mako potential to be overwhelmed. Flash deep. Gets the information, but contact play lurking up and strikes him down. But does he know? Does Mako know about Sadak's positioning? Looks through. It's a reactive play. Stacks forced. They'll bring him down with a spike at their feet. Pop flash as well clears some space for them. So just farming up a couple of these ult orbs now onto the DRX side, making it a rather clean and flawless anti eco round. Really nicely done. I feel like DRX in the last couple of maps, I'm including, you know, Split and Icebox here, have actually been much better at shutting down Loud's economy. They finally found their moments to be able to punch back. And when Loud get onto the eco rounds, they don't look as dangerous. Here you're going to see, though, that explosion. Kawanzin is almost always using his Trailblazer at A. 
and it's often followed by Sadak. This time, everybody on loud behind it. Yeah, five grouped up. Orb to smoke the cross. Throw some uncertainty into the mix for the Boombot. Leading forwards, Fragment Nade drops down, spam inside of it, Aspas. You can't be getting away with that. And yet he does. Angle watched for, will there be a trade, Buzz? Just getting that one pressure in a bounds. And RB is left in a 1v3. He'll take a duel early against Aspas here and lose it. Loud responding very quickly. And despite the fact that DRX were ready for that hit to go through, their pull nade combo was still late. Very that's, delayed. that's the pace that Aspas and Sadak are going to be playing with here. That's the tempo. They're so quick with their blast pack engages, with their dashes, that if you're anchoring a site, you can get overwhelmed very quickly. Caught with utility in your hands. And forced to take duels on unfavorable angles. You can see here how Zest and RB were designed to hold onto A. The knife shutting down a lot of the supportive utility. Grabs a ton of info in this round as well. Four Spot players in. found. Reposition by Zest, not holding on top of Heaven, just lays down that fragment nade, but look. It's a ramp that's compromised. The job is going to be on Mako here. How does he play this one? Anti-flash drops down, taking space once more. This nade is going to be causing all sorts of issues, and he chooses to back away. Snake bite though, but the utility traded out, making sure that nobody can really capitalize off of that. Instead, the play is made towards the side. This is where the fight takes place. Zest has to be the man of the hour. Dodge, duck, weave around, stacks, assisting and helping him out. An absolute. Concrete hold here of the site. Very nice hold. Very nice hold from DRX, working themselves together. And that one was difficult. Loud's ability to explode through B forces DRX to use util early. Even though Loud were only taking a ramp, DRX have to give them the respect as if that could be a full hit onto A. And they use the pull and they use the nade early. So when Loud go for the re-hit into A, there is no pull available. There is no nade available. They just have to anchor. They've called rotates though and read that very nicely, Stax and the rest of DRX, and they hold on. But you're getting a glimpse into how dangerous Loud's comp can be here. It takes a lot of preparation and very fast reactions. So, weaker weaponry. Loud have still been dangerous in the past when they've got just the sheriffs. Pop flash play, smoke to meet them. Snake bite as well. That's laid down at the feet. Mako cannot see a bloody thing, but okay, once more stacks there to bail him out. Bit of danger. But Mako's there like a rock. Yep, and it's just that constant trading, making sure that they relieve the pressure, making sure that one player backs away, there's someone else to step up. It's a point. We didn't really bring up too hard, but in these best of fives, it is a different element added. Your map pool is going to get pushed and pulled and tested. Absolutely true. In ways that it hasn't done before. And Loud have been a team that relies on their attack side split. Because of the way that their composition works, they've been bowling teams over in this half of the map. And I think back to the game against NRG. NRG had a decision to run an operator on their Astra defense that I thought smacked of not quite having the right experience against sure. Loud and how to counter them. Trying to counterplay them just by assuming they'd walk into it. Yeah, whereas instead the pace just bowled NRG over. RB's not going to be doing that. RB's a very uh, rifle-heavy player, and he's also extremely sensible with how he uses his utility to help his other teammates. He's become a very good sight anchor, despite that not originally being his MO. He's going to get flashed in here, an aggressive play. There's no way you can come out with any sort of kills. And indeed, Aspas does shut it down. Just after I'm talking about how safe RB usually plays. Zest and RB cook up a play like that. Throwing it into the mix. Seekers was used. I think that makes sense as a mid-round informational play, but yeah. really early on before you've got any idea that they could be in B main. What's and this, setup? this opens the door for Sadak to double blast back in here with his ult. Showstopper. Zest, miles away from getting his knife back online to try and cancel this one. And there we go, Dog. Satchel right up into heaven, the rocket. 
Oh, it sings, but it doesn't quite land onto any sort of target. And now DRX make the play, they make the call. They want to try and contest this. They want to try and fight this. Sadak, well, his position's known. 41 health, with the most to do. First one found. Crowd the roaring. Good. Nade is really good, and no! Oh, my goodness. Very close. Too close for comfort for DRX, surviving with just one player, but Stax does shut that down before it got really dangerous. And while the crowd are oohing and ahhing about the possibility of Sadak winning a 1v3, I want to give crazy credit to how DRX are anchoring these positions. They are playing such safe spots and forcing Loud to overextend into them if they want a chance of being able to take that space. They had a player deep in B Heaven, another player really safe in CT. I mean, these guys are playing the most passive angles, passive crossfires you can, and Loud's desire to hunt and get aggressive with their double duelist composition is being punished. I love what I'm seeing so far from DRX. And this was a map thinking way back into the past when this team was known as Vision Strikers and at the beginning of their time as DRX too. This map was amazing for them. This Korean team had trap plays. They dominated the defense side. Their coordination was fantastic. And we haven't seen it as a strength for them in recent times. Perhaps just waiting for this big moment. What a time to really showcase what you're made of. So remember, this is Loud's map pick as well. They took them here, thinking that they had the right idea about it. And the timeout's taken from Loud, looking to readjust, rethink their game plan. If DRX deal with this double duelist composition well on split, that's exactly what Loud are going to be playing on Fracture too. You've got to assume. As long as DRX can hold on, maybe there's still hope for them yet. So it could bode well. Early knife, the zero point used towards A, and the loud players dodge it. Looking to try and take that space in a more slow manner, contacting forwards. And this is the kind of round where Sadak is gonna just try to get a feel for the protocols from DRX. If we dodge their knife on A, what is their response? Do they try and re-clear it? Here you see the trailblazer used from Stacks in Heaven. Second piece of informational utility used. Oh my, and in the midst of all that, well, guess what? Pass, pass, happy to claim it. Way further forward than the DRX players were expecting. Base and the kill flick, locks on to the cranium. Stacks. He's going to be calling now from the back seat position, seeing what he can do for his team. See that cosmic divide, and Aspas is dealt with, playing so aggressive. Duck and Weed pushing back and forth. Mako just hunting for information. Spike still making his way, but dropped down. And that means Buzz. Let's rip this showstopper, but nobody else waiting for him. In fact, all the targets, Sadak, creeping and crawling behind them. I like this from Buzz, though. Oh Question my. is, can Sadak do something just as good to rip this one open? 12 bullets left, that's Mako. That's more response. Satchel used to dissuade this one, pushing forwards, Mako. Listen, it got dicey. I ain't talking FaZe Clan, but eventually this guy's gonna save hands. And Mako making it six to one. In that comeback at the lower bracket final, Mako went crazy, map three, to be able to bring his team back into it. I'm seeing flashes of the same thing again. I love this idea though from Loud to really test how the defense looks on an eco round like this, where you can take more risks because your chance of reward Otherwise, it's very low. That's going to put a bit of pressure onto it. Do they dodge the zero point again? No. Nope. Aiming to break it, but it just doesn't quite work. I can't quite see where it was placed. The Viper wall in their face. I mean, oh, their own Viper wall as well, right? So, yeah. bit of anti-synergy. Dog spots some zest. He's the casualty. There's a pull though, that's gonna be used. Stax, does he still wanna take this fight? That's the question, backs away. Seekers, a wide swing, repositions. Oh, Mako trying to as well help him out. The swing from heaven, readjust though. Repurpose full, and my goodness! Three kills for Stax. Damage being done, Buzz dropped down in the middle of all of this chaos. And the spike, out wide, out in the open. It's Aspas looking to wide swing and take matters into his own hands, but 
the gravity of it all. It's up to two years, isn't it? Two stars. Does he dare use them? Still out in the open, and there we go. What a round. Confidence in bounds from Buzz. What a round from DRX. Stacks and Buzz, magical. In terms of the duels that they win, where was this team? Where were these players in maps one and two? Take a look at these in the replay. Stacks taking that first duel off the back of the pull, and then this one. Oh, looking so good. Readjusts to be able to take out the raise player there, Sadak. I mean, that's just insane. The entire Fantastic. time, Seeker just Harassing chewing him. at his back. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he just has to be constantly readjusting his movement. And this is DRX looking so damn commanding in this map. Seven to one, knocking Loud once more onto that weaker buy. And the two newer players, the two rookies for Loud, they've only got one kill between them, I believe. And on Split, they normally have the vast majority of the trades. They're trading Aspas and Sadak, and that's how they get a lot of their kills. Micro timing! Oh, the cross their placement. It's not good. Pays for that with his life, hands a rifle over as well. But DRX have still been very stable, even in the 4v5s on Split. They just drop back. Sadak, no. Showstopper, that's a direct hit. Almost goes down to the full damage. Four to two health, smoke still to dissipate as well, relieving this one. RB trying to anchor. A look at the positioning, is it going to be known? Tries to at least try and take the fight to them. Satchel weighs his way through. Sheriff's making this more than dangerous, but Stax responds. Now he's the last player alive in that 1v2. Seekers, though, knows where they are. Grouped up, wider swing, will we see it? No trade, Stax left for it, and there just puts it in the bin, any attempt of a round win there for Loud, the crowd completely silenced. Stax looks like a machine on split. This is his map. This is his home territory. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how many picks that Loud are able to get early on, they cannot hold the help retake style from DRX. Leaving one side anchor, sometimes two side anchors, to play and dance around smokes, to dance around the architecture of the map, and then flooding people in to try and help them is working perfectly to counter loud. Yeah, break that zero point. Not a chance. Zest gets the info. He, and by by suppressing Kawanzine early on, he really delays this A ramp take. Kawanzine not able to use his trail trailblazer, can't take that side of the map. It slows everything down from loud. Boombot used to clear mid, but there's the snake bite and the orb. It's an instant response. The dance between both of these teams using utility to offset one another. But Zest has been punished. Out of every player on DRX, Zest has looked like the weak spot on split. There's no way he takes the fight. And he goes down again. That's the split changes. That angle didn't exist before. And so first player to fall. But look how quick this is. And Stax nearly has a flashback online. Just for re-clearing it. I mean, the confidence to do this one. And look how it's drifting all of the defenders back over towards B. Yep. Buzz is ready to help RB whenever he likes. Mako as well, going to be rejoining the defense now. But there are no stars left online. How does RB anchor without a smoke to play around? Astral form, nade at his feet. Trailblazer as well, and it's a flood retake. Dropping down, Mako couldn't reset the aim. Repositions though. Oh, too many targets to pick from, and well, they all tumble down. Desperate moves from Stax. But a very good defense half nonetheless. I mean, Loud have been putting up seven, eight, you know, more on their attack side so far this tournament when we've seen it. So DRX have already got them in a great spot, and their economy is good enough that they should be able to buy for the rest of the map. Big ults to work with, too, here. Both teams have a Viper's Pit. And Split works so that the defenders have map control to start with. Makos should be difficult to get through. It looks like he's going to use it in mid with a Judge. Or maybe he's just going to play the Judge early on and commit his pit later. Yeah, possibly waiting for the right time to use it. But just holds for now, and it's again loud. This has been their game plan, pressuring towards A. 
every time. God, that's good info. Two players spotted. It feels like their game plan is bully zest. He has been that weak link so far, trying to anchor down the back of the site. Hasn't quite found the right timings for him. Now that Util, though, drop down, stars, dash forwards, dog into the back, zest, yep, nowhere to run. Who can brave? Lame him, it's a wonderful move. DRX attempts to just flood back into that side and play fast to disrupt that take, and it's a punish. And look what happens when the anchor isn't able to stay alive. When Zest falls, those players who are trying to flood in and help him, Loud can put the focus on the re retakers, the rotators instead. You contrast that to the round where they're going towards B and RB stays alive for so long. Loud is still hunting for that anchor player, so they can't focus on the players in B Heaven or at CT that are flooding in. I would say Zest has got to adjust, but frankly, it's already late in the half. And I think the RX have done enough to be able to win here. Sure, another one on the board would be great. A 9-3 half. We've only seen 9-3s in the opening halves to these maps. So there would be some poetic irony to it. But I think either way, DRX will be very happy about this. They've already equalized their best performance on maps one or two. Yep. The work has been put in. Now we approach final round of the half here. DRX make it at 9-3. It will be more than respectable. Happy days for them, considering they're on that back foot. Oh, you can kind of feel that stress mounting a little bit. The glimpses we've seen of the coach cams, fraud sweating, wiping away his brow. <laughs> Everyone's sweating in here, Brad. Yeah. And so here we go. Pit now are going to be utilized straight down into mid. Trailblazer, though, double satchel. It's all the util. Every piece of the puzzle. Buzz has that showstopper. Nothing in his face. It's chaos. He's That's going for a direct hit. Yep, no wasting any time. Look at this. Oh, maneuvers away and around. Stacks contains that bit. Just, oh, my goodness. Lucky to get out alive. And still, no one's looking for RB. Weaving his way around the pillar. Stays alive in this one. Less and two years. Two smokes players with the most to do now. And it's cutting that noise. Spike, though, dropped up top. Fragment nade pushes it back. All on this one. Less moves forwards. Picks up the spike. And still RB uncontested. And where will be that trade? Everything to do. What? You waited right into a sideline, Zest. What? what is Zest doing? You've turned it into a 1v1. And you might have just thrown this cosmic divide. Now going to be used. Why not? Throw everything at it. So Last difficult. round to use it. How does he win this spam down? It's just swaths and waves of that utility. Blocking the sight line. 30 seconds, contacting up, down. Trying to clear it. He's got to know that Arby is on that corner. They're both worried that they could have pushed through spawn at this point. Surely RB's plant. got the clutch. Yeah, he hears the timing for it. Two years. Gambled incorrectly. That wave of disappointment, you could hear it in the cheers of the crowd as it died out. But if you're a DRX fan, I'm sure you're going to be more than happy with that one. Nice and loud as they secure that 9-3 half. It is so great from DRX, this bounce back. Amazing performance from Stax and Mako. The clutching and the sight anchoring, so good from RB. This looks like a different team, and they've got that momentum to be able to bring this back on split. Lovely momentum behind them, but we're going to change things up here for the halftime. Let's throw it down to Yinsu, who's on the floor of a special interview. And SciShow, I am now joined by Coriano, uh, streamer for Loud, and also FRT, the captain of the show match. That's going to happen in a couple of days. First of all, thank you for letting me crash your watch party. Uh, how's it going? How's the watch party going? Uh, first of all, hi guys, I'm Criano. Uh, the watch party is awesome. I mean, I really like doing these, uh, especially like inside the crowd and everything. The sound is awesome, everything is awesome, and Loud is doing a really great job. I mean, we didn't did a really good job on the first half, but I think we're going to recover this. Yeah, so it's already a 2-0. That's a really, yeah. really good job so far. Uh, FRT, I wanted to ask you, you know, in this crowd, there's so many Loud fans. They have so many chants. Now, I don't really understand Portuguese, so would you be able to explain to me, you know, what are they chanting? What does it mean? Okay, um, they just, like, pushing the team to the limit every time. They always, like, cheering for a crowd, like, loud, loud, loud. It, it, they say, like, loud, they, it says, like, loud, loud, loud. And then everybody's going crazy every time, like, 
they're like, uh, I don't know, smashing the thing and screaming, shouting, it's crazy. Can you guys teach me something, you know, if I want to be supporting loud out there, what should I say? Uh, the best word to say is vamos. Vamos! That's <laughs> one. Okay, okay, I understand that one. Uh, now, Tarek is actually right next to us. He's also captaining the show match, so you got anything to say to him? You know, you're going to be playing against him in a couple of days. I can't wait to play against him because I know it's going to be a great match, but I'm winning this game, bruh. I'm winning this. Trust me, bruh. I'm winning this game. <laughs> You guys can't see this, but Tarek is right next to the, and I think he's responding to us. And lastly, uh, is there anything you want to say to the players if they can hear you right now? Some words of encouragement, because they are uh, night three down. I mean, uh, for DR DRX, I'm going to wish them good luck, because Loud is coming really great. The changes on the roster, especially the coach as well, Fraud, is doing a really great job, and I think Loud will close these and play on Saturday. Oh, thank you so much, you two, for joining me, and have fun for the rest of your watch party, and I'm going to pass this back to Brandon Sideshow to jump back into the second half. And what a beginning here for Split, for DRX to be landing on this 9-3 half. The possibility of that reverse sweep, the possibility of them to be able to climb and claw their way back into some sort of favorable position. The crowd has not had much to get excited about here on Split. DRX have been so firmly in control. Their game plan has worked perfectly. The question is just whether they can convert it on the attack side. Because Loud, Loud's comp, I think, is designed for attacking, but it also is not uh, reluctant to get up in your face. What's the answer? Oh my goodness, that's a little bit awkward. Satchels was eating a ton of damage there. And they dropped down and it looks a bit awkward. In the meantime too, Aspas and Kalanzin, Reclare. this is what I'm talking about with this comp. It's so happy to get active on defense. Walking. They're hoping they this? that they were going back through sewers, but they definitely heard. They heard us. I mean, elephant foot stomps. But so, from DRX's point of view, how do you expect that? Uh, in the meantime, Stax is the one who's also Pushing up, getting himself into those favorable positions. And they take the timing. Walking, strutting to contact play, but this is where the backstab will really rain. Aspar spots one, holds it down, waits it out. First kill claim, there's the second, and finally the third. Stacks so much to do, and just not enough resources. What a play. Fantastic timing from Aspas and Kalanzin. But also, the whole reason they're forced to rotate there is because this hit into A was so messy. I don't think it was necessarily Loud doing anything spectacular on their defense, so much as Buzz with a bit of a beef trying to entry, the players getting distorted and mixed up. This isn't a very bursty comp from DRX. It's not gonna group up as five in A main and B main and explode. At least, I don't think it's playing to its strengths if they decide to do that. I would like to see them control mid, go for A heaven, run some splits, run some fakes, make use of the fact that Loud doesn't have a sentinel that can give them information on the map. Orb collected though, that's DRX making the most of these eco rounds, making sure that they prioritize the ults for the next. Building up to their advantages. If allow to have any shot of trying to shut down this comeback, this new momentum that's behind DRX. Pistol round was a good start for it, but it's still an incredible uphill battle. And Aspas has not been pushed away once by this angle. Marshall in his hands is deadly, especially when there's no armor. Got to be careful, running right into the sight line. Farming up to that blade storm. Got it online. And so cute play. <laughs> wow. Okay. Denied the ace. Well, it's the percentage play, you know? Aspas has course. already got his ult online. Yeah. They're all about that. They're all about that. And that's actually dangerous. Of all the ults to get online for a bonus, I think Aspas is number one. You're putting Aspas in a position now where 
if he plays aggressive and be main and goes for some kind of push, maybe in mid, you know, there's so many places where he can get onto sight lines early and try to challenge these players from DRX. So it has to be a clean round win for DRX. Don't let this bonus get out of hand. <laughs> got that full investment, you got the rifles. Boomba spots the one, Nade's gonna be used and... But Aspas is pushing. Yeah, Mako pushed all the way back, Aspas is pushing. Trailblazers use this good discipline. Tags him, stunned up, has to use the dash to get out of there. Yeah, that's good. So from DRX's point of view, they've managed to take mid and push Aspas a little bit away from B main. They have given up the whole of A, though, as a result of that. And look at those loud players in A heaven. They're only looking at vents. They don't care at all. I mean, now they've just started to pay attention to A main again, because there's a timing where DRX could have re-cleared. Oh, a bungle oh. from Stax on the flash as well. Doesn't even threaten like they could be going back in this direction, but still, loud for some reason, going for the gamble stack on A. Yeah, moving over, they seem to anticipate it. And the wrong what? read. It's it, yeah, incorrect gamble. Diligence there from DRX, making sure that they clear all the necessary angles just in case, but it's a free sight that is afforded to them, so you're gonna see that. 5v5, the full retake. And Buzz, oh my goodness! Trade Good is there! Great trade by Zest, exactly what his team needs. So using the Seekers to push forward a little. Pushing them back, and so the danger removed as Aspas does fall there. Satchel play, flash. Connecting onto the back, but eventually going to be meeting them with that rifle fire, and it is Mako, Mr. Consistent. Two years in Kawazin. Close to the corner. Great positioning by Zest there. Lovely little off angle, making sure that there's not going to be any crumbs left up. Really well played, very disciplined. One of the things, though, that I'm slightly concerned about with how DRX are playing their attack side, they're not creating much serious presence towards A. They're relying on this Viper Wall kind of setup from Marco, but Loud are playing it aggressively at the beginning of the round, and they know that no one's getting back over there. And the other part to this too is, RB is really, really safe in B main. So if Aspas decides to get aggressive in B and hang around there for a while, DRX could run a B split without ever clearing Garage. So a couple of things where you could definitely see an opening for Loud to start getting back into this map and controlling the game on their defense side. And it all comes down to how aggressively they play the outsides, the extremities of the map. And it's gonna come down to this, isn't it? Gun round. An operator in the hands of Aspas, deep trailblazer. Spots the one, and guess what, Aspas, of course he's taking that space, he knows where he is. And this is dangerous for Mako. Juggle peak, fires, dash enabled. Snake bite to try and force the angle up close. They're taking a the fight right to him. Buzz bails him out. There is a trade. But do they anticipate this? Asper's still there. Two years wide out in the open. That's going to be the response still. Dashing right down into the site. Relieving most of that one. There was a pull. Great assistance. How do you salvage it if you're DRX? Lau can see the spike. It's a smoke from RB. Pull back there. Making it look like they could have gone in, but the spike again is just wide out in the open. One little peek from Les. And they know there's, there's no threat. Boombot spammed. Almost every angle watched for. It has to be this site. That's where it's going to be landing, and it comes down to this crossfire. Impossible to break. Lovely by RB to whip it around and somehow return the fire. The players are weak though. Sadak in the danger zone now. Smoke popped up, but time pressure mounting. 11 seconds. Tries to go for the wider swing, but lovely patience by Aspas. DRX are still grouping up really heavily on the outer sides of the map. I haven't seen them use mid great apart from the previous round. Look at the A pressure. I mean, the. Loud's comp completely controls A main, B main. Whether it's Aspas pushing aggressive with Kawanzin, or whether it's that kind of suck nade combo that they've got going on on the opposite side of the map with Sadak and Tuiz, they, they dominate the outer wings of Split. And DRX need to recognize this in that timeout where they can have a chance to talk to the coach. 
and they need to be taking mid. Aspas can always be more mobile, of course. He can bring an operator to mid or try to go for a push there, something of that uh, ilk, but I'm not seeing the same mobility for DRX. And they were set up to be able to get a comeback started here. 9-3 at the half, sure they lose the pistol, but they're letting an opportunity slip away from them. And that, that cannot be allowed to happen if DRX want any chance of picking up a trophy at this event, any chance of pulling this back and getting us to five maps, getting the first Valorant reverse sweep in a BO5. Would be devastating. It's an opportunity, like you said, Josh, you cannot let it slip. And DRX knocked down to the weaker buy. Still getting the rifle in the hands of Stax and RB, so a bit of firepower behind this one still. Could be dangerous. Loud on the right foot now. At the end of the day, the pressure is still on DRX to be able to clinch the maps, the rounds, and they should. That's a fast play, Satchel in the face, and offsetting the weaknesses of the Stinger, if there are many. And this is where I was talking about earlier. RB plays very safe, very passive, they but they him. spotted Aspas, so now they've got to go for the crunch. 13. Oh, okay, that. Yeah, I mean, listen, not afforded too many chances there. Had to dash forwards because he could feel the players swarming him, approaching but, him from behind. But this is so much better executed by DRX. And they've Buzz, afforded that operator. Yeah, using the op. And this round is gorgeous from DRX. The set play off the rip to set them up for the opening kill, the crunch on Aspas. Every part of this was lovely. RB even getting into a slightly more aggressive position in B main. If this is what they talked about during the timeout, and they continue running this kind of round, Loud are going to be under so much pressure. Less just making sure to make it a bit more expensive, although I'm not going to be doing too much, obviously, to them. It was a half by anyway. Exactly. Why the play by Mako? It's consolation. Stack shuts it down along with the cheers of the crowd. And this is quite a weird spot, actually, for DRX, because they've saved an op into this round kind of against their will. Yeah. I don't think they're going to want to be opping on attack. I mean, look at how much value Buzz is getting when he decides to play aggressive with a, even a stinger. Maybe RB ends up picking up the operator and plays those kind of safer lines over towards B main. But otherwise, this seems like it might even stunt the attack. And take a bit of bite out of it, maybe. Look at how rough the force is from Loud. That is rough. Guardian, no armor judge from Sadak. I got a question why they're even bothering to buy. Why not go for the half? Not wanting to play for that OT, it seems. Feeling like they have to buy up into this one. Maybe with the ults online, they can make the most of it. Look at this. Aspas, again, so much confidence to be able to push back Mako, even trying to pre aim it and look at the punish. I mean, maybe with a rifle, Buzz could have got something done there, but. This is the shot. I mean, Aspas was very fast on the reaction to dash out. I think he knew that was coming. And grouping up into this crossfire. It slows down DRX so much. Cosmic Divide, though. Rips its way across. Now you're seeing it. The showstopper. Clearance. It's there. Rocket exchanged. And a life for a life. I'll take that. Into the site now. Still. I not really relenting, are they? It looks like Loud wanted to play this a bit more fast, but okay, watch down. Zest this time, his turn with the operator. Sadak has managed to approach his way into this corner, but not the greatest weapon for the job and no armor to work with or speak of. 87 health. It's looking like DRX reaching that map point. I think Critical for them. I think Sadak probably wants to go for this and the other two should save. Hello, though, two E's with a pick. Zest responds, Satchel playing to the back, how does Mako do that? Two years, right through the wall, smoke drop down, time running low though. Anything to offset this, pull it back, has to tap it because of the pull. And DRX should know that's enough utility used, enough time pressure bought that that is going to land them there. The 12th round, map point for DRX. What a bounce back split has been. And that timeout, so crucial between round 16 and round 17 to get themselves back into the headspace to win here.
Loud are going to respond with one of their own, but the, it's a horribly broken buy. They made their last gamble. The eco economical gambit in round 18, throwing caution to the wind. And now this looks all but over. DRX with six opportunities to take us to map four. Yeah. And I think so far, you should be fairly confident that DRX can do something similar on a fracture because their dismantling of the double duelist composition, despite the fact that Aspas has 21 kills, is pretty gorgeous. They, they've stopped all of the follow-up. Flood retakes were good. Here on their attack side too, they're playing some of the slower rounds, controlling the map a little better. Yeah. Signs of life. And listen, Josh, I'm happy to see it. I was thinking for a moment we were going to be seeing a, a fast 3-0. Bit of a repeat of maybe just the blunder that DRX were facing last time they played against Loud, but now they are one step away, securing split, extending that play deeper into the series where it gets more so into that unknown, more so onto Fracture, possibility, the potential to really push Loud to the limit. And I don't think that a quick 3-0 would have been a disappointing performance here. You know, it would have been incredible to see Loud looking dominant heading into the finals. But I'm all aboard for a close semi. And for DRX to keep their hopes alive of making it to a grand final and having a chance to lift a trophy. No time wasted with this one. Look at the space that's going to be taken. B main control is there. And RB, he's got the stars in his hands, starting to lay this one down. Double satchel. Two years. Timing's it, though, and the judge is there. Spam, though. Counterplay by the rifles. Drops down. Less needs to be dealt with. How does he claim two? Inconceivable, almost. But down to that 2v2. And the pressure's mounting. It's Aspas and Kawazin who have to do the most here. The weapons aren't too good for it. Seeker's committed. Dropping everything into this round. One down to the ground here. Start to split the site up. Is it going to be that crossfire? Zest. What is that? Taking a fight to them. Pop flush play, leaves it up to RB. Can he perform the slam dunk? A tap, baits out the pull. Still plenty of time, but one of the players has got to hold this, and the rifles are in the hands of the loud players. It just looks impossible. It looks just impossible. And Aspas, whew, sweating maybe, but listen, pulls it off. That might be the most difficult round that loud have to get through to bring this to OT because their weaponry was awful, and they still managed to pull out a win. Uh, having said that though, Brent, only keeping one player alive, oh, that's so good, the 2K from less. But like I was just about to say, keeping only one player alive there means that their economy is still in a rough spot. They're gonna have to keep pulling out round wins, and some of them a little more cleanly in order to get their economy back into a decent position and face DRX on level footing. Get it back in that manageable state, but again, similar tale to the first two maps in terms of there being no room for error for one side on the opposing foot. And wow. Tanak, that is just spam. I what don't know a what read. Yeah, what is the cue off that? Not too sure, but it catches. No idea. Counterplay on the other side of the map as Aspas and Kawanzin take A away and make this a bit more comfortable. It's Having said lot. that, they've got three players leaning on the no A way. side. What is this clash? Pushing forward, Aspas wins the fight on eight health. But Stax has got to call a reactive push into B right now. He knows there's max two players there. And two E's put under incredible pressure. Indeed he has still. Will a headshot be available to him? Gets the one, but it's good to trade it. Sight cracked open, wide, less. Back in position, into heaven. But now you're playing right into this Viper's pit. Still three players available for Loud. Dropping down already. Aspas with the knives. Flash down, Kawazin buys time, Michael foul, no more pit. Crossfire has to be good, dropping, buzz for the ace. Will it be the finalization? Will he be the finisher? Less, so much to do. And just buying time with a showstopper. Putting it off the clock, RB, what a finish. DRX are not done yet. There's still life in this squad. We've seen it before, you cannot count them out. They looked outclassed in the first two maps. A massive difference, a tear gap almost. 
but we've seen it before. Lower bracket final of champions. We've seen it in their run here, even here, that once you knock the RX, this squad, now tempered by experience, have got more to give. Fracture is going to be another opportunity for Loud to close things out 3 1. The double duelist were expecting to come back out and play again, but it did not work here. A real tested DRX squad, the history of this team dating all the way back when they were known as Vision Strikers. They do not want to let that opportunity slip. They've never been to that grand finals at the global events. That's what they have been hunting for. At least one step closer being able to bite back. Asbas is still putting on insane performances, by the way. Eight first bloods, 23 kills, but this time it didn't matter. They shut down everybody else. It's the game plan of DRX that was just far too good. Can't overcome it. That's going to do it for this map. Do not go anywhere because you do not want to miss the rest of this series. Red Bull gives you wings.
DRX have come alive here in Sao Paulo. One round at a time, one map at a time, Achilleos. That's what we're talking about when we talk about mounting the reverse sweep. Never happened before in international Valorant history, but we might, we might just be on the path to it. It could be the day. This was a major rally back here from the side of DRX, once again showing that that mental perseverance is still at in full force. Still though, loud, looking terrifying. Asmus in particular, still somebody who very much needs to be accounted for as we move forward in the series, because even in that loss, he was dropping some significant numbers. It looks like one sleeve at a time for you, Seth. You're very, very hesitant you know, to get back on the DRX. We get, to, we get to that 2-2 that, that score line. Who knows? Maybe I'll be wearing this bad boy. <laughs> I, I want to go back to what you were just mentioning around Aspas. That guy was still out of control. And yes. It's kind of insane that they lost 13 to 7, given how well Aspas played. He was 8 and 1 in first kills to first test. Uh, 8 and 1. I love that call out because Mimi, it all started on the defensive half for DRX. It was Mako and Stacks holding sights. Yeah, thus far, we have not really seen this double duo, this double dive composition tested on the attacking side for Loud. But DRX did such a good job at shutting down these side executes, and those two players you call out were fantastic at it. Both Stacks and Mako would uh, kind of initially give space that double dive then flash back in, fight together, and found so much value in shutting down these excesses, which was the brunt of the game plan for Loud. I mean, yeah. It's like countless 1vx situations that these guys are coming out on top of. I think that the rest of the team saw that RB was clutching up. He was dominating the leaderboard, and they said, okay, you know what? Let's get involved a little bit here, boys. And uh, they were able to rally back. But it, this also goes back to something that SK Rossi was saying on the desk that I have repeated multiple times now, because I, I love the quote. It's that when your IGL is fragging, it really rallies mm. the rest of the team. Stacks was stepping up here in this map. The rest of the team leveling up. Buzz having a very strong performance overall in the raise. It's a good sign. Yeah, it is a really good sign for them as well. And for Loud, it felt like this is the first time where their game plan has been really questioned throughout this series. Map one, map two, their game plan went perfectly to plan. DRX was dismantled. Here, they get uh, they get a little stunted in, in this one. Yeah, and it kind of goes back to what Josh was saying on the desk. Like this, up, up until this map, it felt like a tear gap. Yeah. It felt like they were not in the same ballpark, like they had no business being on the same stage together. But the response out of DRX has been exceptional. You mentioned how much better Buzz played. He wasn't top fragging, but he looked so much more comfortable. Setups were there. He had help. Now, of course, DRX set themselves up beautifully in the first half, but it was this round 17 that really felt like the game breaker to me, Mimi. Yeah, they were building back into this one in the second half. They they had quite a few good rounds for Loud. The fast retakes were great. And then this round just went to chaos. Players from Loud making individual plays, getting overwhelmed by the double blast pack, and after this slipped away, that's where it felt like DRX got back in control of this game. Because for a moment, it looked like, again, they were going to run into a hurdle and trip over it at the final yard. It was also another major momentum shift, because that round win comes right off the back of a timeout called by the sign yep. of Loud. Yeah. But DRX, during that timeout, communicating with their own team, they were able to go ahead and just set up for the play. It got a little bit messy, but the rush to go straight up through mail with that raise, that entry was clean, and that really set the stage for the rest of the round to go the way of DRX. Looking like a different team coming out of map three and heading in into map four. It's starting to feel like anything's possible again, Doug. Uh, but how do you think about the approach here to Fracture? Once again, it's a map that we did, uh, we've seen both uh, teams on in this uh, in this tournament so far. Loud, it's been picked in all three of their series, have only been pushed to it twice. For DRX, only one showing, and it was a loss to Talon. Well, I mean, I guess if you think about split history, if it, it's going to repeat itself, this is perfectly fine for DRX. Forget that you haven't played it a ton. Forget that you maybe you played it once and you got pushed a little bit. Like, they're very comfortable in these situations. And the truth is, I think there's a lot of similarities to how Split and Fracture play as far as how you want to play in Chaos. Sorry. Yeah. No. I, here's my big question, though. Buzz, he was playing the raise, going up against Talon. Do we see a readjustment? Everyone's been begging to see RB back on the Neon. I, myself, am looking for it. And this is a trend in the right direction. Buzz coming out with the K. AJ. No way. Prime Gaming Agent Select continues to throw us some curveballs here. I think in the they're doing it. Be the neon. They're making that pivot. This is going to be really interesting because Loud is going back in with the same game plan. Another one of these double dive comps. It got shut down last map. But for DRX, this is something that they have played in history but have not done just yet at this tournament. And it works really, really well. But who I'm looking towards individually in this one is RB because in the past when he plays Neon, there's been this expectation that he falls flat in big matches. I think he's disproved 
it thus far at this event and at Champions, but on that role where he's had issues before, I'm looking at him. I mean, Achilles is getting excited at I seeing was, this pick locked I in. I was telling you guys, I hope that this happens if we go to Fracture and we're finally getting to see it. The question is, how well versed is it? It's been a while since we've seen it. Is it still going to be fresh in his mind? When it comes down to all these movements, all this tech with the Neon. The Neon pick tells me it's about to be a change in pace on this game. We want a map five. Everybody watching wants a map five. The question is, will we get it? Let's find out as we send it over to Brent and Sideshow. Will we get that map five? Well, it comes down to this, doesn't it? Fracture is the map of choice between both of these teams, and they've yep. got to deal with that final boss of Aspas. This guy, the consistent thorn in their side, putting up a goated performance yeah. across all of the maps that we've seen so far, even in the one that they just lost. Yeah, he's actually been crazy, and it feels like DRX have just gone, all right, Buzz, you've had your opportunity. Let's throw out RB and see how you can handle things. But I'm right there with Seth on the desk. I think RB's Neon was incredible on Fracture when we've seen it in the past. And the whole team was great at supporting him too. So I'm excited. I'm just hoping that it's practiced enough because in the run up to this tournament, they won't have been running this comp. They were playing with Foxy9, presumably he was on the duelist. So maybe they have 10 days of getting back in touch with this comp. An explosive beginning for Loud. Really separating Aslos from the rest of his team. Shorty, way up, flash play. A little bit behind his back, jiggling, and well, goodbye, Aspas. Final boss dealt with. Planted. That will go down, though, without too many problems still. Damage was taken, Sadak low. Going for this reflank and positioning timing is absolutely critical. Zest, wow. so unaware of it, but just can't quite get a sideline. The angle, Zest, right behind him. Oh, Sadak doesn't with. kill him. Another fight to be taken, though. Stun through to choke point. All lining up there for the frenzy, and that's exactly where it thrives. Stun is good, though. Jumping, the wiggling, diffuse. but the defuse just goes off with no problems. Very nice sweet take from DRX. Pulling a page out of Loud's book there. Pushing players deep, fighting with RB. The stun bolts coming out in order to make space for the spike to be stuck. Very well done. And I would expect to. Based what we saw on split, for DRX to sometimes allow the duelists onto the site and try and push through the smokes to collapse on everybody else. That's roughly speaking their game plan on the defense side of split too. Allow the duelists to do whatever they like, but crunch down on the rest of the players. No force buy from Loud, allowing DRX to pick up another pistol. Let's see if they can keep this one moving. Players are low, and the util set down onto the sides. Okay, Lass, he's dealt with. Did make it that much more scrappy, though. A bit more scary as well, so backing into the corner. Aftershock, it's going to be used here. Kawazin committing that plan, but he will fall. Perfect timing from the grandfather of Breach. So two years with <laughs> the most to do. Sees around the back, one shot finds, but Arby's there with a trade, and. Okay, listen, not the cleanest out of Eco in the world, the world but he's vying with two of their players, and so far, RB putting up a good performance. And you're really waiting until RB gets onto the attack side to demonstrate his incredible movement. But on the retake, he's going to be there as well. So now DRX with an opportunity to go for a bonus. Do you do, you do something aggressive? You can certainly push the Neon out of tree, try and push them out through halls. There are many players go through a north side crunch. Yeah. There's a lot of different things that you can look at. Did they even opt into buying as well? That's what I'm wondering. I know that there was only two players surviving. So. Certainly looks like RB is going to go for this, right? Yeah. Fast play now. It's going to be that clash. Flash over the top, stun as well, supplements it. But pound for pound, going to be finding it and a fight to be taken. You just don't quite have the range of that one, RB. Less. Once more, trying to meet the match. DRX with that double swing, double face, but a lot of utility being used now. That does push back loud. Not even the Nana Swarms, but actually an aftershock from Stax scaring them off. Zest goes to grab some information on the north side of the map, and they're going to be in a decent position to still try and fight this. No drop main is a fast reposition. They take control. Of That's going to be the name of their game, and well. Back to it. Hopefully, no more dis. We'll see, though, fight taking place. Kawasin winning it out, and the rifles really do just come out on top. 
That's going to be the difference maker. Loud with a commanding presence. Any damage here is good for Buzz, of course. But I think, really, when you're looking at their defense side, it's about finding those opportunities to get up and get aggressive. I think especially on B, when you're looking at the positioning of the defenders, like somebody like Stax, right? He's been playing Canteen, using his Aftershock. And I think if Loud go for some full execs onto B, you'll see Stax flashing through smokes and trying to support Buzz, who's anchoring hard. Early days in this map, still so many different directions that it can go. Yeah. Buzz going down to the spike, so denying any potential old orbs. Quite important when two years is one away, but attack side, it's quite easy to claim up those orbs anyway. We'll see if they aim to do that. Maybe a fast play, taking some area of the map. Bit of a difference here in how Loud is set up. Over towards Arcade with four of their players. And one of the risks, actually, of having less play Killjoy in this map is that it's quite easy to get crunched. I wonder if RB is going to apply some pressure and push out of holes here, but it doesn't look too aggressive. Instead, the action is going to be over here. Yeah. Rapid take now of all this space. Rolling Thunder. Pushes all the way through onto the side, and guess what? Nobody playing. Look, look at the Nano Swarm setup, though, Brad. As yeah. soon as this alarm bot gets gets found, and Mako's just got his ult off the back of that kill. Beautiful kill onto Les there. Plant wall still goes down, but yeah, just the wall and Nano Swarms at the back, preventing anybody from taking up that space. Reclear. I am so surprised that they allowed the plant to go down. Maybe they thought the plant had been disrupted by the Nano Swarm setup. Everybody wanted to refight this one. Orbital strike in the hands of Mako. Space taken. A couple of players falling quite low. After shock as well. Aspas off angle. Wow. No way. Buzz just revealing an elbow, but it's more than enough now. Sticking all the way through. Counter spam in action. Half under the fuse. And there is utility there. But already is enough damage done. Over the strike trying to disrupt it. Two years of it online. It's all up to RB. Taps it. Trying to force the fight. 60 up. Gets it. Does he have time? Does he have enough? It's half under the fuse. Sticking it all. Oh my God. Heartbreak for DRX and two E's with the play that wins them the round. A pivotal one at that as it drops DRX's economy back down into the dust. Take a look at these moments, good counter spam, but it's the couple of kills that two E's gets. Three, including enough to get his ult online. And with four milliseconds, the difference. Just insane. That's a backbreaking round if you're DRX. Needed that for the swing of the economy. Instead, now it's your team has been pushed onto the back foot, onto the weaker by once more. Same play again. Yeah, loud, not relenting, are they? So much util, faster play. RB forced to pull out the ultimate overdrive. Oh my goodness. Adjustment of the aim. It is chaos though. Inside the smokes. DRX hunting for any and all advantages. Marco does have the rifle, but. Got to be handed an easy kill. Spam down. Just trying to get out of there, it seems. Sadak's plant gets his ult online. That's going to be useful for the next. I don't see Mako winning a 1v4. Not from this position. Yeah, seems very, very unlikely. The DRX are going to have to make an adjustment to deal with this 4-1 arcade push. There's only a single player less coming from the bottom side coming through tree. And the double duelist comp is just bursting through arcade. There's a lot of things that DRX could do. You know, one holding heaven, one behind the box, run some kind of uh, double face like that. But I think what DRX are worried about is that, sure, they go two for two in that situation, but then they lose the sight. That becomes the problem. Marco cowering. Open that he gets the save and hold on to this one. I think Lau could run the exact same strat again and just throw Sadak's ult behind it. And it's going to make DRX very cautious. So what call is made here? Looks like, again, that heavy presence into B main. But for Lau, they've got other ideas. 4-1 split. 
Yeah, but this on the south side. But this time yeah. on the opposite site by the look of things, right? Towards A, towards drop, they want to fight it. Maybe the plan to try and burst through with a showstopper, but it's Buzz that has to try and put a stop to this one. Less for the first time is actually going to be pressure. Zara taking care of. Less goes down in the middle of all of this one. Sadak, though, pushing forwards. And the fuse run out there, not finding an easy target. And there we go. Let's it rip eventually. Straight into halls, but critically, Spike is going to go down. Plant it. I'm kind of confused why Mako isn't using his ult to try and create some pressure here. They're just letting Lau get into post plants for free. Look down close, though. Maybe anticipating they're going to be fighting. Mako once more. This guy with a rifle in his hands. He's a menace. Lockdown's going to be destroyed. That bails out Aspas, but he's inside the cloud bus, and they know it. He's dealt with down to two years. We've seen this rookie player really step up to the challenge, step up to the task time and time again, but that might be a little bit too much to ask of him in a 1v4. And so DRX managed to pull off the retake there, again, without using Orbital Strike, just investing the lockdown that pushes the loud players into uncomfortable spots, and then they wrap around and pinch. This kill is gorgeous. I mean, how on earth he gets that? I thought it was a random spam through the smoke looking at the minimap, but that's almost more impressive. Yeah, not quite. And I think they might want to be doing that more. If they realize that Les is playing on his own on the south side of the map, look, he's here again. Les is the only player at the bottom of the map. If they do crunches south side, Les is not going to be able to hold on, and a lot of the time he's not going to be able to escape on the rope either. Big ultimates to deny the plant. Rolling Thunder, Orbital Strike. And RB's hunting for less once again in halls. What's going to get broken? Dash across there with a satchel. Stunned up though, Zest. At top, is there going to be the common spam angle? Aspas taking damage and eventually will fall there. No one was able to get into the site. Less is creeping his way through. Good timing. And the Prowler nerfed. Spot him. Seems like Zest is aware there was a jiggle. He knows that didn't get a good clearance. And Loud waited out by the time. Les just can't get value out of his ult. I mean, I think this is what Mako is saving it for, right? The orbital strike is their big counter to Les's lockdown. So, I think you're going to see that. <laughs> oh, what a shot from RB! And this guy on the neon just unleashed, isn't he? Flawless round for TRX. Five surviving. The bank continues to build. And they're going to be happy, they're going to be pleased with this one. Uh, great stuff. Uh, th this round, though, Sadak going ahead of the play, causing himself to get completely isolated there. A free pick that nobody could trade. And I'm seeing the same themes that we saw on Split. Perhaps not as dominant a half. We'll have to wait and see. Another fight. But this time, a lot of players ready for it on the south side. Yeah. How is it going to be the response from Loud? Aspas, Blade Storm, good flash. Look how quickly they bail as soon as they realize the breach is there. Okay, it's not just less this time. We don't want any part of it. So backing all the way. Aspas, he's trying to get away with murder. Oh, Mako, he's creeping. Jiggling. Crawling. They don't know his position. Mako, and yeah. So unaware of that. Rifle picked up. It's time, looking a bit dangerous. This puts Sadak on the lurk, and he's got a great timing. I mean, they've got double lurk going on here. This retake could be too fast. Rolling Thunder for Rolling Thunder, pushes them back in the cloud burst. There's no way Aspas gets one, but it was the kill, was traded. Sadak reflanking through, spray down by Zest. But still, it's all up to him. Spike planted, what can he do? Offset Kawazin, fantastic movement. Great control. Kawanzin pulled magical rounds out. I'm thinking back to their game against NRG, round 24, the 3K that Kawanzin found for them. All of these players are so comfortable on Fracture. But there, in a broken by kind of situation, again, risks being taken by Loud. The call made by Sadak or Aspas to try and contact in through B main reaps reward. And Buzz is using an operator. 
That is unusual, but he what might spot Aspas. Yeah. You just don't anticipate this. Contact play. Ah, well, head taken straight off. Great idea from Buzz. He's going to be in an uncomfortable spot if they actually close around him, but he might be good for a couple. Yeah, especially if they keep contacting into this one. What a shot! Oh, my goodness. There, Piss, uh, Pixel, handed to him there. I mean, just zero to work with you. Still claims two kills. Now, we'll see what happens here. In tower, pushing forwards, and Flash gives shots. a perfect timing, but still, the fact that he's hitting them, nevertheless, so impressive. Prowler in the smoke. Lights it up, Sadak's lucky to get out alive. Got down to 16. The buzz repositions to try to hit another absurd shot. And all is quiet in Sao Paulo. And Dirac's not even having to use many ultimates to be able to get these rounds on the board. Buzz has just handed them that one out of incredibly skilled offing. And you're exactly right, Josh. You just don't expect the operator to be picked up. Now, not with this composition. The Buzz Neon is good doesn't for really it, but Yeah, the Neon's not going to be opping, so... Really no suitable targets. And we didn't spot it there, but I've got to assume that Buzz probably has a shorty as well. Oh, a bit whiffy there from two E's. A round win for DRX. Five to four. And they take every weapon out of the hands of Loud. It's quite important, actually, because it puts Aspas in a spot where he can't afford another rifle. Let's take another look at this incredible opping, though. Wow! Oh, my God! Just the barest sliver of less showing. And I mean... also, the reaction times to get that. And also, Kawantin peaking just a hair before his flash pops. That is insanity. Amazing skill from Buzz. I gotta give massive credit as well, though, to this DRX squad, because this army's Neon's been good in the past. Okay, fair enough. But he comes into this role, he moved away from that primary duelist because in these big moments, these big games, he couldn't quite live up to the expectations. Very true. And as well as that, Buzz has been able to keep up a consistent performance, despite the fact that now he's playing the Killjoy. He's played it before, he's been good on every role. But you would think that his impact would be mitigated. But it's just been strength for strength ever since that first map where he got brutalized. Yeah, completely agree. I think the mental game has been fixed on DRX. They have overcome their demons. They did it at Champs, and they're showcasing it again here. RB has gone from a player who crumbles in every big match to leading the tournament in clutches and being 10 and 4 when he's asked to step up on Neon in possibly the biggest map of his tournament life. The biggest map of his career, perhaps. And yeah, for Buzz to rebound too, that just speaks to his mental fortitude after getting bullied map one. Yeah, just battered. So here's another spot where RB's going to look to go aggressive towards Tree. And you, you're going to get kind of like a cycling effect on the map as DRX oh pushed down here. Yeah, but there's no time wasted yet still. Les tries to hold that one down. OK, an exchange as well. Wait, but Buzz went one for one. He and did. the rest of Loud come through. Do they know that Stax is here? Push into the corner. <laughs> Stax is gifted that one. But this is chaos as it well. It is chaos. Look at Aspas and Tui's. Manoving, taking that space into their spawn. They've got to know that the pinch was happening on the south side, so a call is made. Zest uses his Nightfall to get information, and it's going to allow them to get a slightly earlier rotate. Does that help him take the duel against Aspas? He's got to be careful with this one. No, can't win it out. Weapon diff, though. Exactly. The economy playing a crucial element in this one. Stax just walking, strolling. A jaunt in the park is what it feels like as he was approaching Dish. And now they can take their time with it. And I'm telling you, Brent, DRX have figured this out from Loud. I talked about how Les, on his own, is a prime candidate to do a crunch on. And DRX are looking for it. You see how quickly they bailed a couple of rounds ago when they saw a breach flash? Yep. And this time, they don't see anything, so they know it's only Les there with the turret. And even though Les goes one for one, it helps DRX control so much of the map. Mako pushing out, punishing. <laughs> and Lauda forced to play at such a high tempo, they make mistakes on their B hit, not accounting for stacks. The economy is in such a weird place, man. Louder going for a, a half buy, I guess, but kind of some of their players investing fully. It's really weird. 
still less holding on to that lockdown as well. Doesn't want to use it when Mako's alive because of the orbital strike just, just waiting in his back pocket. I guess they are going to be able to buy next round, so this is just a straight-up save for Loud. Playing for it. But yeah, that's a great point, Brent. We haven't really seen a big ultimate clash yet. It's just a game of chicken. Listen, if your opponents are scared to use your ultimates just because you're holding one, take that as a win. In some sense, the ultimate value that Mako is getting here. Yeah, exactly. some point, you just have to use it and bite the bullet that you're going to be losing it. Lots of players, though, clashing now through San, over the strike and a fault line, dash to the side. Reposition, Arby stays alive, but into the cloud burst, doubled up and play, and the guns are suited for it. Wow! Arby can't hit the spray down, and wow, just overwhelm. There's the value of the double duelist finally rearing its head. Completely overwhelming. Everybody is weak, though, or rather, I should say, Kawanzin and Sadak. Doubled up, though, that's a high-low setup. Very difficult to break. So loud, critical round win for them when it was looking so damn unlikely. You consider where their economy was at. Yeah, they get it on the half by. And Tui is now pulling out two rounds where his orbital strike has been incredibly important. The double duelist, though, absolutely dominated Stax and Mako's setup. Both showcasing why. You know, Mimi likes to call it the double die, because they have that mobility to break crosshair placement and break crossfires. Buzz picks up the operator again. A much more passive angle from him that's being held. See him deep onto the side, same one as before. And he's hoping that he'll be gifted again. Another contact push. Jump peak, <laughs> okay. Dangerous. Yeah, and Kawazin lucky to get away with just a haircut there. Taking tunnel makes it look like this is going to end in a B split, although DRX can't know that. It's a little risky, though, because Loud never had any information towards the north side of the map. It's possible that RB could be right behind them in spawn. Or oh, grab, though, that's going to be given that rolling thunder. Double satchel play and a lockdown used as a response immediately. Up close, stunned up though, a buzz. He can't do anything about that. Not with the operator in his hands. And what is going to be that response from DRX? Mako, trying to stay alive. He's aware that there is still that lockdown. Spam through. Plant goes down, and so does Stax. There's the lockdown. <laughs> Mako finally gets to use his own. Finally gets to use it, and there we go. We will take it out, but a fight being taken. One after another. Sadak, beautiful placement, and a team to bail him out. That's a 6 6 half. Finally, the parity that we've been waiting for between these two teams. Nothing but 9 threes in the first three maps. And both teams bringing everything to fracture. Awesome response from Loud when it looked like things were spiraling out of control for them. Grabbing those final two. 6-6 six, six and even half. Let's send it on to Yinsu with once again another special interview. Thank you very much, Sideshow. I'm Bran. Uh, that's right, I'm joined by MCH right hey. now, a streamer. You're doing a watch party. Uh, talk yeah. to you, what's happening? Are you having fun? Yeah, are you entertained? <laughs> <laughs> this is a very entertaining series. Now, I actually wanted to ask you because you, uh, you're a caster, you're a streamer, you used to be a pro player as well. Right. Uh, these guys down there, you know, they were 2-0 up and now there's a possibility of a potential reverse sweep. So talk me through the mentality of what they're going through, how, you know, they can close the series out without the reverse sweep coming in. I think that when you are in the match, you kind of get zoned out out of everything that is happening. And what I would think about is that you always have to be solving the next problem and not thinking about the big picture, like what's my next thing to do, what's the next thing that I, where I gotta go, where I gotta say to my teammates. So just like keeping your focus and not overthinking the whole, the whole thing because this can get in your mind and you kind of lose focus. How big of a, a buff do you think the crowd is? Because they're behind everything this team does, this loud team does. Do you see that as like a sixth man, as a big buff? Yeah, I do. I think that it's not like exactly what they may be saying or what they, they, they may be chanting, but I think that there's an energy that 
takes the, 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 the venue and just like gives some energy to the players. I think we can all feel it as well. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, you know, Lau, they've won a trophy before, uh, yeah. but they didn't do it in Brazil. So how big of a deal? How much do you think it will mean to the fans and to everyone in the community if they are able to lift a trophy behind us right here? Yeah, I think it would be really great and it probably would be the first time for a Brazilian team to win uh, a world match in, in Brazil. So our championship in Brazil, so it would be our first for Brazilians in Brazil and it would be very special. I hope it happens. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I, I, I just want to send a yeah. shout out. Uh, hey, Tarek, do you remember Team 1 versus <laughs> Cloud9? <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, have fun for the rest of your watch party. I'm going to toss this back to Saisha and Brennan and see if Loud can indeed close this out. They're going to be hoping and praying that they can close it out here because that momentum is starting to build behind a team like DRX. You don't want to be granting them the opportunity to get back into this series. Not at all. But I think a 6-6 half can go anywhere from here. I'm excited to see RB's Neon on the attack side, though. Previously, we've seen their composition work so cleanly behind that Neon Engage. And it's not like Les is pulling out a Cypher to deal with it. You know, he's going to be able to get past the Nano Swarms in all likelihood and put a lot of pressure on. And just looking at the minimap to start, DRX seem primed to try and challenge B early. Does RB have enough support here to get through Sadak? Fault line close and across. Does he hear the skip and a dodge there into tunnel? Feels unlikely because he's got his back wide open. He thought it was free. Thought it was available to them. Fantastic opening and now the plan can start to go down, but a fast play. Dash forwards into the smoke out and he opens spike plan denied still responding in kind. DRX shutting down that approach. And it's up to less. 1v3. Fully reloaded in the clip with the frenzy. Maybe he can do something still. Sight's gonna be given to him, but Buzz with his reposition. Not quite planted for him. Turret now. Tap of the spike needs to try and bait out the positioning. It's good from Les, doesn't open himself wide to the choke point, takes the fight anyway, and Buzz will win it. There's the pistol round, and DRX can get themselves at a fantastic start here in the second half. Really important imperative for DRX to pick up. Their second pistol in this map, too. Getting both on the board is massive. And neither of these teams have been willing to force, go for it. Doesn't make too much sense from Loud in this point. You know, no plant money. Not really that many kills either, but just something interesting to note because that pistol round has oh, look always been able to be converted. <laughs> okay, deciding against it. I thought Aspas was just going to be egoing by in a marshal there, but no. He sold it. And the comp from DRX, RB, is going to be at the forefront of all of these push attempts. The spearhead honed to a deadly level. Part of that being his movement, being able to weave in and out. And as you mentioned as well, Josh, you know, there's no trips there. Les is playing the Killjoy. There's nothing to slow him down. No, RB will be extremely comfortable playing against the Killjoy setups, I think. And it's slow and patient for DRX, wondering when the duelists are going to get aggressive. Very safe setup from Buzz here at the north side, too. He's heard that ult. Yeah, being picked up makes him aware. And I think that this is going to give a ton of info and mean Sadak's under a massive pressure. Good nade. Does split up the rest of DRX, so RB pretty far ahead, but buying a time and well, Buzz. Oh, my goodness! Almost getting punished for that one. Oh, that's... Trigger discipline was there. After shock stun into the corner. Got to be backing out. Damage is definitely being done here. Molly at the feet. It's a great molly. Yeah, no one can push past this one, but Mako is taking a couple of stray shots, and damage is definitely being done still. Disrespecting it, moving forwards, flash play, dodging, duking, side to side. The guns are good just to make it a little bit more dangerous there, but two years. Doesn't quite pick up any of these weapons. This guy is currently making the most of his classic. Getting head after head. Arby puts an end to it, though. Clean follow-up from DRX. And you can see how their composition is designed to work. It slowly prods around the map, gathering information about where Loud are, 
And if Loud decide to go for anything aggressive, they can instantly pivot in a different direction. Because the speed of that solo Neon is just as quick, if not quicker, than running the double duelist Jet Rays comp. Both teams are going to be able to turn up, swivel whenever they like. Stax is building up to his ult again as well. It's a game plan that they have in almost every map. Just get Stax the ults. Vital now, though, that Loud oh. up winning this one. Stun at the feet. Wow! Okay, RB. Doesn't even pick up the weapon. Instead, it's left down to Kawazine. Buzz still. He's worked his way into their spawn, and this is really just sowing that kind of chaos. The Discord within the enemy ranks, and Loud silenced. And I love this decision. Great pivot. Deciding to go all the way over to B. Cowan Zine has been a danger on this map before. You do not want to give him a chance at the 1v2. t are going to be so happy with this situation. The bonus round for them. They picked up a couple of rifles, and now it's flipped entirely. Kawazin, everything on him, seeing what he can do. Saw the turret being set up, though, so he's got to know. The buzz is positioned there. That's a little bit awkward, though. Eventually getting that turret down and waits it out, but it's cross crossfire set up. Look at this reposition. It's all on timing. That's what it all comes down to. He knows that Buzz is somewhere in his spawn. Yep. But that doesn't make it any easier to deal with. So just trying to clear it out. Horn across. Lovely flick of the wrist. Three in the round. But a tap on the spike. And this is ice wow. cold from Zest. He doesn't overpeak it. Getting back on. The wider swing is impeccable. And Zest. That's a shutdown. That really is ice cold, though, Brent. Not even thinking for a moment that Cowanzee could it? be sticking it. Yeah. That is impressive stuff. Insane. And this round got really chaotic, but I think it showed a couple of things that DRX are willing to push spawn if they need to, and that RB's still got it on the Neon. I was a bit worried when he slid into, I think it was two E's to begin with, but his reposition after the stun was perfect. And that horn is just immaculate. Reveals Aspas, pushes him back. Another stun as well. Lands its way across. Sees close. Zest will fall. You can't let this get any more out of hand if you are DRX. You've been handed a great opportunity to secure that 10th round. Plant, though, going down. Wall in their faces. Abby doesn't even seem to be aware of it. Two players waiting for him, and he's put that ult online. Exchange one for another, back and forth. Aftershock as well in tower. Moves forwards though, Mako. With his ult. Trying to get out of there, and yeah, he's got it online. He can buy the time for it, but they've handed over the rifle still. Sadek and two years, they don't have them. Running backwards, tap at a spike. Over the strike just to make sure that nobody is on it, and Mako so damn diligent. That's watched for. Sadak taps it, spam into the smoke. Not offered an easy angle, not offered an easy kill. Beautiful play by Marco. Four in the round. Showcasing there why people have him, myself included, as the best smokes player in the world. 16 and 8 on the map, and finding so many moments to have impact. All of the util beautiful as well. Don't know if you caught him, a little stim beacon play to be able to get both of those kills. Crazy stuff. Always sets himself up to be favored. Great player, and now the, now the pressure really is on Loud. Notable, too, that Aspas, after having a greatest of all time potential performance across the first three maps in a BO5, map four comes around, and suddenly he's not quite able to have the value that he was showcasing earlier. It's Six slipped. and 14. It has slipped. Forcing out that final timeout now for Loud. Yeah, you can feel it. They really did just glide their way through those first two maps in this. But listen, this part of the tournament lock in. It's not just that pressure and heat rising, but it just gets that much more difficult. Best of fives from here on out. Your map pool really getting pushed. And not only that, just the mental game. Can you hold on? Can you close out a series in this fashion? Aspas picks up the operator. It's a great tool to have if you're not facing the tip of the spear from DRX. He'll be able to find people that are playing slowly on the opposite side of the map, but if he comes up against the relay bolts, the, the stun from Stax, 
he just can't hold on. No. And I think he's picked incorrectly again. He was oh. forced out of position last time when he was defending B. It feels uncertain. I just don't think he's going to get an opportunity. Look at the utility. Yeah, that recon ball is immaculate. Pushes him back, stunned up. Inside it! Oh. Oh. Clearly, I underestimated Aspas. One way to shut it down, but goodness gracious me. DRX not letting anything get unsaid and undone. An immediate take there of Halls. Two kills for Mako. He has been the difference maker. Two years almost set up there for a bit of a collateral play. Two for the price of one, but no, traded. So it's a 3v2, and Aspas forced to retake with the op in a forward position. Lockdown's there, though. This time, nothing to break it. Uh. Out wide. There is a gap at the back of the site where players are not going to be caught by that lockdown, but the pressure's on less. He has to take this timing, but Util out in his hands and just so unaware. Doesn't think there could be anybody back site despite his lockdown leaving that little gap. Only assuming that there was one. Wow. Ridiculous way to open the round. But in the midst of all of this, <laughs> it wasn't really a heavy commitment. You can see here that that entire play was to bait this kind of reaction. RB is sent in as a distraction, while the rest of the team just holds for the flank. DRX are one step ahead, and they look right back where they were at the top of the world on Fracture. This team with their fast play and Na'Vi with their slow play, both looking insane. <gasps> Horde spotting! No bailout. Nana Swarm Stone, that's an adjustment. This time placing it at that connector, making sure that Arby can't get away with it. Another fast flank coming up behind Mako. But will Mako contain? It's all on that. And he's favored. He's normally so good. Rifle nade though, the wild's gonna push him away. Yeah, okay, Buzz. Yeah. A buzz just comes to help. Yeah, straight from tunnel. It was a half by yeah. round from Loud, so they are kind of playing to get to OT, but it's going to take them six rounds in a row to get there. And that's DRX finding themselves on map point. We put it up in the air, didn't we? The question, could DRX do it? Could they do it again? Bringing a top contender to that fifth and final map, could they get that reverse sweep started? Listen. One round is what separates them from going to that map number five, so still anyone's game, but it's a DRX that's been tested. They've been prodded and made angry, honestly. An amazing answer, Mark. And once more, map three, map four, Mako is unreal. Every spot on this map, Mako owns it. Just always seems to be the playmaker. And even when not as well, containing safe hands from him to be able to finalize, close out rounds without too much danger. Another great timing here from DRX, who have all the ults in the world to play with. Clearing dish. Do they commit to this? It could be a fake from RB. It could be real. They have their pick of the litter. Controlling so much of the map. And now loud prod back towards halls. They don't want to overstep themselves, though, because that's where Marco is. Feeding yourself into the Sharks more, well, they know exactly what that feels like. Aspas with the knives, that's what they're worried about. Blade Storm, Nightfall. Scatters, lays waste. I don't think it tags onto anybody. Still, the Sun will catch onto this target. Aspas disrespects it. Stands his ground, eventually dashes back, but it is just going to be that one for one play. Two years fall, still. Reflank attempt, Mako close. Stuns there, wants the refi positioning. Revealed beautiful by Kawazin. Down to Zest. And cannot withstand that. Not when the blade storms in his face. Finally, the flank finds value. A nice work from Aspas playing around it too. I was amazed at how accurate the relay bolt is. I I'm just in awe whenever I watch RB play Neon. But it's this play that really wins things for them, right? Being able to evade the utility and also, Stax and Mako not really fighting together in the way that we've seen them before. Five rounds in a row now, still required for Loud. Can they do it? At some point here, surely the ultimate economy is just going to become overwhelming for DRX. Loud not only need to win rounds, but they need to win them and draw out ults from DRX at the same time. Looks like a heavy fight. What are they waiting for? Fault line, push them back. RB taking all that space right past the boom bot. Glides through. 
That's our one for one. So contained, Kawazin will get that trade. It takes some of the punch, some of the sting out from DRX's exec. The wall, for example. Mako might have to save his smokes just to do that. And the spike makes the intrepid trip over the pit as the rest of DRX regroup around the bottom side. So this, to me, looks like they're going to try and go through sand. It doesn't require as many, you know, smokes, angles being cut off. You don't have to be as, ex as explosive. And Lauda gambling on the other side. That's where they've got the heavy presence. Kawazin just playing with that retake. Does have his rolling thunder, though. That can disrupt this plant. Call made by DRX to just contact. Smokes drop down, though. That's going to signal it. Fault line. Brilliant waiting, held. There we go, it's an orbital strike into the fault line, and... Oh, two kills! But an instant response. Buzz realizes he has a free lockdown and puts it around. This was the mind game that was happening in the first half. A different option being chosen for two E's. Still so hard for them, isn't it? Mako, looks like he's playing a post-plant lineup there. Yep, Molly's going to be coming over. And he has the ult, too. The onus is on Buzz to buy time here. He has to be the difference maker. One kill found. Second found. Two years with the trade. And the orbit strike held. Molly's good for it. Mako holding, listening, waiting for that sound cue. And he knows it precisely right in his head. And there you have it. Silence sweeps across the stadium. And Mako will not be denied that fifth map. Immaculate play. Unbelievable, the layers of the postman utility to be able to win that in a 2v4. Buzz and Mako combining together the top of the scoreboard as DRX walk off, and that is a confident swagger to their step. And take a look at this. Even if 2E's got onto it, there was no chance. Checkmated from the very beginning. Impeccable stuff. And DRX do the same to Loud as they did to Optic in the lower bracket finals of champs. They put themselves in a position where they might be able to pull off the first ever reverse sweep in a BO5 in Valorant. Would be just astounding. That's that veteran presence, this roster of DRX, they've been through it all. To be able to really just keep the mental in check as well. They push loud, in particular as well, like a lot of these rookie players into such uncomfortable territory. And the desk was wishing for it, we will be heading to that map number five.
어, 일단 사실 4강 진출한 거는 기분이 안 좋을 수가 없기 때문에 일단 또 작년 챔피언스에 이어서 그래도 저희가 세계권 팀이라는 걸 증명한 것 같아서 기분이 좋습니다. 상대가 잘하는 것도 컸던 것 같아요. 일단은 생각했던 것보다 팀 플레이적으로도 되게 잘하는 것 같아서 놀랐고요. 그리고 상대 제트였던 가네스 선수가 저는 처음 대회에서 만나는데 되게 개인 기량도 좋은 것 같아가지고 놀랐습니다. 남은 시간이 꽤 있는 만큼 되게 성장한 모습으로 브라질 팬분들에게 보여드릴 수 있을 것 같습니다. 보답할 수 있도록 열심히 연습해가지고 꼭 좋은 성적 낼 테니까 앞으로도 응원해 주셨으면 감사하겠습니다. Alpaier 선수를 응원하는 응원 소리를 들었었는데 이번 라우드도 그런 비슷한 느낌으로 이제 한쪽 응원이 크다 보니까 사실 그랬던 경기에서 승리한 경험이 있어서 뭐 그거에 크게 개의치는 않을 것 같고요 지금이랑 되게 다른 모습으로 3월 달에는 대회하는 모습을 보실 수 있을 것 같습니다 남은 시간 동안 저희의 저희의 플레이도 다듬어 가면서 아무래도 라우드의 플레이에 대한 저격도 어느 정도 할것 같고요. 그 팬분들이 이제 응원을 줄일 수 있도록 저희가 이겨보겠습니다. 웰컴 백 투 발렌트 록인 웨어 there is no question that this DRX squad is a world class team as s says but here they're trying to prove that they are the world's best team. As well, no stranger in playing against the sixth man of the crowd, Achilles. They're starting to light this stage up. Yeah, they really are. The run back that we saw there, the dominance from them over on Fracture, that is what we wanted to see. We were begging for that Neon Comp to make its return, and it absolutely did. For the side of Loud, it was rearing its ugly head because, again, it's a 13-7 loss. Yeah, and in that in interview, he said that we're going to go, we're going to take this time, we're going to prep some new things, and we are going to prep against Loud. And I think we saw that here. DRX go back to this Neon Comp that previously had been kind of back and forth with them. They had good moments, they had bad moments, but here it looked very well coordinated. RB was popular and off as an individual on this Neon, and the game plan worked. Yeah, I think they did a really good job of helping RB too, right? A Neon's job on Fracture is, is to go take space and die, right? But they did so well at, at supporting him and yeah. putting him in positions where he could win 1v1s, and RB did that. Yeah, it was a stronger performance compared to what we saw from him versus Optic. Granted, you know, and they dropped an additional round there in that lower final. Still similar scoreline. So RB, it just kind of goes to show that playing this Neon, he's able to just continue to fulfill his role incredibly well. And I think from the defensive side of Loud, it looked like they expected this to just be lots of fast executes, as we've seen in the past with this composition. Right. But here they had a lot more rounds where they were slowing things down, playing the mid round, using that Neon as a rotator more than just full on sending in these executes. And the post ones were so good that Loud never was able to get a grasp on their defensive half. And I love the call that Arby's job was simply to take space, right? But then you go ahead and you turn your attention to Mako, who's holding the space, controlling the space brilliantly in this map. I mean, the, the big question is here, Doug, has this swayed your opinion from earlier? Is he now the best? Ah, I didn't say yes. Mako was bad. Call back. Call back. <laughs> I mean, he played exceptionally well. Mako was out of his mind. Buzz was out of his mind, too. And I mean, Sax maybe doesn't highlight the, the scoreboard as much, but I really can't stress the importance of how well all of those pieces came together, right? They look so good. Yeah, and the thing is now, this puts DRX so close to making history. With that map win, they've pushed us to map five, and they have a chance to be the first team to ever complete a reverse sweep, a reverse sweep at an international VCT event in one of these best of fives. Well, and the fun thing is, it, it seems like DRX uh, event after event create history, right? You think about their last event, yeah. best placing ever. This time they've met it, and they have the potential to do more, not just in their best performance ever, uh, their best placing ever, excuse me, but as you were saying, the first ever reverse sweep in Valorant history. You're writing textbooks out here. Yeah, Achilles, they brought themselves to the precipice, but that means yeah. they still have one more map that they have to carry through this kind of momentum. We go to Ascent as our decider. Give me your thoughts. I mean, previously, this wouldn't be one that I would be too perturbed about, but given that they dropped this map earlier in the tournament to the likes of BBL, who in their own right, still a very strong team, now they're getting ready to go up against Loud here. It does make for a potentially just 
very tough map for them to try to close things out. You've got Aspas sticking with the Jet. Not a strong pick over on Fractured. Now he's going to ascent. That is Jet stomping ground. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So much more comfortable. I think the fun thing about this map, you think about it across the series, of course it ends on ascent, where both of these teams have historically been very good. This is good against good here. Yeah, we dive into the Prime Gaming Agent Select to see what these teams will rest all of their hopes and dreams on. Thus far, Loud has not shown this map here at Lock-In, so it's going to be interesting to see what they choose. Do they go back to just that standard comp, the KO, the Silva? No! no. They are cooking something interesting oh here, pulling God. out the Viper on Ascent, and they're starting on the attacking side. What? So I think a lot of this is going to have to come down to using that Viper for the post punch. It's so potent in those situations. Also, very quickly, there's no Hunter Siri to clear out Arby's uh, lockdown, which is so important on this map. Yeah, this is a puzzling one here from the side of Loud, and the question is, have they overcooked this composition? I mean, DRX has changed their comp too. Fade out, Sova in. Both these teams have prepped something new. This is going to be an insane map five. Uh, that makes me so excited for this clash, when both teams are going to get a little bit of a surprise as they load into the map, Doug. Uh, it's, that's it. It's all on the field right now. It's up to these two teams. One map to crown the kings of the Alpha Bracket and decide who moves on to the Grand Finals on Saturday. Brennan Sideshow, take it away. The pressure, the heat, it's all mounting and Dash has set that up beautifully. Listen, between both of these teams looking to try and crown that title as king of the alpha bracket, yeah. but so much to play for, man. DRX hunting for that revenge storyline, and it is that singular final map five that stands between them and that. Uh, an absurd situation. I love that the fact that it's come to five and DRX are on the precipice of pulling off the first ever BO5 reverse sweep in Valorant. We've seen a bunch of these BO5s back and forth the entire way. And what a crazy composition for Loud to pull out in the final moments here to keep themselves alive and head into, again, this would be their third grand final in the last three, uh, in the last 12 months, which is absurd with two different rosters. And I mean, you can already see that these are two different rosters. Yeah. They're playing weird compositions. They're not picking the same maps. Loud used to be absolutely the best team in the world on Ascent with their old roster. Timing with the knife wall gives them a bit of a gap to play around, but it goes down and, well, Buzz aware of it now. The space was taken. And how do you push back this onslaught? Buzz inside the cloud. Buzz! Well, that's must try them. You know, match him pound for pound, take the fight right to him, flash over the top. Stax is bailing out his team. And it's Loud who are crumbling. The gamble being played with the composition. Push to the limits in map five. It all began with a pistol round and it ends in a whimper for Loud. Wow. DRX pick up another pistol. And after Loud got the first four in a row, the the momentum in this series has been showcased by the pistol round wins that we've Absolutely. seen DRX get on the board. It's not just the gun rounds where they're getting favored. They're also starting out each of the maps more favorably. I think also, the desk mentioned it, but DRX have undergone a team compositional shift too. They've been playing triple initiator pretty much since they formed that composition, since they invented it in May of last year. And now they're back to just playing the standard stuff. This is the most meta comp you could possibly come up with on this map. Oh, the paranoia is good. Got to be careful of the counter attack, though. Spam from Aspas was decent enough to drop Mako down to 32 health. No kill claim, though. Drone dodge for now. And a bit of a battle happening in B main, actually. As these two Killjoys try to use the Viper wall against each other. So that's something to keep your eye on later on. Yeah, control of that B main going to be so important with the way so far it's being played. Just cutting up the side in that manner. It's an unusual composition, unorthodox from Loud. And yeah. moments like this, Josh, listen, map five, you get pushed to your limits. You've got untested players newly added to your team. It's moments like this where sometimes that gambit just crumbles beneath you. Whew. Kawanzin's been on the big stage before, but never in a moment like this. And Tui's pretty much brand new to it. As Aspas was, as Les was, the year prior. Yeah. And pressure formed those players into absolute diamonds. They had the whole year to get up to that point for 2022. Yeah. This is a different tale. First major event of this 2023 VCT season, and it comes down to this. We could buy pistols, cannot withstand it. Mako denied the ace, but the matter's not. Listen, spread 
the old orbs. Make sure that you start building up those ultimates onto everybody else. And one of the big ways that Loud won on Ascent in the past with their former squad was by absolutely dominating the defense sides and then going for very simple executes on attack. This looks different, right? They're going to be more complex just based on the composition that's being played. And it doesn't look as defense-sided to me, the comp. Maybe it will play out like that. We'll just have to wait and see. Very much unmarked territory here. The DRX on a bonus buy. Spectres across the board as Loud take a main. Mako TP'd into Wine. Angles watched for. He was here before. Yep. He's doing the same play twice in a row. Paranoia. Being held off angle play. Aspas contacting. Knows he's there. No way does Mako get away with that. Paranoia. TP smoked across. Sadak making the most of it. Good Running punish. and gunning. And Sadak investing the same Viper Wall in all of these rounds. You can see the response that it's had from Zest. He's, he's trying to get information over there. Everybody from Loud, though, grouped up, ready to go for an A-site hit. But without the jet, how do they actually get in? How do they get in? Does Tuiz go for some kind of TP play? Turret destroyed. Dog going to be used. Trailblazer trying to carve that path. Fragmentade is good for it. Knife as well. No abilities. Time being bled off the clock. 40 seconds. What is the play to be made? Well, rifles in their hands. Nice dodge of the flash. The call is made to just barrel through and take the space. Brute force. The gun really making the difference there in terms of those duels. I think the DRX players would have been good for a couple had they had rifles in their hands. But that's the way that this round three plays out. Shots out, landing there, but okay, crosshair placement slightly off. Dashing into the cloud burst. The rifle spam enough. Loud well, too well there. Yeah, another thing that Loud are doing fantastically is that when there isn't a smoke in A main, they're holding angles and slowly walking into the site. And that's actually something the old squad did fantastically too. Making sure that they post many players up as they scale into A means that you have players naturally anti-flash from door, players holding heaven, and you don't get caught out by the anchors swinging. Certainly a glimmer there of Old Loud on the A hit. Mako fakes the teleport into Wine this time. That's that conditioning. If anybody's close, they want him to think that he's there. This dart tagging up Kawazin. Actually broken, drone. Zest now clearing some space into mid, another tag. Kawazin, you gotta respect that one, so leaps away. And what a smart turret position here, actually, from RB. It's going to be able to get a bit of information behind the Viper Wall and towards mid. So it lets them stack three players from the defense on the A side. They don't have to be worried about the Viper. Making the most of this one, though. Smoke drop down and the Fragment nade. They thought there was going to be a bit more oomph behind that push. Loud happy to wait it out. Setting themselves up now for a bit of potential attempt here at the split. Sadak just holding this space, dodging, juking. Smoke drop down at the feet of Buzz. Has to respect it now with a snake bite there. Moving forwards, Trailblazer, dash forwards though. Aspas is the man to watch here. Gain positioning into Jenny, and he opens it up. What is the response? Any sort of answer? The answer is no. These eight sight hits are still looking immaculate. It's the same strength that the former Loud squad had, but the way that they hold for each other, getting into the site is perfect. Could still get dangerous, though. The 2v3, door broken. Enough done. Dart now online. Goes across, and he... Ah! What? What, what, is, what is, is this tech? That? I don't even know if they revealed, but it's left it down to the 1v1. Zest drops down. Silence enters the arena, and Kawazin claims the kill. With bated breath, the audience watch. But this time, no disappointment. Great 1v1 to win for Kawazin. One of those rookie players, like you said, Bren, stepping up. What was the... Oh, no that is way. absurd. I thought there was something weird happening with the recon dart. I mean, the recon does look really interesting. Seems like it would clear quite a lot of the site. But that is just all intuition from Zest. Nevertheless, a round on the board from Loud. And 
demonstrating really good performances from their newer players in terms of the teamwork and the clutch ability. DRX's attack side really let them down earlier on in this tournament. It was with a different composition, but they lost to BBL. That's not the kind of team that DRX should really be losing a cent to based on their prior record. But they just couldn't get a, an attack round going. And that means, oh, DRX, the pressure is on this half. Yep. Definitely is. But with the weapon difference here, it should be easy pickings. Indeed, it is. Wider swing of stacks. Uproar from the crowd. Silence for about a moment. And so, the round that was necessary, or at least should have been going Loud's way, they do get it. And now Loud start to build up to some big ults too. Timeout yeah. forced. Yeah, DRX take a timeout here. Looking to adjust. And I think at this point in the game, if DRX have looked at any of Sadak's VODs, and I say Sadak specifically because this roster doesn't have Ascent VODs, <laughs> right? But if you look at the old roster and how Sadak calls on this map, there's a huge amount of explore the map, end in an A exec. Take A main early, 4-1 split into A. They love it. Huge amounts of that. And That's then they get, they get like four or five rounds on their attack side and win almost everything on the defense. This roster is going to play differently. But so far, Sadak's calling on the attack side is quite similar. And so this timeout might be useful for DRX to make some necessary adjustments. And I think one of the big adjustments is from Mako, A main has got to be smoked off all the time. None of this playing aggressive in A, the one way is not even really that useful because you can't stop Loud from taking A. And if he uses smokes early in the round, they're not going to be there when Loud tries to hit into the site. And that means Loud are going to be able to set up many people. Two, three people with guns holding angles as they get into A. A lot of parity between these two teams. And will DRX have the answer to bring us even? Timeout was taken just for this. Buzz has that operator. Could be part of it. Close knife, dart over the top. Very passive from Loud. I think they're scared of a potential tiles push, but look at this drone now. Buzz happy to take the aggressive angle. No! Way! The spray control! So good from Les. That's the third or fourth bullet that connects with the head of Buzz. And a call is made as the Viper War goes up. Guys, let's take some of this space back. Great opening pick. Moving their way across. Smoke dropped down at their feet, though. He's going to be putting a stop to this, but still, the Viper War lets them get in. Updraft, up and around, stacks. Will he be the difference maker? TP into the back of the site. Reinforcements have arrived in the form of Mako being there, but... They're leaving. They're leaving. It's a cancel. And this now puts everything in the hands of RB. He's the sole player on A. Looked like he wanted to cut them off a catwalk, but instead just playing around his nano swarms. No smoke on the site to play around. Where's that from Mako? The entire team is just funneled right now from Loud all the way into the site straight through. Paranoia. RB not caught by it. Off to the side. Spray the right click misses. Lustbuster's not come up with the goods. Viper's Pit, though, might do some damage to it. Stun court. This should be a kill, surely. Pushing forwards. So much damage, though. Yep, Kawazin not going out unscathed. Dart. Possibly a bounce there into hell. Broken. See Zest is hunting for it. Wow. Aware of that. Less being caught with just a bit of a punish play, but no, no attempt. Nobody else looking like they want to go for the retake. Kawanzin on one HP, a 3v3, and DRX save. They don't want any piece of that Viper's Pit. Smart play to make. Money situation, you've got to hand on to your rifles if you are DRX. Keep a grip onto them. Despite that damage done, just wasn't really looking likely when the Viper's Pit was dropped down. One of the advantages of the weird, quirky comp that Loud are playing here in map five. And honestly, they're not even playing that strangely. They still have a lot of stuff that they're doing that you see every team do on a set. But there's enough extra elements that it's throwing DRX off a little bit. And they're still playing the fundamentals really, really well. 
And Buzz does not expect to lose his head that quickly after a recon dart and the drone are expended to set him up with the operator. And yet he still died first. Same main control. Just that snake bite that <laughs> just had so much difficulty if TRX even try and disrespect it. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying you just have to give loud A main every time. And that's why I think Mako just needs to keep A main perma smoked. Jumping from RB, spots three heads. Smoke laid down and a nano swarm pop, so. Pushes them back for now. And this cancels the hit into A. And oh. now maybe Les. Oh, they're going for the re hit perhaps. Les has a lockdown. They could fake like they're going somewhere else on the map. Maybe even alt in mid and clear tree. They could do something really unusual here. It's the Viper War going up. Obfuscates where they might be going. And that's watched for Les. He could have been that extra element. The backstab into this one. Now let's look at these anchoring players, RB. It's a deafening across onto the site as every single player of Loud will fall. RB with three, prime gaming flawless. The weapons still in their hands. The bank can start to get built. Very nice play. Look at Buzz here. Finds the player in mid, immediately recognizes it's an A hit, and he's there to help. Double facing. Allows RB to get into a sneaky spot because they're worried about Mako and Buzz. And they shut that down. How many rounds, though, do they really need on defense? Uh, I can't say, because I have no idea of whether Loud's composition is going to trend attack or defense sided. Buzz creeps into an advanced position here. Push deep. He's got the backup of Zest. Flash over the top and a recon. Broken, though, doesn't reveal anything. Yeah, that's a lockdown used. Looks like trying to fake into that A pivot. Forces out the Hunter's Fury. Is it too high? It looks like it's directly on target, so remove four. And Buzz, it's watched for. Really diligent from Kawazin. Easy collection there. But now you have to get through Mako. An absolute rock, the foundation of the team in the last two maps. Trailblaze is good, though. Stunned up, I believe, onto Mako. What does he want to do? Still holding on to the paranoia, smoked off. Now using the Seekers to try and push their way through. Heaven still being held, and they cancel out that ult. Reclear. Less. oh my goodness. It's getting tenuous. Less really wants to get into an advanced position here so he can fight the lockdown. And, and he finds the right angle. Picks off Zest. Does RB even choose to go for it? 3v5 and DRX is saving again. Backing away. They have money to buy. They could have gone for it if they wanted to, but I'm surprised. It's at a some point, play. At some point here, you're giving up too many rounds. And remember that their defense side was good, even in the even in the game on ascent where they lost. They were still getting value on defense. This is very different. It feels like DRX are struggling to get a grip in terms of how allowed approaching the map. The Viper Wall is doing a great job, I think, of hiding a lot of this. And Loud are going to go hunting for these weapons. Most of the time, I do feel, though, that DRX are getting good information behind the Viper Wall. I don't think it's threatening too much. What's really going wrong for them is that they can't stop the A splits. They run out of utility. And maybe part of that, Brian, is that Stax oh. is getting pulled away from A. Right, he feels like he's forced to play B, forced to use his zero point there for info. Yeah. So maybe that's some kind of like passive value that the Viper setup is getting. When you watch, for example, Leviathan play this map, Stax is always, or at least, sorry, King is almost always gonna be over towards A, where he can use that fragment grenade over a catwalk, stop a hit from coming through. It's a little more difficult when you play sat back in the site. And your player over a tree just gets smoked off. Yeah. Second timeout used for DRX in the first half here. Bit of an indicator maybe that they're starting to feel it. The gravity, the weight, and expectations. Do they fall? Do they crumble again like they did? The champions bringing it all the way. Making that reverse sweep a possibility, but just faltering at the final step. Or is this going to be... A different chapter, history being rewritten. 
and both of the semi-finals that we have in this tournament are the same story. One team hunting to be the first team ever to lift two trophies. The other team wanting that long-awaited chance at glory. DRX in the same vein as Fnatic. So many times they've been close. And it feels like this. They've surely never been closer. Viper Orb in mid is so good. Pushing back any deep pressure. Drones there! Wow, Kawazin! Watches it. Buzz as the first death yet again. He just can't find value against this. Loud know exactly where he's going to be. And that is massive value coming out from the Viper Orb, right? It can, it can stay up for so long. He doesn't feel comfortable pushing through it necessarily because you take so much damage. Very difficult for Buzz to play around this when Loud is so slow and diligent at the beginnings. Trailblazer, Nano Swarm up close, cancels it actually. Nice. Pretty nice play indeed. Snake bite into the back. Lockdown gonna be used, ah, but he just can't quite evacuate Zesto, weaving in and out. He does get one for his efforts, but eventually dealt with, and there's a lockdown, making sure you get a little bit too dicey still. It's a nice zero point, clearing out B main. I think Stax and Mako should have a decent idea that everybody's on site or playing a very deep position. But at some point here, you just gotta you just gotta go for it. Yeah. 2v3, this one is not the round to save. Or players on the side, flash, rebound up top, paranoia as well, player close, crossfire is good! In fact, it's excellent! What a retake from DRX! That bounce flash combined with the paranoia is everything! Oh my word, these guys have been drilling their utility combos. Woo! That is good. And they knew exactly how to play in that moment. I mean, Beautiful it is, stuff. It is the, a lifeline for DRX to hold on to. One enemy. Because otherwise, this map has been getting ripped out of their hands. But the retake looks nice there. Perhaps, perhaps playing retake B and stacking players more towards A would be the solution here. But coming out of the timeout, we still just ended up in a fairly even situation. Stacks drifting over to A, uses the Fragment Grenade early though to try and establish a main presence. Very early. But surely they can't hold on to this. It's just to get Buzz set oh, up boy. with the Operator. I mean, surely he doesn't get away with this. So oh, contact peak, dash, disengaged. Snake bite at his feet, vulnerable, but just one more tick of damage might have done it. Paranoia used as well, though. And Mako forced to smoke up. Pushes it back, spam down onto the Trailblazer. Sadak, you're lucky. He does survive in the midst of all of this, unless is that backstab. Extra layer as he puts that pressure down. There was a no command popped off, though. And so let's see if they can get a resurrection there onto Stack. Smoked off. Mako wants to take the risk while the rotation is happening. There was no punish. And this looks like it's going to be another A split. Mako has used one of his smokes here on Catwalk. So, Sanak's going to have an opportunity to support the rest of his team. Mako's just got to go huge. I mean, And this smoke, it's not going to last forever. Smoke's going to fade away in but a moment. Stacks jump peeking, just in case they pushed. Kill found. Does not claim the second, the trade online for two years, but Buzz still. Back at the site, knows that they're going to be coming, and misses the shot. Unconventional, Sanak returns, snap though, wrist. Locked on, and players are weak the time the pressure is mounting. Just down to less. Afforded an easy plant. Shock darts going wide, maybe. Bit of a blunder there by Zest. Pop flash play, though, fully blinded, and Stax not willing to give any opportunity. What a round from Stax, bailing his team out after Buzz missed a pretty critical kill. The Arax are just about holding on here. You can see their macro game is really getting tested. Stax as an IGL is struggling at the moment to find the right answers, but Stax as a player still makes all the right moves, gets himself in position to rely on his gunplay. And, and as Mako buys time, wow, that is nice. And then swinging off the recon dart that Zest throws in. Good stuff. And it draws things level at 5-5. Five, five. <laughs> it's five, still a two, great five. attack half. Yeah. It is. Feels like DRX haven't quite earned enough rounds to bail themselves out just yet. They're still in that danger zone when the sides end up swapping. This time it's Mako. 
with an attempt into mid. Deep push. Different angle. And look at that. Holding for the common dart position just to wow. break fire it. Stacks. Just a cat there, Mako. Backs away. That's crazy. They were going for a mid crunch off Mako's paranoia. And Stax was supposed to be trying to contest them from Cat. He just got blown up. And now Mako's got no utility. Smoke will come back online shortly. But drone force to be used as well. Louder set up for another great A split. No one to offset this one, is it? Trailblazer. Haspas not making any noise, but the alarm bot. Now is going to be notifying them. DRX are aware there was a player pushed up behind that one. Looks like Lado trying to fake, like it could have been just a bit of presence. Dash still online. Turret broken. It's now going to be the time to strike. Angle blocked off. Cloudburst going to be fading, though, and a re-smoke as well so that they can cross. And Mako, will he be the player to watch? Will he be the difference maker? Stay fine! Oh, my God! And he holds it down in the smoke. Pressure at his back. Less will respond in kind. RB, wide swing. The play is contained. The Loud. spike. The spike is on the other side of the door. No way. They've got to go and break it. Have to break it, and they have retrieved it. What can Buzz do? Rifle drops down. Stops the blood. Can't claim the kill. Despite those heroics from Marco, loud answer back. He's just one man. What more can he do? Three kills inside his smoke. Should have shut the round down, but a response perfect from Les from Tui's. Look at the timing there. That reswing just as the door's coming down. It's great, and there's the frustration. Rippling through every part, every bone in their body. Can DRX make it 6-6? Six, six? Give us a half with the same level of parity as Fracture and give themselves a chance heading in. At the moment, it feels like everything is with Loud. They managed to recover. Thrown slightly off with their footing. At least in map three, map four. Thrown from Zest. Spots a lot of players. Now to Killjoy. Lockdown. There's nothing to offset this one. There's no Hunter's Fury. Zest looks like he's trying to break it with Shock Dance. He might get punished here. He's trying to evacuate out. And it didn't break that lockdown, still doesn't get detained. Has to be the full retake. Is that going to be planting? Oh, no, not quite, actually. Potential misplay. They could have had the Vipers pit online. Instead, DRX, not wasting any time. Moving forward, B main. Watch for a little bit too late. Buzz doesn't recognize the threat that was coming his way in two years. A very smart reposition. Has to be the committal. Flash. Push them back, Sadak. Lines it up. Tumbling, falling, this way, that way. It's loud on top. Marco, unable to stand up to it. The crowd can feel it, and I'm sure the players can too. Loud have set themselves up in a winning position to head forwards into the grand finals. One half remains for them to seal the deal, or for DRX to answer back. Bit of disrespect there towards the end as well, as Cowanzine lands the final kill with a shorty of all things. They knew that he was low, and still, well, send it down. To Yinsu on the floor, who's got another special guest. Thank you very much, Saisho and Brand. They're all special guests, and I'm joined right now by John. Uh, welcome. I know you're an IRL streamer, and this is your first ever time at a Valorant event. So, what's it been like? Uh, have you been having fun? Yeah, I've been having fun. It's an amazing time, amazing energy out here in Brazil. Like, fans are going crazy, you know, everybody here rooting for loud. But, dang, it's wild what, what, what they made here, the craziness, all the people coming up. I like it. Is this what you expected? Because I know, you know, you, you didn't really know what to expect from a specific Valorant esports event, but what do you make of it? I know Brazil is huge on FPS games, so for sure I knew it was going to be packed. And if Loud makes it to the final, it's going to be even crazier. Yeah, I mean, you were also speaking to me before we went live that uh, it's really special for Brazilian fans because esports out here, it means something different to them. So would you be able to tell me about yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, there's a bit, huge meme on the internet. It's like, come to Brazil, come to Brazil, come to Brazil. <laughs> yeah. They throw it everywhere. And it's literally like, hey, 
we love the sport, we love the music, we love things from around the world, and we want some love as well, you know? Give us, give us your energy, we're gonna give you energy back, and it's gonna be something wild. I think you guys are gonna like it, you're gonna rock it. And it, you can see everybody's rocking it. Uh, you're wearing a loud jersey, and uh, they're struggling a little bit in the last two maps, so uh, channel your energy to them. What are you gonna say to them? Man, they've got this. They've got they, this? They've gotta make it twice, you know? Bring, bring, bring it home and they're in their house, you know? It's their home city. It's the script is written. Back yeah. to back champs? Back to back, back oh. to back, let's go. Okay, well, John believes in them. I'm not sure what's gonna happen in the second half, but uh, Brandon Saisho, I'm gonna throw this back to you because I can't wait to find out. There is that pressure building. Feels like it's pushing loud forwards to deny that reverse sweep, to make it inaccessible for DRX, to make them repeat history once more. And insane that if they win this half, if they close out this map, that they would have gone to three grand finals in the last 12 months. And I mean, look at this. Loud have only lost 49 rounds on the defensive side of Ascent across 20 maps played all time. They do not lose. The former roster, that is, they did not lose on Ascent defense. Is the same going to be true of this squad? Fast push out for Aspas who's struggling at the moment to be able to generate kills, but its team's got his back anyway. I'll be close. Spam play, one way smoke behind him. Where's the swing? Where's the attempt? He just waits it. It's a call to be made. DRX are very fast with this. With that many players, they know that it's going to be an accessible A site. Still that util. Place down, Nana Swarms on the one side of Jenny. Stax is in trouble, and it does offset that plan. Crucial time being bought, loud. 5v5 now on the retake, and they're starting to swarm all the way in. Opening kill found, jumping right clicks, and it's T-Rex who just cannot withstand it. The tempo has been brought to them. Tap of the spike, Viper Roar blocks it. Wow, what is Huge that? Denied, smoke, dissipates. Reset of the aim, RB. He's buying time right now, and he just can't get the kill. 10 out for Mako. Needs another miracle. And a miracle will not be it. Despite making it close, it's Loud who take that pistol. And it does Josh feel like momentum, like history is on their side. Could we be witnessing another tragedy for DRX where they claw things back to a fifth map just to tumble at the final hurdle? It's one thing to defeat your demons and get over the choking problem. It's another thing to go from title contender to trophy lifter. It really is a long way up to the top of the mountain. Maybe DRX just aren't quite there yet. Or perhaps they've got some more to give. Let's take a look. Disrespect, Sean. Sanak's, really punished. Sanak's gonna be controlling this area of the map with those snake bites very often. It's gonna bleed a ton of time off the rounds. You can, of course, go across and over them, as Buzz has just done. But it means you're dropping from a height and not favored in any gunfight that might happen. And looking through the eyes of Aspas here, Brent, he's 4-11 and 11 right now, but it just doesn't matter. I mean, over the last two maps, across Fracture and now Ascent... Oh. Across Fracture and Ascent, he's currently 13-27, and 27, I think it is. But the rest of Loud has stepped up. It is not... Aspas carrying the team anymore, like it felt like on the first three maps. It is now everybody on loud, the game plan working, the team play. The burden and responsibility of carrying the match spread across the shoulders of all the loud players. For some so young as well. They've set themselves up magnificently. Cowan Zine's been on a stage before, but he is an incredibly young guy. So the way that he's been playing in this series, I think is just insane. Bad weaponry though for Loud, on the bonus. DRX have got to stop this one. At the very least, if they have a chance here of pushing some attacking rounds through, they've got to be able to convert when they have an advantage like this. Needs to happen here. The advantage is on their side. It's a round that they should be converting. Dire, dire circumstances. They're unable to grab, grab this one. Aspas pushed away. He was forced to try and receive that heal as well. So he's going to be brought back up to 94 health. The layers of this utility. 
Cloud are just able to really control most areas of the map. Smoke gets dropped, snake bite inside of it. Jiggle Pig now though, regrouping up and well, two years he misses the timing. A flash into middle from Kawanzin. Doesn't see anything. And Louder going for a gamble over towards A, it's correct. Smoke drop, Paranoia, that's ripped its way across. And so, Sadek does have to back away, but he's still alive inside this smoke. Eventually those spammed out. Shots rattled, one after another. Louder making this dangerous. Bulldog now, upgrading a weaponry for Aspas. What can he do? Reset there, just not quite. Can't manage the spray transfer, can't quite wrangle control. So the 1v3. Les would love to make the most of this one. Drop down to six health, beautiful kill. But it's just nigh impossible. We'll try to make it expensive, but he gets brought down. So DRX winning the round that they were supposed to, but my word, was it expensive. Yeah, very expensive. They keep two rifles in it, but have to rebuy armor on one of those players, and everything on the other three. Aspas is going to pick up the operator for this next round as we just take another look at how that A site worked. Aspas with the operator loves to get aggressive, and he's got a great feel for when to take these aggressive timings. You saw it before. The former team that had last Aspas still is the tip of the spear, unbeatable essentially on this half of the map. And a lot of it down to how he plays. Close to the corner. Bit of spam, drone over the top. Aspas still not cleared out of this corner, by the way. But space in mid is going to be gained. Aspas trying to get on the high ground approach. He's missed his chance, though, because guess what? DRX barreling through. No time wasted. Sadhak. Good paranoia. It's ever so slightly delayed, though. It does return the fire, and it returns the kill. Spam. Really good trades by DRX here. They've pushed everybody from Loud out of the site. The question is, can they reposition into good post-plant spots? The emphasis is going to be on Mako, holding down in B main, smoked off now. What kind of timing can he take here? Needs an indicator from his team. Spam just chooses it. Sees the alarm bell drop down, doing some damage. Deeper smoke now, pushing forwards, but it's held. Covers in claims. Paranoia rips its way through, and it's all up to stacks. The labored spray down, dropping down still. Planted, tap of it. What a Notice great smoke. There, 58, health has to do so much. Repositions, back four! Oh! What an insane clutch by Stax! Played around the smoke beautifully and got the lineup of his dreams. Unbelievable. Wow. You are never favored there. But Josh, you made the call as well. I believe that was his smoke, right? At the back of the side that he was playing around here, no. Look likely. Yeah, honestly, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. I miss, I missed it in the moment. Either I think, way, I think it might have been too easy smoke. Looked like it in a replay, but who knows? It doesn't matter. But the way he weaved in and out, it just ended up being perfect for him because he could see every time the tap was a fake. Oh. Not intentional, but that's partly due to the great plant spot that they found. That round should have been finished. Oh my goodness! But this one is gonna get dangerous. A lot of ults here for Loud to convert a 5v4 despite the fact that they have sheriffs. And sometimes the utility can be way more dangerous than a rifle. And Aspas is going to have one of those anyway. Trailblazer was broken though, so he feels like, oh, well, maybe he can't he, quite pick up that rifle. He could smoke this and probably get over to it. Especially if he burnt his dash. I think the question is just whether or not he wants to take the gamble, take the risk. Such. A narrow margin for error, the off angle. Seeker sees it and it obfuscates his view. Can't see a damn thing when those are in his face. He will fall. No one onto the back of the site. Dart's going to be making sure of that one. So the dash engage, get some of that space. Spike needs to get planted, stacks. Even letting rip with his own no command, spreading through them, making sure that there's not going to be any chance of letting this one get out of hand. Mako in his classic position, playing P main. So difficult to root out of that spot, but Kawanzin was looking for it last time. The timing for it is going to be so important. Good smoke. Splits that one up. Buzz was handed an easy angle. Once more, found the head. How are you grabbing that one? 
Turret broken, though. Bit of spam still. Two players left standing and zero at the end of the round here. And so T-Rex are getting the rounds that matter, the rounds that they should be. You want to talk about a round that matters, Bren. This next one coming up. So many ults for both sides. A lockdown available on both sides, including a Hunter's Fury to counter it from Zest. So you're expecting the one from RB generally to be getting more value on the attack side with no counter on the opposite. But crucially, the economy is so close to being broken for Loud. And they're already struggling on this defense half compared to what you'd expect from the former roster. A set up play from DRX. Looking to the sky. You should run. Canceling the approach though, opting for the lockdown. It's gonna move close. Louder not obviously running any of the usual counters that lockdown, so it's gonna be buying them some space, but all the players ready and waiting up there in heaven. Aspas, dash forwards off to the side. Lovely util. Nana Swan pushes him back, but common angle. Flash play! Just trying to survive inside the smoke. Blade whizzes past his head, but they haven't dealt with Aspas. Moving forward, don't we? Stunned up. The dog in his face. Zest has to use his Hunter's Fury now to respond. Take out the lockdown. Will Mako survive? Tries to counter spam, but can't quite do it. And this retake has more than legs. It looks just far too strong. Arby and Zest. Lone players holding down to just Zest. Half under the fuse already. And it's converted. The grand battle between Loud's retakes and DRX's post plants continues. But I think Loud have had the advantage basically for the entire series. Uh, DRX play too many players off site. How are the players supposed to survive here, pushing heaven and in hell, when there are two players in A main that are doing nothing until the very end? Loud's way of getting in and applying full pressure, full aggression, all gas, no breaks, it splits DRX's post plants up into two fights. First, you fight the people on the site, and then you worry about the people afterwards, holding, baiting their teammates. And you can feel it. Former champions of 2022 with a couple of changes. But they've got their eyes set on that prize, that grand finals appearance. DRX and Loud were doing a bit of content together recently, just during the break, during the last 10 days. And DRX had a fun little, you know, Twitter video where they went and stole the trophy. Ha, ah, you know, all funny. Loud responded with, yeah, don't worry, we'll just win another one this year. I mean, the quote. The quality of this squad, by the look of it, they might be aiming for multiple. To really try and set up a dynasty before we get ahead of ourselves here. Tom Buzz, updraft play. Nana Swarm down, less. Oh, it's so awkward, and the knives go wide. Uproar in the arena. And the crowd on their feet, more so to throw it in the face of Buzz but they can feel it, Loud can feel it. Two rounds away from getting to another grand final. There's not much that can prepare you for this. Your DRX might be reliving another nightmare. Full investment with the money, eight to 11. Loud with two opportunities. We'll try and get all the way. It's a good zero point. Suppresses Aspas, but he's still going for the peak. This guy's confidence is unmatched. Dodges the drone. Dog going to be used as well. Up drive, tags him. Has to use the dash. Mako has still fallen, though. Oh. Loud put some pressure into Gelato, and Mako wasn't in a great spot to be able to hold on. He goes down. That seeds the whole half of the map there. What is Kawatine up to? He's He had to readjust his aim. And it's just shambolic for DRX. Left to desperation, contact plays through mid. Seeker's gonna be meeting them pound for pound. The re -peak is there, the damage is done. And Buzz falls to his knees.
Look how Mako goes down there. Loud just applying pressure everywhere on the map. As soon as DRX go towards mid, they push on both sides. And Loud have four chances of going to the grand final. Four chances, and there's never been a better one than this. The money for DRX, it's desperation. If they're able to convert this and at least bring it back, I don't know what to say. It looks primed and ready for Loud to send the uncrowned Kings all the way back to their region. And with how aggressively Loud have been playing, it could all be over in a flash. DRX are in. Flash forward, smokes to drop it, but it's going to be Util used in kind. Still less is alive and waiting at the back of the site. No one dealing with him. Dodging this one, the reposition, RB. He finds it. Maka with another 3v3, but the weapons are still not good. And it's all on the line for Loud. One opening is all it takes. Aspas and RB is just tearing heads off. 2v2, Stacks letting loose, drop to his knees. No command does nothing. And the lockdown broken. Reposition is not there. And Loud have done it. And this Brazilian crowd has absolutely been treated here. To see Loud overcome NRG in multiple overtimes, and then see Loud take down DRX in five maps, putting themselves into a third grand final in the last 12 months with two new players. What can't this squad do? Just unheard of. And now an opportunity as they wade in in a couple of days' time to be the first team ever to lift two trophies in Valorant. And Sadak, the player there at the front, the team captain in IGL, would surely cement his position as the top IGL, the top team leader in the game, if that was to become a reality. This team has achieved so much. The rookies becoming veterans instantly and bringing a new wave of Brazilian talent straight to the top. Feels like this loud squad are paving the way for their own dynasty. A chapter in the history books of Lockin not done yet for them. They've got their eyes on something slightly better. The empty throne that awaits them in that grand finals. One title already under their belt. Why not a second? And this Brazilian crowd, can you imagine? if Loud lift the trophy as defending champions, not just the only team to do it twice, but back to back at that. We've never had an era in Valorant, but this team is making me believe it could be a possibility. There is stiff competition on the other side of the bracket as both newcomers and all-time veterans away. But my God, Loud put on a show today. Looking phenomenal in those first two maps and closing things out with a bang. Showcasing that Ascent, while it looks different, is still home ground, home territory here. What a way to bring that one out. Final map here of this best of five that we've just witnessed. When you really have to dig deep into the strap boat showing signs that you wish you really probably didn't have to to get here. But listen, nevertheless, works out. And on top of that, the Americas region represented in the finals. A possibility that an extra team from there will go to Masters Tokyo. For Pacific, that hope is dead. DRX was carrying the flame for the region and they've been eliminated. It is either Americas or EMEA that are winning this tournament. 
age-old clash that we are being set up for. And what a series this was. DRX really gave it their everything. And they have seriously showcased some heart in this match. But I'm so impressed with Loud. Unbelievable stuff shown in the series, but that's gonna do it for now. We'll see you on the other side of this. What a series that was! Welcome back, guys. I've got Aspas with me in the Verizon Post Match interview, and Arthur is here to do some translation. First of all, Aspas, I got to ask you how you're feeling because I think everyone else in the stadium went through an emotional roller coaster. Everybody was cheering, and then it was a little bit silent, and then it was just stress in the last map. So, what was that like? What was that like for you? Ah, foi muito divertida a partida. Agora eu tô meio cansado. E foi cinco mapas, né? Nos três primeiros ma mapas eu consegui ter um bom desempenho. Já nos últimos dois, uh, hoje eu acordei com um pouquinho de dor no braço. O físico da Laudio Tanaka, ele fez a boa pra mim, só que aí nos últimos dois mapas eu já comecei a sentir de novo a dor. Então, mas o importante é que deu tudo certo, ganhamos, tô muito feliz. E só cansado, tem que dar uma dormida. I'm very happy, like, in the end, it was a really great game. Uh, in the first three maps, I actually could perform very well. In the last two, due to some, like, pain that I had in my arm, I started to feel a little bit, so I was worried it wouldn't go, like, the best performance, but I could actually do it. And in the end, we could get the victory, and I'm very happy about this. Just a little bit tired. <laughs> I don't blame you. I think that was a crazy series. Now, after the first two maps, I think everybody thought this is going to be a 3-0. Why do you think that it went all the way to map five? <laughs> ah, sinceramente, foi bem complicado. Os mapas todos, eu acho que foram bem difíceis. Eles mudaram bastante o estilo de jogo, mudaram comp em vários mapas. E, sinceramente, eles estavam se adaptando muito bem ao nosso estilo de jogo, então foi bem complicado. Like, honestly speaking, it was very complicated. All the maps were actually hard. I can say they were, like, easy. But like they were adapting very well to our game, they changed the composition in many like situations. So in the end, we could adapt to that as well. 
Now you're back to back grand finalists. You know, you've lifted a trophy already. It was in Turkey. Uh, what would it mean to you to be able to lift a trophy here in front of this crowd and in Brazil? Ah, seria algo inesquecível. Levantar mais um troféu ainda mais na frente da torcida brasileira. Seria mais incrível ainda. Então, agora é foco, preparação para o jogo da final contra quem for. Vai ser fanático ou nave. E tô bem ansioso por esse jogo e tomara que dê certo. Uh, it's gonna be like an incredible feeling. I'm pretty sure I won't be able to forget at any time that uh, now it's about for us like just sit down and prepare because we're gonna be playing against either Fnatic or Navi. But in the end, if I have a chance to actually bring this trophy and like in front of the Brazilian crowd, that would be just incredible. And last question, you mentioned Fnatic or Navi, they play tomorrow. Uh, who do you think you're gonna face? And uh, I'm gonna give you this opportunity if you have a message for them because they're definitely watching. Ah, sinceramente, eu não tenho ideia quem vai ganhar. Vai ser um jogo muito difícil. Os dois times são muito fortes. Ah, mas eu acho, se for dizer, eu acho que o Sui e o Shao vão matar muito. O Drake também vai matar muito, mas eu não sei quem vai ganhar. Eu acho que vai ser talvez um 3x2, 3x1. Uh, honestly speaking, I'm not sure who's gonna be winning. Like, it's gonna be a very long, very hard game. So, Getty and Shao, I'm pretty sure they're gonna kill many people, but I can't honestly say, like, who's gonna be the winner. Oh, well, we're gonna find out tomorrow. Thank you very much, Aspas, for joining thank you. me. Have a good sleep. Have a good sleep. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and thank you very much, Arthur, as well. If I were Navi and Fnatic, guys, I would be scared right now. I'm gonna throw this back to the desk to close the day out. I'd be scared too, Yinsu, but loud they today were pushed to the limit all the way to map five here by DRX, but they will not be denied their shot at back-to-back -back titles on international stages and in front of a home crowd, no less. Mimi felt like they just started finding their shots again here on the fifth and final map. I mean, what an incredible way to close it out. The two maps before this, it looks like everything is slipping away from them. It looked like DRX is going to manage to find that reverse sweep and make that history, but it doesn't happen. They come out on ascent with this crazy game plan implementing a Viper, and every one of their individuals comes online in such an insane way. I mean, it was just quite a turnaround from the previous map where DRX was 12-8 uh, to eight in first kills to first deaths. This time around, Loud, 15-6, to six, as you can see there. So right out the gate early, they were finding advantages in manpower, Achilles, and they were carrying it through. No, they really were. I mean, Kalantin was one of the ones who was really helping to just guide them over this finish line. Incredible performance from him. Such a young player to be able to come out here in this map five, about to be potentially reverse swept in front of your home crowd and then still put on that kind of performance and persevere. It was just incredible. It's insane too, because this is such a young team across the board. Four of the players on this team, less than 20 years old, and they handled that pressure perfectly. I cannot imagine the pressure they were feeling knowing what's on the line here. Oh yeah, Doug. we're we're in uh, we're in the Zoomer era, guys. Like let's let's call it what it is. Oh like, no. The the, the Does that mean Zoomer we all need to up. everyone but Mimi needs to exit the desk? Yes. Mimi's okay. the That's only one who fine, can I guess. <laughs> back to back. Right, like yeah. we're talking about history being made, we're talking about an era potentially starting, and I want to very quickly touch on what you were just saying around Kawanzin because that was in the face of their star absent. Yep. Right? Where was Aspas for the last couple of maps? He struggled, he wasn't getting the opening kills he had, had previously been getting, and Kawanzin set up in a ma stepped up in a massive way for his team. Yeah, it was incredible. But not only does this mean that Loud now have the potential to have that back to back, it means that we will guaranteed get a two time champion in some regard, no yeah, matter yeah. which team yep. goes through. You've got Chronicle there, looking to earn his second trophy. You've got the core of Navi, and now this core of Loud. So no matter what, we're going to be seeing somebody walking away with two trophies basically under their belt. It's a good yeah. point. We're guaranteed to have history made here on this stage come Saturday, but I want to talk a little bit more about some of the big moments in this series. You mentioned how when Aspas didn't find the answers late in the series, it was other players on Loud who stepped up. But I do have to tip my cap to Aspas for our Hyper X yeah. reflex moment of the match. It came on Fracture. They might lose the match, but this op shot. Dude, we lost our we lost uh, our minds when that happened. I don't even. I still. I mean, how does that? Why does it literally shoves it down it's his throat? I mean, yeah, and that's yeah. why Josh, Josh had the right call. Literally, just shoved it down his throat, finds the kill. It was a spectacular moment at that, and it shows you what this guy is capable of. So the fact that he wasn't even on fire for every single map, and yeah. they still come away with the victory, that's what scares me about this team. Yeah, because I think there are echoes of what Loud used to be. We looked yeah. at the changes made to this roster. We thought maybe this isn't a super team anymore. You lose Saucy. 
you lose Pencata. Those are such strong individuals, such big pieces of the team. But both these new young players in Tuis and Kawazin have stepped up. And Ospis still looking like he's in contention to be one of the best players in the world. But the rest of the team is just as good, and they're right there with him. And I, I will say, I know there are a lot of teams who are starting to follow this formula, but the truth is, if you are not following a formula where you, where you have young, outrageous talent mixed in with veteran leadership, you're falling behind. Right, yep. these teams will be left behind because we're we're seeing the. I know Valorant hasn't been out for very long, but we're seeing the the dawning of a new era where that is the success formula. And if you are not playing at that regard, you're just going to be irrelevant. Yeah, and so much of that credit goes to Sadak because the casters were mentioning th this at the end. This is the third grand final in the last year at an international event that this guy has been in. And again, he makes roster changes, but is still able to lead this team, lead young players to victory. Yeah. Because last year it was it was the core of this team that are now considered more the veterans with Ospas, um, with less being those really young players. They're still young, but the experience and the way the team meshes together is so incredibly good. Loud has earned themselves a day of rest before they step back onto the stage for fight for that trophy. But with that, Achilles, we do have to say goodbye to DRX. What a valiant effort they put up today falling just short. I mean, look, I can't be that upset. Loud absolutely earned this win. They gave us one hell of a series here in the end of DRX. I'm just happy that they didn't go out of this. They were able to persevere, you know, once again, that they do have the mental fortitude to push back in a series, especially in a tournament where they're playing without one of their coaches. Glow has not been here the entire time, and a lot of times he's the one who's really interacting with the players, whereas Termi's the one who's, you know, tackling the overall strategy. Yeah, Doug, we, we heard Yinzu say it in the interview just on stage. After those first two maps went Loud's way, pretty much everybody was uh, okay with saying this was going to be locked up in 3-0 yeah. fashion. And so, again, just for me, what it takes for a team to kind of turn it around in the way that they did and push Loud to the brink, that is something that has to be respected moving forward. Yeah, and it, you know, it's funny because we talk so much about DRX and their history and how they choke in the big games and you know, blah, blah, blah. This didn't feel like that, to be honest. I think individually, Mako was out of his bloody mind, right? <laughs> yes. How many rounds did he single-handedly win? How many rounds did Stack single-handedly win? So honestly, it, it's heartbreaking either way to see one of these two teams go, but it, it, it feels bad, right? It really does feel bad to see DRX go out this way. They played one hell of a series. Yeah, and it's tough for this team and for the Pacific League as a whole because it means they will not have an opportunity to earn that extra slot in Japan at Masters. But I think DRX has proved here that they are the best team in that Pacific League, that they are going to do great things, and that we are nearly guaranteed to get to see them again making another run in Tokyo at that international yeah, event. If we, even if we don't. Imagine what that means for just the other teams that would yeah. be qualified, because it would yeah. mean that the, yep. the trajectory of the team's skill has gone up just through the stratosphere. Yeah, that's a very good point. It does hurt that they're not going to eclipse their previous international performance, but again, people are now going to reflect on this series going the distance and say, that could have been a final. I think a yeah. lot of people might come out of this tournament going, well, I mean, had they been in the Omega bracket, we may have met DRX and Loud in that final. Well, in addition to saying goodbye to DRX from the tournament, I'm a man of my word, Douglas. Esports Douglas, and uh, <laughs> this is uh, this is yours now, my liege. A pleasure, good sir. A pleasure. I'm sure it will look infinitely better on me, so it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> you, 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 I troll, I you, troll, I troll. You lucky, lucky man. I troll. No, that I, you yo, I will sweat. And to be perfectly clear, for those of you watching at home, yeah. we, we had did a have a barber bib ready. Yep. I thought it was gone. And a razor. Yeah, we I, were. Razor. I, I, <laughs> I thought it was gone. I, I brought this in specifically for this bit. I was ready. I we was followed ready through to go. with our check off. Hey, guns. These people, men of their words. Doug, Very respectful. Some people might say it was a close shave that you got away with that one, my friend. Uh, but we as you received it, <laughs> we got to get it out I mean, you had Golden Boy for like three weeks, and you're going to get me <laughs> on that's the that's you're gonna, you're gonna We're get fed me up with one it. pun? Come on, let me have one. Uh, <laughs> so, so one gift already given to Doug, but as some of you may know at home, and if you don't, please send him some love on Twitter, on social, because yesterday was his birthday. <laughs> one more foot into the Boomer Club, Doug, and we're here to celebrate along with you. <laughs> You only get one candle, because I guess we didn't have time to light them <laughs> all. Having, having Bren, <laughs> Bren being in charge of the pyrotechnics is one That's of the so worst things. That's so dangerous. dangerous. <laughs> I love it. I'm genuinely I surprised. Oh, the you. fans blew it out, Thank too. Oh, well, <laughs> I got robbed. Yeah, uh, that's all right. What's that's your wish? Right. Oh, gosh, I don't know. I don't know. You got any wishes you for the rest wish. of the oh, tournament? I, we got two I, days I left. Know. What do you want to see? What oh, haven't I, we seen? My, my wish is that uh, this series tomorrow is equally, if not better, than the one we had today. Right. Avi versus Fnatic. 
I okay. mean, ask for the grand final too. Can we get can we get yeah. a fifteen? Yeah, wait. Final this weekend? How much how much birthday power wishes? I think you have I don't enough. Know, push it. Can I afford both? Push All right, then <laughs> both. I'm going for it. All right, I, I, yeah, double down, double down, baby. All right, and with that, the alpha bracket is complete. We started with a field of sixteen, and Loud is the last team left standing. They'll head on to the grand final on Saturday and face off against the winner of tomorrow's Omega bracket battle between Navi and Fnatic. But also on the schedule before Saturday's grand final, we'll have a show match that you do not want to miss. It's Team Tarek versus Team FRT. Some familiar faces will be on the rosters. It'll be a fun match, to say the least, especially because we'll get the global reveal of a new agent. It's going to be exciting. Uh, I anyone, have no idea what to expect from this. Uh, anyone have any inklings already based on what we know of the rosters of what, if one of these teams is a favorite in the show match? Uh, from what I know, it's it's very stacked on both sides. Yeah. I think it should be a close one. Also, getting to see the new agent is going to be so cool. We got the premiere review, reveal earlier today, and we get a new agent reveal later in the tournament. I mean, there's so much new content being pumped out here. Yeah, I think personally, though, for this show match, all my eyes go towards the coaches. I think the coaches <laughs> will be the difference maker. <laughs> I wonder I who the coaches I, 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 try, I tried. I tried as well. I tried to take that <clears> one right, seriously. Hang on, hang on. Uh, I think the coaches will be the difference maker. I'm really excited to see how they perform this show match. All right, well, definitely don't miss that on Saturday, <laughs> but also don't miss tomorrow's semifinal. With that, though, we close out day number 13 in our first of the semifinals here at the Valorant Lock-In Tournament. Until tomorrow, stay healthy, stay safe, and be good to each other, all right? Good night. The Alpha Bracket started off with 16 of the world's best teams, and now we're down to our final two. Loud and DRX, two absolute giants of the Valorant scene, about to go head-to-head -head in a best of five. For DRX, it's about overcoming the hurdle that knocked them down last time at an international event, and for Loud, it's about performing with the weight of expectation in front of a home crowd. Knives in the hand of Asphalt, that's going to be engaged. Raw spam flash, trying to push through the right click. No one's cleaning it up, Asphalt. And they all fall down. Maneuvering away around it, and it's a pincer into the connector. Smokes off one of the angles, but the crossfire is too potent, too powerful. And they all tumble. 13 5, loud claim, map number one. Test is low, stacks does trade. Stacks the wiggle with the movement, he makes himself an elusive target. Wow. And shuts things down with a 4K. The crowd there genuinely looking disappointed that this wasn't a 12 0 half. Now Dash is up. Watch for double up. Swing it around. Coverage is there. And it is just that hammer strike one after another. The Brazilian retake looks so good. And the crowd are pumped. Contact play lurking up and strikes them down. Rather clean. Flawless. Surely RB's plant. got the clutch. Yeah, he hears the timing for it. Two years. Gambled incorrectly. Yes. DRX are not done yet. There's still life in this squad. We've seen it before. You cannot count them out. Look down close, though. Maybe anticipating they're going to be fighting. Mako once more. <laughs> Holding, listening, waiting for that sound cue. Right in his head. It. Silence sweeps across the stadium. Amaka will not be denied that fifth map. The weapon difference here should be easy pickings. Indeed, it is. Uproar from the crowd. And it's all up to Stacks. Oh, what an insane clutch by Stacks. Letting loose, drop to his knees. Reposition is not there. And now have done it. Unreal mental resilience. Allowed to deny. Sweep. And it's such a bit of feeling for DRX once more reliving the nightmares, reliving the history books. They will be exiting much sooner than they hoped.